Hello and welcome to the start of the E Premier League finals weekend, coming to you live from the iconic Elstree Studios in London. So far, four teams, Liverpool, Brighton and Hove Albion, Luton Town and Manchester City, have all secured their places in tomorrow's blockbusting quarterfinals. Let's remind ourselves of how they did it. We're here to defy all the expectations. Don't count us out just yet. They're ready to play. I think anyone's capable of anything when it comes to tournaments like this. The tournament has kicked off. It is in full swing. Players, they are good to go. De Bruyne into Haaland! I do expect a lot of goals and a lot of magic. Oh, that's beautiful from Dragon. When you're in the game, there's always a chance. I mean, i got to tell you, it looks beautiful today. Oh, you've always been my favourite. Lovely cut back inside, lovely scoop turn. Oh, even better finish. I mean, it's so easy. That is outrageous. Come on. I don't like Jack Charlie winds me up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shot from distance. That's so beautiful I've seen. Ooh, we always said you just can't write anyone out. The focus is 10 out of 10 right now. Clear frustration. Yeah. There's the finish. Take. Bow! Their work is only just getting started. Today, the remaining 16 teams will get one last chance to try and join them in the quarters and take one step closer to being crowned E Premier League Champions 2024. The winners won't just walk away with these fantastic trophies, they'll also split a cheque for £30,000. got the best of the best taking part in the competition and we also have the best of the best doing the analysis and commentary this weekend please welcome ryan Pessoa, leah Ravel, and fg and fg you were watching at home and you dropped a sneaky uh, dm didn't you saying can i actually be there in person next time yeah i don't know how i've managed to get here but here we are and it's good to see you all you're looking great oh, you too you're looking fabulous as is leah Ravel. you've jetted in from spain you thought you know what i'm going to adjust to the time difference somewhere hot. Great decision. Tell me, what did you think of the group stage? I think it was full of surprises and maybe some expectations. Obviously, City went all the way through, but Luton is maybe an unexpected package that we are seeing all the way through to Sunday. Well, I was watching the show back and I noticed that Ryan Pessoa did point out that actually Luton Town were a duo to watch. Yeah, they're sort of, of course, an unknown quantity, but they had the ability, they showed it, and they performed very well. Yeah, they did, but you're the only person to call it, so I'm Can just going to give some advice. Yeah, yeah. You. The yeah. viewers at home, listen to this man, because he's actually competed in the E Premier League before, so if you've got yeah. any advice for the boys watching you right now, literally the players are in their places, eyes transfixed on Ryan Pazawa. Yeah, I'd avoid that, to be fair. They've done better than me. They've done really well to, to get to this stage. I know they're looking over here, but yeah, they just need to enjoy the occasion and just, yeah, have fun. Leah, what's your favourite thing when you're watching Pro FC? What do you want to see from these guys? Action. I want to see action, celebration. I want to see upsets and excitement. Yeah. FG, have you got a celebration in mind? What do you want to see? Let's hear it. Splitting off? Listen, if I was playing, I wouldn't be celebrating, put it this way. <laughs> the, the quality is really high, but it's knockouts and it's going to be a really, really fun weekend. Yeah, it's going to be such a fun weekend. And whether you are an expert at FC Pro or new to eSports, this competition is unique. That's because it's a rare opportunity for amateurs to take on professional gamers in a major tournament with some major prizes on offer for the winners. So here's what it means to compete in the E-Premier League. The E Premier League is the biggest tournament of my season. Quite excited. I'm nervous at the same time, but yeah, rock and roll. You pick a team. I wouldn't dream of representing anyone else. But I want to bring success to Spurs. And then from there, there's online qualifiers and then club playoffs, and then you make it to the final playoffs. And now we're here, there's 20 teams, two people on each team, Xbox, PlayStation, and we're all going to battle it out to try and become champion. It goes into a single elimination bracket. And then after that, you'll find your E Premier League champion. So the rules around EPL, you've got to use Premier League players, only all heroes are icons set in the game. So for example, you've got players like David Ginola used to play in the past, Edwin van der Sar. So if I have to change our team around to use players we might not use all the time on our main accounts. But six minutes, it's a lot different than nine minute halves we play in and like the normal comp season. All the best players around England compete for. 
If you're watching EPL for the first time, you should be expecting very high level gameplay. £100,000 prize pool. I'd give anything for it, I'll be honest. Also a ticket to the Champions League and then also to the World Championships as well. And for us, it's the biggest one on the calendar. Let's see what we can do. Cameron Mark might give everything for this, but Cameron Mark, you only need to win. However, you've got to win quite a few matches, Ryan Pessoa. Yeah, exactly. There's a, a long route to the finals. You can see the four teams already securing their spot in the quarterfinals to the right side, and of course, the left side, the matchups taking place today. Some interesting ones, frankly, to take place. Yeah, which one are you most looking forward to, though? I'm going to say Wolves and Burnley. I think that's an underdog type of game, but the players are really, really good in that matchup. I want to see clinical money man Mitch on the pitch for Wolves again, because he was yep. one of the big surprises for me in the group stage. Yeah, he's very consistent in the E Premier League, constantly performs well as well, and he, he's had some great results along the way. Well, let's take a look at our first round, then. The winners of these two matches are going to face each other in the next knockout stage for a place in the quarterfinals, Ryan. Uh, Chelsea versus Manchester United. Do you think that could potentially be quite a close matchup? I think that's a big game. You've got Jay Sharp, of course, representing Chelsea. Last time out, he was celebrating a lot, scoring a lot of goals, up against Dragon, who's been a member of the community for a long time. Of course, I've partnered up with David Murray, up against Konkai. Jay Brown against Nathan BP is a good game as well. Two players in the UK scene that are very, very good. And Cameron Rock as well, a player that has pedigree in this competition, up against VBD as well. Well, if you're following Villa and Bournemouth, then do check out the B stream. But right now, we need to head down to Casey on the sidelines because I think she might have grabbed herself one of the blues. Thank you very much, Casey. Before we get into the analysis, we just need to analyze what Mr. Graveson is wearing, because this is sublime. He, the, talk me through it. Uh, pretty much, there's brown loafers, they're amazing, but I'm really happy being next to my man, Richard Buckley. Look, I've been, I've been absolutely stitched up, but we're not gonna <laughs> stitch up Jack, Sharp, and Chelsea, because that's where our analysis is gonna take us. You look at the performances, one win, three draws. He was unbeaten during the groups. Is Jack Sharp the catalyst to Chelsea having a good E Premier League? Probably, and because of those zero losses, if we just can roll up the clips, uh, we can see how Jay Sharp just like to virtually, vertically attack in the way. You know I'm Spanish, I like to pass it horizontally in a way, but Jay Sharp likes to just go and attack and well, I press. Found, I found a few clips yeah, yeah. to help back up what you're saying about the aggressive play. This is a game against Everton. He ended up winning it by six goals. Talk me about the press. What can we expect to see in the gameplay specific for the people at home who maybe want to improve their game if you want to take a tip or two from Jack Sharp? For me, it's two things. It's firstly, second man press, because you want to switch offensively and really aggressively when you want to take the ball. But then, as I said before, he doesn't take any pass backwards. He just goes on and on, because in this game, you got to look for these 1v1 one -one situations. And that's what he's doing. That was sick. That was celebrating over to me and Ryan, who were actually commentating <laughs> that game. I'm really, really intrigued to see what Chelsea can offer us. Frankie, back to you to get this show on the road. Thank you very much, guys. Here on our mainstream, we're going to be featuring Chelsea and Manchester United. But remember, you can head across to our B stream to see Aston Villa take on Bournemouth. Hello, Brandon.
Brandon and Gravison, I'm so excited to be stood between you. However, Brandon, I have to ask, when you look at Gravison, do you feel like calling him sir? Um, yeah, I feel like he's off to a meeting and maybe I'm on holiday. So. I feel like <laughs> you're good. about to go pitch I'm happy, I'm happy to be on holiday. You're about to go to a Brighton game dressed like that. Well, we'll be if we win the tournament this weekend. <laughs> that is true. They are going to be playing tomorrow and you guys are going to be commentating the action right now. So I actually might leave you to it. That's OK, you don't mind? No, that's fine. Am I, re am I released, sir? Yeah, of okay. course. I'm going cool. for a break. We've got plenty of games. We've got plenty of games to get through, of course. Myself, Brandon Smith, Hamay Alvarez guiding you through the action in our first round of games here at the E Premier League Grand Finals for this year's 2024 season. And where better to kick off with this one, Gravison? Chelsea against Manchester United. And the best thing of all about this year's competition, we were here back in January for a group stage format, which gave, which gave four clubs basically a fast track ticket through to the quarterfinals, which will be in action tomorrow. Those teams include, of course, Manchester City, Luton in there, Liverpool and Brighton. But for the other 16 clubs, it's straight knockout FC24 play grab. So every game is a knockout game. And this is going to be our first one. Chelsea against Manchester United. And it's already underway. We do kick off first and foremost over on the Xbox. And we'll see Jay Sharp take on Dragon. And as you said, if you want to follow the B stream action, it's Aston Villa against Bournemouth. You can watch that live stream now. Both elimination games, but as I was trying to get to, Gravison, the point of every game means so much. Haaland won't be stopping here. This is going to be a really good chance. It could be an early start for Jay Sharp, oh. who was full of goals, we have to say. Back here in January, he scored 14 of them. And was one of the few players to actually go unbeaten on his side of the console, Gravison. Yeah, he had the most expected goals out of all the games you could see in Xbox. And I do think, offensively, he's been at the top. Can he keep up defensively against a real good player? We'll see. Well, here's Dragon looking to cause havoc. One of the older players in the competition. You have to remember that it was quite some time ago, back in 2016, where he was actually a runner-up in the World Championships. And he's always been a massive Manchester United fan, and as you heard at the start of this show, this is really the best chance for football fans of Premier League clubs to represent their team on the biggest of stages. Mm. In a competition with so much on the line, £100,000 prize pool tickets to this year's FC Pro World Championship Finals, which is the biggest tournament of the calendar. I think at the moment, Jay Sharp is more comfortable especially with the 1v1 press with his centre-backs. But he's not finding the space in the attack. He did have that Haaland chance, but he's switching out the play comfortably, player locking. I do think he's feeling comfortable at the moment. That's a nice press. Well, it's a massive win back, isn't it? Here's Erling Haaland! A knock on the door for Alisson just to let him know he's there. But expect to see goals galore from that team of the year. Norwegian striker from Manchester City, which I can assure you looks a little bit weird, doesn't it, in playing in a Manchester United kit? For those that are wondering how that is possible, we are playing, of course, an ultimate team of game mode in EA Sports FC 24, which basically allows you to build your dream team. And you're also thinking, why is, I, uh, why is, why is Rude Hullet on the pitch as well? There's that flick down, there's Carlos <laughs> Tevez! We really are rolling back the years here in the Premier League. Carlos Tevez opens up the scoring for Manchester United against Chelsea. And it's the first goal that goes to the side of Dragon. And this is a goal we'll see throughout the whole weekend. This is a goal we see right now in FC a lot, which is just cross it into the back post and Haaland will be there. And especially we said, didn't we? Yeah, especially with the aerial plus, he's going to be knocked down every single time. And yeah, that's a really good start for Dragon. And it puts right now Jay Sharp against the ropes. Well, I just wanted to sort of talk on Dragon's form back in... The group stage is we'll have a look at this, how this free kick comes in first and foremost. This could go in. Bullet has really good stats. He's moving the keeper. And does he fancy a, a quick free kick or not? Ball rolls into a player. Back to Hullet. Is he onside? Haaland? No, he's not. I mean, I love the idea from Jay Sharp and Chelsea, but just a bit too keen off the mark was Erling Haaland there. Does get pulled back for a free kick in the end. But back to the point I was trying to say, why Brood Hullet is on the pitch as well. Icons that have played in the Premier League are also eligible for these teams. And oh. heroes! And there's a hero on the pitch that's scoring goals for fun at the moment. He goes by the name of Carlos Tevez. And once upon a time in his career, he was playing for Manchester United. And at the moment, it's Dragon 2. Nil up against Jay Sharp of Chelsea. And it's been an action-packed start 
for the Red Devils. It was a really nice press by Jay Sharp. We were talking about how he was pressing with the centre-backs in the 1v1 situation, but he did overpress now with the centre-back, and the space was open for Hullet, just as it is now. Well, for Hullet, of Chelsea! Remember, there's still a long way to go. But Chelsea needed something to stick, something to hit the back of the net. Because before you know it, Gravison, it could have been 3-4-0 to Manchester United. Just before the 30th minute mark, Chelsea do get a goal back in the form of Rude Hullet. Yeah. And why is it a case of ex-players that have been scoring goals, isn't it? Carlos Tevez for Manchester United. And Rude Hullet, of course, for Chelsea. Step it up and scored a really important goal there. Two goals to remember that we are playing two games here. Every single match will play a game on the Xbox and a game on the PlayStation. And it's an aggregate scoreline that will be accumulated together, meaning that we might need extra time and penalties by the end of the second leg. Mm. As Bakaya Saka comes so close to equalising at a 2-2 scoreline. Corner played short. Mm. And now you have some time to breathe because this match has been crazy throughout the whole time. Maybe we can pass it to Henry and nah, not a chance to breathe. Go on. Well, this is brand new for Bath. They are looking to cause Havert. What's the save from Alisson? Believe it or not, he's actually the fastest icon in the game at the moment, is Thierry Henry. 97 pace the office here. And as you saw in those moments, he can be so deadly. It's especially when you're finding those 1v1 situations against the keeper. But at the moment, I think Rod Hullet has been the main man. Was that assist in the second goal? Now, the goal he scored for Chelsea, and this is a big chance as well. There's a big chance for Benna. He tries to put on a plate for Rude Hullet and Alan Harlan that were just queuing up, waiting around the box for the perfect time. And I think we should have a breather as well, Gravis. And this game has been at 100 miles an hour ever since it kicked off. Nice press. And now the right back is out of position. Yeah. They're pressing really good manually, which isn't easy to do at all, both of them. They're pressing really well with the centre-backs, with the midfielders. But I do think they're being a little bit aggressive at times. But it's something you need to do if you're playing in these stages, and especially in the meta we're at, at the moment. Well, I think the aggression if we're seeing Gravison has allowed the game to be so open. There has been a handful of chances at both sides. That's a mistake. So far, this is a mistake that could cost Manchester United massively. Hullet tries to step over his way past Virgil van Dijk, who just pushes him to the ground. Nice pass. And if Harlan can get round, the ongoing Ruben Diaz. Ah. Uh, a clever idea to try and play in Salah, but Ogbeno will yeah. just about do enough to yeah. stop that one coming in. A score in our other game at the moment. It's 1 1 between. Aston Villa and Bournemouth. You can watch the action live on our B stream for that one. Oh, big mistake. Manchester United lead 2 1 against Chelsea in this first matchup. Mm. And into half time, we shall go for a quick breather right now, Gravison. I mean, what a start for Manchester United. They came flying out of the traps with Dragon. Could have been potentially 3 0 up yeah. at the halfway point. But then you say that in the same breath. Chelsea had chances, really good chances, Gravison. And for me, especially in this first leg, you're, you have to be alive throughout the whole match. So let's just say you're losing by two goals. For me, if I was playing in that position, I would just try to score a goal or two. Like, I wouldn't just press throughout the whole way because I wouldn't like to pass just my teammate I 3 4 results. So you just got to play those 90 minutes, not caring about the game who your teammate is going to play because you just got to at least to score a couple of goals. And for me, in my opinion, if Jay Sharp does a comeback and just draws 2-2, two -two, it's a good result for him, considering how the match started. Well, this is the tough part about the competition as well, isn't it? Is that it's an aggregate scoreline. There's a massive element of team play here. You have to go and do your bit, depending on the matchup, depending on maybe the quality of player on each console. There is a world where your teammate might have to go and get you wow. two or three goals. Might have to give you a little bit of an advantage to go into that second match just to carry you through the aggregate scoreline. And if we're being brutally honest, if we're looking at the records here, Jay Shop was the stronger player in the group stages. Saying that, he could be 3-1 down! Oh, right. As Erling Haaland finds a third! For Manchester United...
more of the same is what they'll be crying out for again. We'll see again on the replay. When you get to these areas, Gravison, it just causes problems. Dragon was really smart in this attack because in the last kick of the first half, he decided to run all the way instead of passing it to the uh, striker. So in this time, he knew he had to fake a run and then transform it into a ball roller pass. That's what he did exactly. It was a 1v1 against the keeper, and that was a really good goal. J-Sharp did move the keeper well, but it wasn't enough because it was a really clear chance. I do think Dragon is not doing anything fancy, but the fundamentals, he's doing them right. And that's why he's winning the game 3-1. Well, there was actually a couple of years ago when Dragon played in this tour, and he's a bit of a season veteran when it comes to the Premier League. He actually knocked out Tex a couple of seasons back when he was obviously representing Liverpool. Dragon was representing Manchester United back then as well. There's not a thing or two about this pro circuit. It's sort of always been a couple of steps off the mark ever since his sort of 2016 days, 2017 days, where he was really at his peak. But his is still really good. To still be here. Yeah. That many years on Gravison. It doesn't just come onto your lap. You have to work so hard for it. That was really good by Schweinsteiger. That was a really good intersection because if not, Henry was ready to control the ball and probably score a goal. He's been aggressive with the centre backs. I like it. Even though he's losing 3 1, he's still being aggressive, which I like. But we have to be careful with the press because if we talk about Dragon, one of the things we will definitely talk about is the press. Because I mean, he, he's a vice champion of the world back in 2016. So the press is going to be insane. Because well, you, were, you were telling me yesterday on the, on the build up to this match up here as Chelsea looked to find a way back through. There was a massive result the Dragon did get in the group stage. It came against Stingray of Liverpool, and Stingray went round to him and said, You're, you're a really top player. Yeah. I mean, I, I really do like those things because I'm a romantic at heart. So for, for us to have one of the best players at the moment telling one of the best players in the game throughout 10 years, you know, passing the torch, you know, saying, that was a really good game, you, you're a really good player. I don't know, I'm a romantic, so I really like those things, you know. Generation talking to each other, competing against each other. I think that's what it's all about. You can't be a bit of sportsmanship as well between the two players there. Chelsea on the hunt, looking for a goal back fire. Potentially for Kai Saka or Erling Haaland, it's a fortunate block, he's headed some volleys in the box, it's another big tackle again from Rodri. He was just sucked into the mix there of having to become a centre-back. I thought Rafael Varane and Virgil van Dijk can just shape back up in position again, but what you can see is Rodri's in at right-back. Trying to do what he can to stop Erling Haaland, Thierry Henry looking to make it 4-1, oh. it's carried away by Alisson. Still not fully dealt with, though, this chance as it gets recycled all the way back around the box again. Nice press. And then eventually... Unfor the brief. Just a quick one, Gravison. The, 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 the issue with this game is if United were to find another one, it's a three-goal cushion. You, you're going into your second match, your teammate suddenly is coming in, not to a nil-nil, not a one-nil. He's got to come out flying. He's three-nil down. Yeah, I do think when you're losing by two goals, your main focus should be defending as best as you can, being aggressive but then scoring the goal. Because I do think 3-2, and then you pass the result to your teammate, is not that bad. But a 3-1, having to score a couple of goals to just equalise the game, I do think it's a little bit tough mentally, especially for your teammate. It's going to be a chance for it to find a second defender well by Virgil van Dijk. Can confirm Aston Villa 1, Bournemouth 1. That's an RB stream still at the moment. Jay Brown against Nathan BP of Bournemouth. Keep in mind, all the matches you see here will be played over two individual games. An aggregate scoreline will accumulate the final score and find out which Premier League club will be going through to the next stage of the tournament as Austin oh. may have just kept Chelsea's hopes alive here, just clawing it off the line. It was brilliant build-up. I mean, it was probably one of the easiest chances that Erling Haaland's going to find across this weekend. But even in his Team of the Year build, still couldn't find a way through. Gravison, talk me through it because it should have been 4-1. Yeah, as you can see, Havertz and Van Dijk are both out of position, so you can pass the ball easily if the centre-back and the left-back are out of position. I do think J-Sharp was a little bit too aggressive on that, 
and he was lucky because in my opinion that should have been a goal an easy tapping for Haaland especially in the team of the year version but he was safe by his own but I gotta tell you the corner now that's a really good chance because you have Van Dijk you have Haaland you have those big potentially aerial plus players and 4-1 I mean I do think you can afford you cannot afford a 4-1 result in the first leg well, you certainly can't indeed I mean look for Jay Sharp in the group stage he was averaging seven shots a match he does create he does create chances and we have seen that already it's just been unfortunately not the rub of his green in many different areas there I mean Manchester United they did come bottom of their group back here in January obviously Liverpool did top that group Arsenal in second and you could argue they were just a, what, one win away from a third place there but for Manchester United they you could argue they're coming into this one on the form we've seen of oh. just not really being at it to come out flying at 3-1 just goes to show the preparation they've put in across the last six weeks or so. There's Harlan again. Yeah. You teased us, Gravison. You said there could be an issue from a corner. And the question mark will be this weekend here in the Premier League. How do you stop this man causing problems? Because he's just undefendable. There's not much you can do, actually, because if you move the keeper to the first post, then it could potentially go to the near post, and it could be direct as well. So... I mean, you gotta try your luck. You gotta put Haaland against Haaland and try for the best. Has to go now. Something has to stick because Saka is possessed to Virgil van Dijk and Schweinsteiger. That's his icon. One of his foot birthday options. See what was special about that promo. You do get two different variants. A handful of those players. Kevin De Bruyne, dispossessed by Kevin De Bruyne. They'll be having many tussles <laughs> across the next few days. Schweinsteiger fancy chances on this far out. Harlem, I... Oh, it's five. 5-1 five Manchester United lead. And the gap becomes 4-0-3. Four, I do think he needed an offside trap in this situation because the driven pass was always going to be there. He did switch to Van Dijk to try to cover the pass to a striker, but what he didn't expect was the pass to go to Henry. That was a beautiful goal, and I do think instead of switching... There was a bit of emotion there as well, wasn't there, from Dragon? He knows what a big goal that was. It's a four-lead cushion. That's a lot. And I do think he needed to, instead of switching to a centre-back and try to manually defend, maybe an offside trap would have been better, but... It's easy to say in this position, you know? Well, in this moment here, and don't get me wrong, we know that Jay Sharp has been superb throughout this tournament. Is it a case of just don't concede again? Or is it a case of I just need to go three at the back and get anything back for my teammate? Such a risk-reward play now. I do think you need... You probably have one more chance. I'll, if I was in Jay Sharp positions, I would just... Try oh, to yeah, Brandon to talk back. Oh, yeah. not much you can do it. You'll not be able to score a couple of goals in three minutes. And if you can see another one, it's game over pretty much. So you, you have to score this goal. Garnacho. Maybe a pass to Haaland. He decides to keep running. And this is going to be... You got me on this, yeah? Yeah, this is going to be really, really... Hello, hello. Good but yeah, Alisson takes the ball and he wins 5-1 a really massive really result. massive result massive result for Manchester United, United against yep. Chelsea in our opening game here in this year's E Premier League 2024 finals and for David Murray I mean first time here in this E Premier League format to this stage in the competition he can't ask he can't ask for more from his teammate a four goal cushion I'm not saying he comes into this one you know having an easy day at the office by any means but 4-0 all you've got to do is sort of keep a drawing scenario. Come out, maybe 2-2, two, 1-1. Two, one, one. If you lost four goals to two or something on those lines, he is in an unbelievable position now. This oh. is on the other side of Chelsea at the moment. You can understand the frustration. Jay Sharp, looking back at some of those match highlights of where it did go wrong. I mean, it's competition, you know. It's just 50 minutes and you do a couple of mistakes. You are too aggressive with the center backs, with the left backs, and you can lose 1 5. And it's, it's obviously tough. Well, we've got someone else who's joining us in the commentary area. Case, I mean, 
What, what a way to kick off the tournament for Manchester United. What a fantastic way to kick off for Dragon. I don't think anyone expected it. I was sitting over there with a few other people and we were like, this was not meant to happen. He came out in a blaze and Jack Sharp couldn't do anything about it. Well, especially as the group stage format from January, it supposedly does give you some sort of favour in terms of the position of how you got on, but it just goes to show maybe the work that's been put in Gravison across the last five, six weeks. Yeah, I really appreciate the way Dragon plays because it reminds me of the old days in a way. You know, you don't have to skill that much. You don't have to look for those 1v1 situations. If you defend well, which he did, especially with with Bastian Schweinsteiger, it was, I mean, the, the, the player switching was amazing. The way he read passes was amazing, but then, if you score five goals, it's because you did something right. And he obviously did, especially in those 1v1 situations with the with his full with his fullback against his opponent's fullback, he decided them all wrong. In the defense, he did right in the attack. And the five one result at the end. Well it goes without saying the first goal of this game is gonna be so crucial in terms of telling where on earth this is going to go. For David Murray, he gets a goal. It becomes a five-goal lead as Van der Sar. The Manchester United icon keeps out Manchester United from making it 6-1 on aggregate. Pressure to bomb by it must be unbearable. It's a tough situation to be in. I think that he did not anticipate going in this far down. But we've seen Konkai have amazing performances in multiple competitions throughout the years, and so if anyone can do it... Here's Yomin Son, oh, he's six! <laughs> David Murray leads by a goal to nil six, but it's in Manchester United. They knew it was going to be a difficult game coming into this one, but they are, well, being around the bush, they're, they're cruising. They're cruising through to round two, and he is not stopping here by any means. That was a beautiful finish, especially with a step over. And it was time yellow, but it didn't matter because it was too great of a chance for Hyamin Son to not miss. And if we're being honest, if he just controls the ball and he keeps possession, uh, five goals is too much. But it's not easy to keep possession in FC24, especially when you're using the 4-3-2-1. It's not easy at all. So you gotta. It's a weird point between trying to keep the possession, but you got to attack as well. And it's not easy to do at all. I think that's one thing that both players here have really improved on from the first couple weeks, because I think before they didn't dominate possession. That was not, not something that we were saying was happening in, the, in all of those group stage games. And they definitely went to the drawing board. They've been grinding out their friendlies and even their team selection. They have a lot of different players this time, better items on their team, and it could really play into effect as to why they're playing so well. I agree 100% with you. The player selection have been on point, especially, I mean, Rodri, the team of the year version as a uh, right back for Dragon has been amazing, but now Chilwell is defending well again. So team selection, as you said, has been amazing. Well, Chelsea need to start a comeback sooner rather than later, especially for Conkai. We know the quality he's got. I mean, look, he was superb across the last couple of years. He's always been a relentless player. Obviously, he was teammates with Cameron of Aston Villa, who now he's still with Aston Villa. Mm. Tried to go separate ways this year and both play for two different Premier League teams. But as every minute ticks away, Case, you can understand that it's just the pressure you're feeling. I've, I've got to make it, I've, every chance I create, I have to score. Right, and I feel like at this point, he's going to have to start even adding to that pressure. And when you do get into some of those more attacking situations, you set yourself up in terms of defense. And I don't know, I could see this turning into a 7-1 game, 8-1 game, because he's going to have to take more risks in order to start getting those more goals. Great feet from Chilwell. Bruno Fernandes, that step over exit, causing all sorts of problems. And you've already seen in the first 25 minutes here how important Yomin Son will be in the final third. Harlan pushed down the right-hand side. You want him in the box, but he's certainly got pace and strength to, to drive the attack forward. There's a fancy shot from distance from Bruno Fernandes or Kevin De Bruyne back again, recycling it well. Conco waiting to find the first piece of the puzzle. Nice step over exit. It's his best chance of the game so far, but it's come 28 minutes in. And it, this could be potentially be a greater chance, the corner taken quick. Harlan towards that back post, defended well by Rio Ferdinand. And 
I do think he has to be a little bit more direct. I mean, he's losing five, five goals. And when you find yourself in those positions near the box, it has to be just look for the 1v1, try to step over and look for something. Because you don't have that much of, uh, of time to pass it back and forth. So I do think you need to be aggressive. I feel like he may be overplaying it a bit here. When in other situations, he might have the time to create that perfect opportunity. But here, you just got to continue to push forward and hope that luck is on your side. Yeah. Just needs something to fall his way. Cole Palmer, the Chelsea man trying to get something going. Big switch of play, comes back to Haaland. Where's the space? Where's the chance again? Manchester United soak up the pressure so well. They've got a brilliant chance to break it. Rodri has been amazing throughout these two legs. Yeah, I think it's a familiar position as well, isn't he, in at right back? Yeah, but it works because he is fast, he's a strong, tall. Yeah, tall. Defensive stats are probably the best you can get for a right back. It works. It's probably the toughest position to decide a player. Full backs, both the left back and the right back. Because they can be out of chemistry, but they could work, as we can see in Rodri, so you never know. Well, it's also the case, isn't it, of who's going to stop Haaland? Which I think everyone's still trying to work out the answer. Nice Speaking cross. of Haaland, there he is. Oof. And Rodri does well again there, just gets in the way. Four minutes away from half-time, Manchester United still in the lead. 6-1, they lead an aggregate. As it stands, it will be Chelsea being the first team to leave this year's E-Premier League final stage. De Bruyne on the finesse! And I mean, if that's not going in, that really does sum up your luck. He timed it green, he did everything right. Still might have just enough time to recycle out, but Case, I mean, he can't do any more. No, I mean, in that situation, there's not this is good. anything else you could possibly be doing. This could be problems around the goalkeeper, Van der Sar, it could be an own goal, cleared away, just a foul by Kevin De Bruyne. And this is it. And a chance to breathe, but... Don't get me wrong, if we are being brutally honest, we had two main chances from Konkai in that half. It was a great save from Van der Sar in one of them. But on the other one there, Grav. The long finish, we know Kevin De Bruyne has got the great stats on that. The, the finesse shot is ridiculous. The time green of it as well. We'll see it again on the replay. How did this not go in? Uh, it could have gone in, yeah, as you can see in his reaction. But maybe I think he has to be a little bit more aggressive because he's passing it back to De Bruyne, looking for the recycle every single time. I do think you have to find those forwards and just try to look for the 1v1 because when your opponent expects you to recycle every single time, he's just going to offside trap and then switch to a centre-back, which he's doing. So you need to do something else. I always say in this scenario, Graveson, what, what do you do as the pro in this scenario? What do you do? You're five goals down. Is it three, three at the back, 4-2-4? Four, four. Uh, it's I, time to go. I really like the 4 3 two, one so keep it like that. Maybe use the three centre midfielders to cover the centre and try to attack. But, I mean, it's a tough position. It really is. I mean, how good these ultimate teams are as well, Case, at the moment. There's, I think Jay Sharp was saying in an interview before we got going, there's so much choice, isn't there? There's so much depth in these squads. There's so many options, especially there's a massive difference between the last time we saw these players play and today. And they have upgraded their teams to a whole nother level, especially mm -hmm. with the new for birthday items, adding them into all of the competition. And so it adds an extra level of trust to a lot of your players. Not so much for Konka here, but no, I think that their teams are, are absolutely stellar. And they might not play with them every weekend in terms of their own ultimate team, but they are loving everything that they're seeing. They really are the dream teams that these players can build. Another step over into that little pace boost for Hyun Min Son. I saw you nod at it, Gravison. That piece of defending from Rio Ferdinand there. He just manually tracked the run, didn't he? Yeah. Of the ongoing runner who was just able to deal with it. But David Murray has not put a foot wrong at the moment. He's limited Ponkai to two real chances. He scored an early goal. And for him, he's just he's, he's weathered the storm or any storms that have come towards him. He still leads in this game by a goal to nil. Five on an aggregate. Matches up a finesse from Thierry Henry on the edge of the box and time's just running out. Yeah, and this is a big chance, I think it's onside. And yeah, but as you, as you said before, Casey, it's really tough for him to play in this situation because you're losing by five goals and you know there's no really much to do instead of just trying to look for the goal. 
uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a hard position to be in, but I do think he, he needs to find that composure to just at least score a goal because when one goal goes in, then things try to kind of change in a way. 28 minutes left. There's the flick on. Has to go now. Come on. I mean, there's the goal. It's still four needed. There's about 28 in-game minutes left. But that will certainly give you an ounce of hope. A little bit of hope. I think that that's one goal that you need in order to shift momentum a bit your way. And, I mean, we've seen crazier comebacks yep. than this situation. But he will have to continue with that type of pressure in order to get anywhere near getting back in this game. And I really like the way, at the moment, David is playing, pressing. Because if you just kind of hope to defend and whether the storm is not going to go well for you. You have to press with your strikers, and he's doing it right. Especially against the constant press, which we're seeing. But yeah, you can try to elastic or you can try to do things, and he's doing them right. You just saw a couple of times there from David, just not afraid to throw a skill move in there and be really direct, massive switch of play, he's offside. as if another 10 minutes have passed, so... It really is the case of previewing what is potentially to come. Aston Villa or Bournemouth. Will stand in Manchester United's way. This could be curtains now. Could be on for a 7-2. Doesn't really need to score again. Happy to take more time out of the game. He was caught in two minds there with a... Yeah. To go in the box and score again, or just... Try and keep possession. Nice pass. Good build up. He has to score. Has to go. Now back to Bruno Fernandes on the edge of the box. Again, he's trying to find a way in. David Murray's done a good job of being so compact. They're even Erling Haaland's back. Making it two banks of four to try and break down. There's another perfect example of it. Kevin De Bruyne in the way. Really good player, Lux, trying to do something different. Let's see if he can achieve it. Great chance. Haaland against Haaland. Well, he's going to fall back to Omri. Goes back inside. Could he have maybe went on the... on the first chance? I mean, it's set up so well. There's a chance to break now to conclude it if he wants to. Final nine minutes here, Manchester United are on their way through to the next round here in the Premier League. I've been so impressed with David's defending this entire game. He doesn't need to do much in terms of attacking, and it seems like he's put most of his focus into anticipating Konkai's movements, and he's pretty much reading him like a book. Saved again, Van der Sar. Stands in the way. Mm. He has been superb in all moments of the pitch. One more to seal the deal for Manchester United. 7-2 in their first knockout match here. And they'll be going through to play Aston Villa or Bournemouth in the next round of the competition. A win there for them would send them back in to a top eight again. It all comes from that first leg. It all comes from that start. And how well Dragon has performed. Even the late consolation now won't mean much. Unfortunately, it will be Chelsea. And will be eliminated from this year's E Premier League. The first team to go out of the competition, Graveson. Yeah. Commiserations to them because I do think Jay Sharp played a good match, but he was Dragon was just too effective on the counter-attacks. And Konkai did really well in the build-up. He did well as well defending with his centre-backs, but it was just a little bit more in the final third. I do think he needed to step it up a bit. He recycled a bit too much, but again, playing with a 1-5 result is really hard. But Manchester United is a really good team for the next round. They, they played flawlessly. I think what we're seeing here as well, uh, Case, is the importance of that team, that team element. Yes, it's two individual games here, but you have to help your teammate out.
Yeah, no, the team is everything. And so someone might start off strong, but David Murray had to keep that consistency into that next game because things can shift in that second leg. But massive shout out to Dragon because that was a stellar performance in the first leg. And David was able to hold on and unfortunate for Chelsea, but Manchester United, amazing, amazing performance. And that'll mean a lot as well to Dragon, that result, won't it, Gravis? And he, he sort of came out on social media and went like, one last sort of hoorah, this competition, one last big push for him to go and make something of what has been a stellar career for him. He sort of teased that this could be towards the end of his career for Manchester United. They are through to the next stage of the Premier League. One more win later on today against either Aston Villa, uh, of course, or Bournemouth will send them into a top eight. We join it live now. This is from our B stream. It's 4-4. Which means that, of course, the first leg was a 2-2 result between Jay Brown and Nathan BP. For Cameron Rock, who was teammates last year with Conco, who's just been eliminated at Chelsea. This is against VBD, and this could be one of the last kicks of the game. Cameron talks about post. Haaland is there, oh. and he goes just shy. Out for another corner. There was a hand on it, supposedly, from Edwin van der Sarp. Keep an eye on Haaland in this area. You can see in the pitch here, Haaland is marking Haaland. <laughs> But which one's going to come out on top? Two number nines on your screen. Winked in towards that front post. There's the flick on! Come on, man! And it's Aston Villa! Come on! Come on, man! With a 90th minute winner! We will send them through to face Manchester United in the next round of the competition. We said, watch out for Erling Haaland. Even Haaland can't stop him. Oh, that has to be heartbreaking. And that's a beauty of a shot, because that's a beautiful goal as well. There's not much you can do against Haaland in the corners. We did see it on the Man U against Chelsea match, and here as well, how much we love those last goals in the last minutes. I love them. That was a beautiful match. We teased it, Case, but you, what can, you can't do anything. You can only mark Haaland with Haaland, but I will say that Cameron Mock has been in the workshop practicing those corners for moments like that, and he knew exactly what to do. The moment wasn't to go short, go directly to Holland, and that's that's it, that's it. That's only a small teaser of what we've got coming up today as well. All the matches here in the Premier League are knockout fixtures. Someone that has gone through each dragon path at Manchester United side, and he's with our very own FG now. Yes, thank you very much, Brandon. I am joined, as you said, by Dragon. First things first, five-star performance in the first game. Talk me through how you're feeling. I'm feeling really good right now because practice did not go as planned, and I kind of just come up the stage just hoping for the best. I was actually scared. I was sitting there talking to David before the game. I just don't want to get bad. I don't embarrass myself up here, but I've done the opposite and done really well. You did do really well indeed. Now, there's been a lot of talk, and there has been before about you potentially being this, the last tournament. You don't really look like a man who's ready to retire. No, I don't really play the game too much these days. I haven't competed this much uh, this season at all, really. Apart from I just thought I'd pick up an Xbox, just play E-Prem and just see how it goes. It's gone so pretty good so far. Yeah, we will be seeing you both very, very soon. Congratulations to Manchester United. Let's head back to Frankie. Thank you very much, guys. Drama on both the A and the B stream in round one, and there's plenty more to come as we go again. Coming up after the break, Nottingham Forest versus Fulham and West Ham versus Brentford.
Welcome back to the finals weekend of the E Premier League 2024. And if you missed round number one, you missed an absolute treat because both matches were intense, but for entirely different reasons. I'm very lucky to be joined by FG and Richard Buckley to talk us through it. You can just see Cameron Rock's reaction there, and we're going to see that winning goal in a moment. But first of all, Manchester United versus Chelsea. I think it went the way we were maybe not expecting, FG. Well, this is the beauty of the E Premier League. It did go that way indeed. Um, the first game was a massive, massive shock. And we can see the goal on the screen coming for you guys as well. I mean, what a performance and what a shock. I don't want to say I, uh, I cursed Chelsea and Jack Sharp, but I did about a two and a half minute talk about he's going to be the catalyst to Chelsea's success and talking about his great performance. <laughs> and sorry, Jack, but he lost the game. And he lost the time. But because Chelsea did lose the game in regulation, that did mean we got an absolute treat because we got to head over to the match on the B stream and we got to see Cameron Rock score a 90 minute winner that we've got to watch back, boys. So we actually scored in the 50th minute pretty much an identical goal. Corner, near post, Haaland, header. As soon as that chance came in, as soon as the corner was given, I were on the B stream with Leah and I, was just, I just knew he's going to score. This is going to, this is going to go. And as soon as Haaland gets player locked to the near post, the story's written, it's guaranteed goal. We've got so many more stories to write though, Richard Buckley. So head over to the analysis screen because I know you've got some tidbits coming our way. FD, I want to talk to you about the fixtures that are coming up. As always, we're going to have an A stream and a B stream and both matches again are just nail biters because you've got to remember everyone watching at home if you lose this you are heading back to the sofa you are indeed i mean but also i'm very very skeptical about the curse of the commentator that mr buckley just did and um, you look at the first fixture and you you expect nottingham forest to go through against fulham of course but it's never that simple and we saw the emotion with the last header of the game if you like in the first round, we have got an exciting, exciting round of fixtures to come. We've got to look at that West Ham matchup as well. Brig Army's definitely one to watch. However, we don't have time to talk about it because Richard Buckley is the man with all the information you need to know. I'm everywhere so far. I'm here, I'm B stream, I'm on the desk. I'm doing a little bit of everything. And right now I'm going to talk to you about Nottingham Forest and their, you could say, subpar performances in the group. Um, they've conceded a lot of late goals. I think I've got three goals here that they conceded late in games. To, to throw away results, I'm going to say it. Um, if they would have won these games, they'd have gone top of the group. If you see the time, 81st, 85th, 86th minute. When you look at the individual stats as well, for Nottingham Forest, four draws for Redlack. I mean, for a player of his quality, who's been around the block, you'd expect some of those draws to be turned into wins. When you actually dig a little bit deeper as well, they had the least amount of goals conceded in the group, and they went unbeaten. So how did they not finish top? Make it make sense. I'm intrigued to see what Forest can offer. I want to see what they've got in the locker. And it's going to be a truly fantastic game. And that is exactly where we're going to be heading for your first game. In stream A, it's going to be Nottingham Forest against Fulham. And on stream B, you're going to be seeing West Ham United against Brentford. Well, we can only hope that this round lives up to what we've just seen there. Myself and Ryan guiding you through the action. Someone who's been here before as a Manchester City representative. I mean, this is knockout play now, Ryan. And it's yeah. a very different feeling around here, isn't it? Yeah, you can feel the nerves in the arena. You saw the celebrations as well from the Aston Villa players there. It meant a lot to win that game in the last moments. Absolutely. Well, look, we only hope for more 90th minute goals. I said to you in the break screen there, what can you do to stop that Erling Haaland? Even Erling Haaland couldn't defend him. Yeah, it's, it's sort of mission impossible. You move the goalkeeper, you can try and put a defender at the front post. You kind of just have to hope you do everything in your control to try and stop the header coming in. This is our main fixture though, Brandon. It is. Nottingham Forest against Fulham. Two very different sides that had different stories in the group stage. You saw Richard point out to a couple of the results there for Redlack. He seems to start winning. I mean, look, he's drawing games, he's not losing. Yeah, in fairness, I think this this stage of the competition could actually favour him. Having it on aggregate score lines, he's partnered with Goal Poacher, who, in his name itself, he scores a lot of goals, he creates a lot of chances. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because we're playing, obviously, 
two individual games with an aggregate score on. There is a world where he can go out and say, look, I'm going to keep the scoring low. I'm going to go and draw the game. And as we sort of goal poacher, his XG is off the charts. His expected goals is insane. I mean, look, this man was winning 7 0 yep. in his first game. He was giving cheeky winks to the camera <laughs> yeah. in his opening game in the Premier League. Maybe that is and could be a potential style that they go down with in this knockout scenario. Yeah, of course, they, they could have some game plans going into it. But I think the first and foremost thing would be to make sure Red Lack starts off well. But it'd be the same for Josh. Yet to win a game as well. Yet to put any points on the board in the previous group stage format. So be hoping he can provide a better showing this time out. Oh, they played eight games in the group stages, uh, Fulham. Yep. Only won one game. Yeah, however, if you remember back to the game, it was actually Fulham against Crystal Palace. Fulham went 1-0 up early on. Was it, kept red possession, card? it was. It kept possession for a large portion of the game and then got a red card. So who knows if that game, if he didn't get a red card in that game, it could have turned out differently. But I feel as if maybe for Messi going second, they could favour um, Josh if he manages to get um, Fulham into an advantageous position by winning the first game. It has to change now for Fulham, though. They are the team that has lost the most yep. in the Premier League. Obviously, as you... May or may not have heard of, we had a group stage format here in London just a couple of months ago, and basically the way it worked is there was four groups of five teams. Everyone played, of course, everyone in the group, and it was the top team that got an auto ticket into tomorrow's quarter-final stages. That's four out of the 20 that are through to that, hence why we've got 16 clubs here in knockout bracket play. Every matchup means so much because one team stays in the competition we go. and we lose one. There's Haaland already early doors, looking to tee up a perfect chance to Vieira, a little... Power shot, fades into a ball roll, does come back for a free kick on the edge of the box, and it's Kevin De Bruyne up. They might just fancy his chances from this sort of scenario. It's Red Lack over it. Four minutes on the clock. Harland and Ulle also there, just to cause a few more question marks. Up steps De Bruyne, who fancies his chances! The four minutes in! It is the dream start for Nottingham Forest here. And if we're being honest, it was the dream scenario. Exactly, it's, exa it's exactly how Red Light would have panned it out to happen. It's a free kick just on the edge of the box. The outside foot of Kevin De Bruyne finds the back of the net. I think from those positions, there's not much you can do to defend it. Of course, you can put a player on the line, which Josh did there. You can move the goalkeeper, but then I just feel as if it's too big of a chance. Could be on for two. Red Light on for a second. What a save from Badassar. Fulham need to wake up, otherwise they could be in a really tricky position. I was just looking as well at Josh's, ex, uh, Josh's XG coming into this. 1.08 per game. Too Three low. shots a game he was averaging in the group stages. It's just way too low. It is. Of course, he's had the luxury of having a few months time to, to find or refine his game, I should say, and try and improve. Of course, the patch has come in since then. The game style, the meta, as we call it, has changed. More so weighted towards crossing. So maybe that could favour him. But from what we've seen in the first 10 minutes, he hasn't really shown too much going forward. Well, as we said for Redlack, he did play for Nottingham Forest last year. He actually got a top eight finish with his teammate of RSD, who now does play for Arsenal, who is also hunting for that top eight finish again this year. If you remember rightly, so they lost to Crystal Palace, Nottingham Forest last year in that top eight scenario. This time they'll be looking to go one or two steps further. A win here certainly would set them up in the best way possible. And a play for Rude Hollins. 2 0. It's a huge start here from Red Light. Just playing it forward, Rodri. Progressing into the box, Rude Hullet doesn't even time it green, he mistimes it, but from that position you still expect it to find the back of the net. Play style plus of finesse shot, and in those areas that close to goal, he's always going to score. And how good is the timing of this for birthday promo, Ryan? Because it just seems there are so many good usable oh. icons. Big chance for Josh, needed that one. 90 minutes. It might have just bounced up so kindly to him, but he'll take that all day long there, Ryan. But what I wanted to say was, in the same breath, there's just been a, a breath of fresh air in terms of different promo, different upgrades to items that... I was looking across half of these teams. <laughs> yeah. So many foot birthday players yep. have just fallen into the team already and they're already guaranteed starters. I think it's revolutionised a lot of the players' attacking options. We saw Son there straight from kickoff getting the 
the goal back from Josh. He's a player with the five-star skill and weak foot. Can offer a lot going forward. Thierry Henry as well has a, a foot birthday icon item in game. Rude Hullet. They're all very usable and they're also very expensive. I'm sure there's people at home that have been fortunate enough to pack one of these players or two. Let us know. On Twitch or YouTube, wherever you're watching from. You are supporting this weekend, I tell you what. That ball came through to Hullet there. Could be looking at a 2 2 scenario. Seven goals he scored, Red Lack, in the group stage. He's conceded seven. As we said, he drew every game in the competition. One more win would have actually probably been enough to send Forrest top of the table. Yeah, I think he would have known that as well. We saw a, an interview with Goal Poultry just speaking about how much trust he has in Red Lack. They're good friends outside of the scene as well. So I think he would just be looking just to give him that boost of confidence. And let him know that he's trusted because he's a top player. He's performed at this level for a number of years now at the E Premier League. And here he is on the attack again, Brandon. Looking for a 3 1. Omri back to Hullet. This is oh. nice, Omri. It was amongst the chance. It was Hullet who had the final laugh. And what can we see here? Let me guess. Erlen Harlan front post. There he is. We saw that from text, didn't we? And a couple of players back in January, that sort of lifted cross that just had a bit of curve on it. And as this game is underway, West Ham take on Brentford in an all-London matchup affair in our B stream. I have it. I haven't seen him in left back for ages. I mean, he was in left back last time we were in January. Yeah, I, I think he's one since of, then there might have yeah. been someone else to take his place. I think he's one of the best options just because Airy Lee as well. He obviously has that height in game. He can try and nullify back post crosses. It's going to be a common theme for players building up here. Redlack again. Harlan does well with the step over exit. We have Ferdinand too heavy on the touch. Take a look at Harland here again. Punched away by Van der Sar. I think it's sensible from Josh, just trying to slow the pace down a little bit. Five minutes before half-time, six-minute half, so you do try and keep possession from these points. As we were saying, Ben Chilwell is that option now, isn't he? Yeah. That viable option at left-back. Touch from Omri. Oh, Benny out on that right hand side will happily take it. it. Seems like him or Rodri are the man for the job in at fullback. It will be a very difficult job as well, trying to stop Erlen Harlem. His team of the year in game item is what all of these players are using. And in time of one minute. But for what could have been a 3-0 cushion for Fulham, Josh might be able to get himself out of this by half-time. Cole Palmer finesse blocked by Van Dijk. Any time has been played, last chance of the game again, defended well by Virgil oh. van Dijk. Cole Palmer will get a third time of asking, oh. and it just goes high and wide over the bar. I mean, he's in shock of how he's gone that wrong. Just put a little bit too much power there, Cole Palmer in the box. The step-over exit was great there from Redlack, deserved the goal. Just a little bit too much power to put it over the bar. That's what I was saying, Ryan. Half time, this could have been a very different game. Yeah. Fulham have done well. Josh has done well to, to, to sort of get through what's been some difficult yeah. periods in the game. And he's only had, I guess, one big real chance, but he's only one goal away from tying up the match at a 2 2 score. And you mentioned the step over exit there, it was great. It just allowed Cole Palmer to drift yeah. into the space. It's just too much power, way too much power in that position. I think Josh knows as well, he should have conceded from that. In fairness, though, as you mentioned, <laughs> Josh, to me, hasn't played very well. I think it's fair to say he would say that himself. And I think going into half time, only down by one, 
honestly isn't a bad position to be in at all, considering Redlock has had the fair share of chances in this half. of words between the two teammates. Remember, if you're not aware of the Premier League format, two matches are played. It's an aggregate scoreline across the two players' matches. And that determines who will be going through to the knockout stages. And as I say that, Brentford have just gone 2-1 up against West Ham United over there on our B stream. It's the artist against Brick Army. The artist leading by two goals to one in the first matchup. What can Josh do to sort of get back in this a bit more, Ryan? I think he has to be sensible in the sense that there's still a second leg to be played. Of course, he won't be playing it, his teammate and Messi will be playing it. You don't want the game to get away from you. We saw that in the first time out with Chelsea against United, Jack Sharp losing, was it 5-1 in the first leg? So you're giving your, your teammate a huge mountain to climb. You just want to make sure you're in the conversation still going into the second leg, but that doesn't mean you play completely defensive. You still have to go forward like he has done right now. Oh, this could be a great example of getting a goal back. I mean, saw nice step overs. It's a dangerous tackle from Robbery, but one that had to be made. It's those little chances there, Ryan, where Josh has to make more of it. I think he done well in the build-up, choosing the right pass over the top there, got in behind, played the ball across bo or across the box. Sorry, just couldn't get the shot at goal. Look at the triggered run there from Havertz. Good. Manual tracking there from Josh. Great step over to pull it full of confidence. Is it too hard of an angle? He went for it, he timed it great. And another day, maybe that one does go in. Chance here for Forrest, you know where it's going. Back to Vieira and Omri, the two. French icons will interchange. And able to find a way through. Into the final third. West Ham have pulled a goal back as well. 2 2 there. In that opening matchup. Let's look at the overloads. That's exactly why you play the 4 3 2 1. Just for these moments, you have the fullback on balance. Filming Son, trying to do as well, I guess. Gets Virgil van Dijk out of position there. Grounded to Jordi, have you got me? With Josh's build-up there, he takes... It's just the, the, the small things in-game. It's that split second longer, here he is again. So one more pass. Big switch of play, finds Kai Havertz, last 23 minutes. And we'll be jumping over to goal poach. This is a gift, the gift of a chance! What to be? He should have went across the goalkeeper, but tried to get around him. Still can rewire this one perfectly well, which he does! He could have cracked under the pressure of the chance, but remained composed and recycled it so well. Not a voice three, full of one. It's a big, big goal, like a big moment is, as well. It came from... I wouldn't, I'm going to say a mistake from Red. Like, I feel as if he could have maybe gone round the goalkeeper even when he approached the goalkeeper there. He managed to retrieve the ball back from Josh. We devastated to concede that late on, Brandon, as well. Well, you do well, don't you? You think you've got away with the first chance, but then it's always a case if you have to play for that rebound, that yep. portion of bounce back that might fall your way. And what could have been a one goal cushion now becomes. A two-goal margin for, for Messi to chase, the teammate of Josh, which, don't get me wrong, if we look at stats and we look on paper here, he's been the more creative of the two players in the group yes. stages. He has won a game yep. in the group stages. The XG's better. He does create chances. Six to seven shots a game is what his average sort of chances created has been. I still believe, though, with the, from what we've seen from him in the previous stage, he seems heavily based around possession play. So I don't know now being down by two, does that game plan completely go out the window? But for Josh here, I don't think you go all out of time to try and retrieve the game. 3-1, of course, you're down by two, your teammate has
has to chase the game. But if you're down by three, you're down by four, down by five, it's tie over. Especially against goal poacher. Exactly. You know he's going to score. You know he's going to score. Gonna create chances and score goals. Jemmy Doku comes on the pitch. It's lofted there, cut down. But Kurt Osaka tries to tiptoe past. Virgil van Dijk. It's very well defended there from Redlack as well. Just player locking whilst the ball's in the air allows you to play a switch. So you're able to, to leave the AI to try and challenge for the ball in the air whilst you cut you try and cut the lane for the header down and Redlack done really well there. Is he on side? Just off. As you said, it's a case of for Edla. Let's just get through to so this next matchup with a two or three or even a 4 1 lead. Big go for Edla, this one. Because, you know, he did lose a game in January when he was here, but by any means, by his own standards, maybe felt like he didn't do his part of the role, but he did, he didn't lose a game. He still picked up four points and put Forrest into a, a really good group position. He looks like a very different player a few months on. Huge confidence boost for him. And as we say that, we've just seen a 90th minute winner for West Ham United in the other game. Brig Army snatching a one-goal cushion against Brentford there. That will go into the PlayStation now, GRK. 4-2 that result. A two-goal cushion, even better. It's a big going in the last one of the game. That Massive next goal. matchup. This could be a big win. Keep it teased off the line just to try and encourage a shot. He's done enough there to delay the chance from Josh. Still can make it work. Keep a save. He's off his line. It's just it's too tentative there from Josh. He's just timid going forward. I've noticed that throughout the game. Just little passes where he could potentially go direct. He tries to recycle it or play a bit slower. In that position there with Saka in on goal. 2v1, the keeper's committed. Got to get a pass. I think you, it's a tough one. because It's so easy to say from here. But I just feel as if running towards the byline there doesn't really open up any angle for him to score. Saka gets in the way of that one, deflects possession, goes back the other way, not in Forest. And Redlar looks to be on to his first win individually in this year's E-Premier League. This could be a huge chance if it was to fall the way of Fulham. Full-time result there, it's a two-goal mountain to climb. And we've already seen the importance of what a cushion can even do, whether it's one goal, two goal, three goals or four goals going across to that second game. Ever for Redlack, huge confidence boost and just goes to show how much work he's been putting in since the group stages. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a big game. It's a big result to give Goldpolk to the confidence that he knows his teammates playing well as well. And of course, a 3-1 lead going into the second leg for, for Goldpolk against Messi would be a, a comfortable approach going into it. But when I say that, to be fair, two goalies are very dangerous. We've seen that in the yeah. past. We've seen comebacks. All it takes is Fulham to score early on and you never know, anything can happen. Well, the one thing that we have, of course, with this format, we don't have the nine minute halves, do we? It's six minute halves. Yeah. If it was nine, I mean, yeah. some of the score lines might be getting uh, slightly more crazy. The one thing about Messi as well, first time in the Premier League, yeah. he's got nothing to lose, Absolutely. really. Absolutely. They will know pressure that. on him. Yeah, they come in as the underdogs heavily against Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Nottingham Forest on paper, if we looked at the teams that should have actually automatically qualified for the, the quarterfinals. They were one of the teams. They were one of the staples to make it to that stage. So the pressure is on them. Talking about pressure, the man, the moment. <laughs> FG, it's good for you to join us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's, it's an interesting second game coming up. I mean, like you said, a massive victory um, for Red like there, especially based on the group stage. As an ex-pro, yeah. going into that, how much does that play on your mind? You're talking about the two goal lead. Well, no, just, just because of sort of how it went in the group stage yeah. for Red Lack to then have the first game and have that pressure. Oh, you, kind sort of, of... you kind of forget about that because you think that's a previous, it's the same tournament, but in your mind, it's sort of a separate tournament, if that makes sense, or a separate section of the tournament. A new patch has happened, the meta shifted, there's new items in game that could revolutionize your whole ultimate team. So for me, I think he sort of just goes out the window. Been impressed by. Uh... Some of these foot birthday icons, FG. Oh I mean, they've gosh. been ridiculous, haven't they? Omri's been unreal, 97 oh, yeah. pace, ridiculous amount of coins, probably Rude Hullet. A striker. Obviously, used in midfield a lot of the time 
up front now. Five star skill moves, five star weak foot. I think he's been one of the players that have made a difference. And as always, Team of the Earl in Harlem. Well, the thing that I'm liking is how people are trying to stop Team yeah. of the Earl in Harlem. We've yeah. seen Rodri at right back. Yeah, in everyone's, the first everyone's game. got their own whatever, though. Who would you Just use? make sure he knows. I'm to be honest, I think Rodri's done well there, hasn't he? Yeah, I think Rodri's going to be a, a familiar choice. He'll be using Ogbené as well. He's got aerial plus play style from Luton, so a lot of players use him at right back. But conventional right backs in that position, I don't think there's too many options in game. I mean, the beauty of it is that we've always got live items coming, so fingers crossed there will be a couple of options as we get underway for well, the, the second game. As we said, the controller has been passed as we jump into our second leg of the matches now. This could be an early start for Northern Forest. This could be an unbelievable start. We we're just speaking about our Erling Haaland and Rude Hulley. He did everything right there, Ryan. It was on a plate. It was. I think he didn't realise he had that much time. He actually could have brought it down and waited for the goalkeeper movement from Messi, which did predict the right spot. Of course, you have to give him credit for that, but he definitely could have easily conceded from that. That's for a free kick. Five minutes in. That may have just been a three-goal cushion there for Northern Forest. The dream style would have been for goal poacher. Messi, FTG. Now the two players for this Fulham side, we know that they were bottom in their group. But he was creating more chances and scoring more goals. He was the only player that did win a game out of the two of them as well. This comes in towards the front post and we spoke about Rodri being superb. He sort of has been the, uh, I guess you could say the plaster in a right back FG, just to stop Haaland in his Whoa. moments. This is a long ball forward to find Hullet. Finesse shot. Ball roll inside. Fancies that finesse shot as Ryan tees. Doesn't out for a corner. I wonder what's happening now. Well, the interesting thing is how much the uh, meta has changed because there was a point where that used to be a Traveller. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so things have changed. I mean, unfortunately, I'm so far behind that I'm still seeing it as a Traveller. But these guys think very forward thinking. There's that flick on. The idea there was for Rafael Varane at the back post. In Schweinsteiger, we're getting the nod, Ryan. Yeah, of course. It's a good option in midfield. I feel as if the staples, though, if you're obviously using Rodri at fullback, he's obviously out of the, the question. Kevin De Bruyne, of course, probably the best midfielder. A lot of Bruno Fernandes as well. Yeah. I think his play style plus of long ball pass helps a lot as well. A lot of players use it just to start attacks quickly. You see, don't you, those big switches of play to left, back and right back when they're just overlapping. Right on cue. There's a perfect example of it. Messi FTG has to get this first goal. To really shake things up here in the Premier League. Good press. Now for a corner. This is goal poacher. Who also went unbeaten in the group stage is here for Northern Forest. Three wins, one draw, 16 goals scored. Another one. Oh, that man again. How do you defend against that? <laughs> it's, it's impossible. You see, you see exactly, you know exactly where it's going, but you just can't stop him. I think, I think if you've got five players around him, you still couldn't stop him. He's just too dangerous from that situation. Of course, even if you move the goalkeeper, you, you try and move someone to the near post, they can just bait you with the player lock and then move him to the back post. It's just, it's so difficult. He really is so, so important to these teams, isn't he? Makes you wonder what would happen if he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. In half of these teams, don't be wrong. He's oh, finally uh, spoilt for choice when it comes to all the team items that are available. Schweinsteiger lofted in to pull it De Bruyne. This is still alive for Fulham. They're hunting for a way back in this tie. Omri comes back and does enough to defend for Forrest. As we say that, our other game is kicked off now. West Ham, as we know, had a two-goal advantage against Brentford. It's GRK against Gossipic in that PlayStation. Second match up now, we'll keep you up to date. With all of that, you can also catch it on our B stream live here from the Premier League. Long ball forward. Fine talk, Beno. Can't really get his foot in together. Left back choice. I mean, we spoke a lot about the right back. Left back doesn't really seem in too much of an issue for dealing with Erling Haaland, just from where he's normally located on the pitch. Ben Chilwell or Kai Havertz? I like Ben Chilwell. 
I think Ben Chilwell's a, like, a very, very viable option. There's a chance it goes wide for goal poacher. I mean, I like Ben Chilwell. Kai Havertz is a very, very popular choice, right? I saw you smiling there. You're going yeah. to, you're going to Havertz, Yeah, you? I think just the aerial presence, six foot three, I think, for me, whip pass plus as well. So did I see Marcus Beasley get a few run outs? It's not Back in January, this could be a huge chance for Shut Fulham. Up. If he can get it down, Alisson with a ridiculous save. But to the point, any other left backs? Really get a look in? I don't think so. I mean, Ashley Cole, unfortunately, just isn't up to, up to the job. We're going to defend against the likes of Omri. Switch a play again. We go from right to left. That's exactly why Rodri's there. Just wins the header from the, the switch of play from Red Lack. Not Red Lack, sorry, goal culture. Wins the ball back as well from the high press. How can he work in from this area? Back to Rodri. Now he's going to have a shot from that far out. Omri might, though. It's brilliant. Close control dribbling. There's the flick on, headed it down. Back to Hullet. Flicked it up on his right boot. If it wasn't for Rodri, he may have found a fourth. It's amazing how quickly things can change, though. A goal for Fulham changes absolutely everything. There is plenty of time yep. to play. Well, two goals have gone in between West Ham and Brentford. The scoreline's 1-1 one, one in the game. Aggregate scoreline 5-3. West Ham looks to be going through. This is a big chance. Haaland's it's got hard. to do better there. Oh. This, could be, this could be a, a horrible way to win the first half. Time to green at the near post, Ryan. Was that the decision to make? I think the goalkeeper movement from Messi has sort of caught Goal culture off guard there. I think he rushed it again. Goal culture, of course, he creates a lot of chances and played him in the past. He's somebody that he likes to go forward, genuinely. I think in this moment, yes, he's up by two, but he will still want to win the game. For his own personal thing, he wants to win the game. So for him, he's just been a little bit too hasty in front of goal. Do you try and keep your approach the same, regardless of how your partner's done? You have to. It's so difficult because you're obviously thinking that, OK, in this position, if, if you're red lack or a goal poacher, you're up by technically two goals on paper without even playing a game. So it's the pressure's on your shoulders to try and see out that result because your opponent, your teammate, sorry, has done his part already. We approach half-time, it's still nil-nil in this matchup between Messi, FTG and goal poacher. Well, you can see the frustration there. I think he may be full. There's been a couple of good half chances in there. Yeah. I've got to make, make more of it. We know from his XG and his stats on the group stages, he's averaging six to seven shots a game, FG. He's going to create chances, but nil nil at half time. He's done a good job to keep goal poacher out one, but two, he could be one the lump. Yeah, I mean, I think the interesting thing is as well from goal poacher side, he's probably glad that it's six minute halves. Oh, I'm absolutely. On the, on the other 100%, side. 100%, yeah. He's probably wishing it was nine minute halves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the six-minute half. Come out of the half furious. Yeah, it, it helps, though. The six-minute half defensively is that, you know, obviously, compared to nine minutes, obviously, the time is shorter. You have less time to sort of deal with a non sort of attacks from your opponent. But goal poacher, as I said, I still think he'll be annoyed with the chances that he's missed. It's fine margins. It's very, very fine margins, and we see it so, so much. This is far from over, isn't it, Brandon? Absolutely. I mean, look, there's been other goals happening in the Brentford game as well. Brentford are trying to come back into their... Match up now, 5-4. They're only a goal behind, are Brentford? Against West Ham. That's on our B stream live now. Two, back to this one, Forest still lead 3-1. It's 0-0 in this second game. It was Redlack's performance against Josh, which gave okay, Forest his two-goal cushion. Remember, the winner of this will play the winner of West Ham Brentford in the next stage of the knockout here. Later today, live from London in the Premier League finals. A £100,000 tournament. There's some huge stakes on the line. Tickets to the Champions League finals, tickets to the FC Pro World Championships, just tickets you can't physically buy. FG in the nicest way possible. Well, yeah, absolutely. Tickets that are super important to your the rest of your season. And there's so, so much more relying on just winning the Premier League. And that's why the stakes are so high. Great. It needs to go now for Fulham. Back to Bruno Fernandes goes down to ground. That's never going to be a penalty. Just one goal goes in. It's one of them, isn't it, in, in these two-legged games, Ryan, is you can't let your teammate down. Yep. But in your mind, you're like, I can't give away a two-goal lead. 
absolutely not give away a three-goal lead. The, the pressure, as I said, it just it does fall on your shoulders in terms of you're the one that determines the result in, in, in the sense that if you give the game away and you lose by three, you're going to be devastated not only for yourself but for your teammate as well. What would you prefer to do? Play first or play second? Play first. You like to play first? Done. Play first, yeah. I think obviously when I was partnered with Shells, I say he's better at defending than me, so I trust him a lot more to defend the lead. It's an aggressive win there from Varane, but it's put Forrest into a really deadly position. Into Haaland, red time finish! That is... wow. Another day that goes flying into the back of the net. And it's a huge chance wasted again by Forrest. You don't even need to time that one, in my opinion. I know, as pro players, you always get caught in a situation of trying to, to green time every single opportunity, but genuinely, just getting it on target there guarantees a goal. From a Fulham perspective, they're still very much alive. It's a lifeline. And he's riding his luck. And sometimes you need luck in these situations. It's another big win back again from Old Ben. Eh? Dispossessed, Fulham. Time ticking away. Still need two goals to even tease us towards extra time. It's, it's a big win back from Vieira. Nice step over exit. Where's Harlan in the box if you can find him? Never really causing too many problems there for the goalkeeper. Calling to come and play short. Back to Schweinsteiger. Van Dijk not going to be the player to shoot. Even will Schweinsteiger or will he? Uh oh. Keeper. Game on. And you know what? I was just about to say, I'm super surprised that ball didn't go into the box Same. because of Erling Haaland. Same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what a well-worked goal. And we speak, we spoke about the chances that goal poachers had. Game on. We didn't expect Schweinsteiger to throw a shot, did we? The German icon. Got some venom behind that one. 3-2, and this is where you start getting into your own head. I can't throw it away. Surely not. Yeah. I think that's where you start to get a little bit more worried. You start to to second-guess every pass, thinking if it's going to be enough power or if you get another chance at goal. Do you go forward? Do you play the, the risky pass over the top? And Fulham will just be using the confidence in this scenario. They've already scored one. They'll be thinking, why not? Let's go and get another. Bastian Schweinsteiger, an item that we've not seen used in recent years, but it's very, very usable right now in FC24. Has he got, well, got two? Two white hands as well, hasn't he? With the foot birthday promo. Fun fact, I actually got both of them in one pack. Oh, did you? Yeah, I didn't think that was possible. Apparently it is. It is Forrest! Oh, great save. He's loving these volleys with Hullet, isn't he? That's two or three of them. He's some superb goalkeeper for Van der Sar to keep him out. And now game management is super important at this point, as we go into the, the last stages of this half. Fulham needing a goal. Goal poacher, if it ends like this, he loses the game on aggregate. They go through, and that is the most important thing, right? Yep. Here he is going forward. Can he make this one count? Back to the Bruyne. And for the edge of the boot finish. And into a pause. <laughs> See, rest Any, we shall go. <laughs> it's game on. Yep. As it stands, sorry, it looks like... West Ham are on their way to a win as well. 6-4, they lead against Brentford. It would be Forrest against West Ham in the next round of the competition. If the scores were to stay the same, of course, there is still a lot more time to unfold. Goal poacher, someone who's had experience in this tournament. He actually won the tournament a few years back now with his yep. teammate, of course, in Dammy. And a good run last year as well with West Ham. He's... A very experienced player when it comes to the C Premier League. Yeah, and he's very critical on himself as well with his performances. He doesn't win a game, he's always upset, he's always questioning what he could have done better. And in this game, I just feel as if FG has had the chances yeah. to put it away. There's fine margins in games of FC 24, and we've seen a lot of missed chances. It's the corner, though. You see how effective they can be. You no know, one man is going to be selected. Maybe not, he's just whipped it in. <laughs> oh, oh, he's got in! Forget Arlen Arlens! Vieira has just timed that run! <laughs> Look at the shake of the head from Gold. Perfection somehow. How's he work that one out? What's he got on the replay? It's just a drifted run in. And all the pressure that was building on him can come off his shoulders now. Ten minutes away from sending Forrest into the next round of the Premier League.
as West Ham extend their lead again, it looks like it will be Forest West Ham in the next round of the competition. Chance to break. Pull it goes one on one against Ferran. He wins it back nicely, Timo Werner. Second time of asking Van Dijk, right place, right time. And I'm sure all the casuals watching will appreciate Timo Werner's FC24 item because he is. He's the man you want off the bench, incredible. isn't he? Yeah, absolutely incredible. Well, as we close out the last couple of minutes of this one. A goal now would certainly shake things up. It's another big win from Rodri. By any means, it's not been plain sailing this Ryan for Forest, but they found a way through and they will be going through to the next round of the knockouts. Yes, yeah, a big performance there. Sort of the, the result was summed up in the first leg from Red Lack, winning three goals to one. Of course, 1 1 in this game between Messi, FTG, and Goal Poacher. It could have gone a different way, honestly, a completely different way if both players had took their chances early on in the game, but. It's going to be a last second chance straight at the goalkeeper. And there we have it. Massive win for Forest. They'll be going through to the next round in the E Premier League. Two matches down here in London. There is still so much more to unfold. Of course, what an exciting start it has been. Two games down, still so much more action to come here with the E Premier League. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes' time where the games just keep on rolling. Welcome back, and to those of you just joining us, here is a little update. Manchester United and Aston Villa are through the first matchup of the day, and we have seen Nottingham Forest and West Ham also go through. And again, some electrifying FC 24. Nottingham Forest undoubtedly the favourites against Fulham, but Fulham really cleaned up their act and held Forest against the wall until Forest finally broke through. And then over on our B stream, West Ham were able to send Brentford packing, but again, it wasn't against them. It wasn't in their favour the whole way through. West Ham very relieved with the result on that one. We have got even more knockout matches coming up for you today because 
everyone has to win. There's no second chances here at the grand final weekend of the E Premier League 2024. And up next, you can see Crystal Palace versus Everton on the B stream. And you're going to be able to see Tottenham Hotspur versus Newcastle United on the A stream. And they've definitely got a player to watch on the side of Tottenham Hotspur. His name is Tom Leeson. Richard Buckley and FG are here to tell you all about him. Yes, we certainly are, Frankie. Uh, we're going to be talking about Tottenham and the one and only Tom Lees. He was the star player for Tottenham Hotspur in the group standings. You can see his performances here. Three wins, one draw. FG, he was a man to beat. Yeah. at the groups. He's a very, very calm man as well and a very, very good player, especially on FC24. So I'm expecting very similar from him. You look at his stats and you look at the shots. I want to talk about this one in particular, this draw, because this draw was frustrating for Tom. Let's have a look at the performance that it came in. It actually came against his North London derby arrivals, Arsenal Football Club. When you talk about Tom's performances in the e Premier League, he had the highest XG from any individual player in the groups, 4.88. But I want to draw you to this here, because this is a very frustrated man. He scores a goal and he looks like he's angry. That's how annoyed he was by this game. The goalkeeper movement from RSD was unbelievable, you've got to say. It was indeed, and you can actually, we've got Tom here just watching us as well, and um, probably still really, really unhappy about what was going on in that game. But, I mean, the draw was, yeah. was it, it can't overshadow what he did. No, it certainly can't. And not only do we have Tom Lee stopping them going against Newcastle, but we've got a little bit for everyone at home as well, because there was a showdown that came out, FG. Rodrigo Bentancur, Miggy Almiron were the two players involved. And I know that all the players on the stage right now are being bombarded with messages. This is very, very special. Well, this is very, very special indeed and very, very important. I won't tell you guys at home who I went with. I went with one of them, but you can see two items on the screen. One of them will be getting upgraded based on who goes through. We've got Miguel Almiron and, like we said, Rodrigo Bentancourt. Two items that just go so lovely into people's FC24 teams and we're relying on the results of these fixtures. Yeah, we certainly are. Tom Lees has been the man in form. He's been the man uh, here for Tottenham Hotspur. He's been guiding them, hopefully, for Spurs fans all the way through to the Premier League Grand Finals. And our very own Casey caught up with Tom just before he kicks off. I am backstage in the Players' Lounge with previous champion Tom from Spurs. Talk to me about how you're feeling today because first time around, you're doing fantastic. Yeah, I think for myself, more of the same. From the way I played, I managed to get like 10 out of 12 points, but we know as a team there's a lot to do. I think the game's changed quite a lot in the last couple of months, the way people are playing, a lot of new items in the game. So definitely won't be playing the same way as I was in January. I think you'll see some different things today. Now, let's talk about your first opponent, Newcastle. For both you and your teammate, how, is, how are your mindsets going into it? Yeah, it'll be an interesting one because Painter, I'm aware of how he plays. I've watched Banks play as well. I think it's strange for me coming in second leg because I'm not sure what the score will be. Could be any score. But I've had it last year where, you know, you could be drawing, could be losing, could be winning. So, have to see how it plays on stage. I'm aware of what Newcastle can do, but I'm confident we can win. All right, Tom, well, I'll let you get back to it and I will send it back to you guys. Thank you very much, Casey and Tom. But for you guys watching, it's time to take your pick. On the B stream, Palace and Everton are about to kick off. And here on our main show, Spurs are facing off against Newcastle. And remember, that game does feature in-game upgrounds. So if you did that showdown, SBC, you have got so much to root for in this match. Welcome back to the Premier League. Frankie teased us with what's coming up right around the corner. Tottenham Hotspur versus Newcastle United. I've talked about Tom, I've talked about New uh, Spurs quite a lot, but Ryan, you're joining me in the commentary position. Yep. Talk to me about this Newcastle side because <laughs> uh, yep. th they've got a little bit going for them. Painter and Banks. Painter actually my first teammate since I, ever. Ever. 2017. So we go it's a, a lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah, literally. But he's somebody that. He knows his gameplay, he knows his style of play. Banks as well, a top player. But for Lyrics, I think he'll be looking to improve from the first time out in the group stages. Played well below his expectation and his, his level. I want to talk about the person behind him as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that very shortly indeed. Let's show you a little bit about Newcastle United and what their performances was. My eyes go to one thing and one thing only, and that's the possession. 
I cannot believe 28% possession over four games was Painter's average. That sounds very unlike. 28%. On the other side, Banks, 30%. <laughs> it, right, it's speechless. Yes. 28% <laughs> is so, so low. Uh, for people who are joining us all around the world, and maybe this is their first ever taste of competitive FC, having a low position like that, yeah. similar to real life, do you have the ability of being able to sit deep, defend well, and then counter-attack, or is it just not a viable play style? Um, do you look at that possession and do you feel worried for Newcastle United, is what I'm saying? In all honesty, no. Okay. Obviously, possession is a, is a key component to winning games in FC24. You want to keep as high possession as possible, but the most important thing is the goal scored. That is it. You need to score goals. You need to win the game. And I, I think, honestly, I think it benefits... I think it would benefit Payne to go in second, in all okay. honesty. Okay. I think he's somebody with his game style as well, as I mentioned. He likes to keep possession. If it's like himself. a nil-nil going into the second leg... You're in for it. You back him. Game. You back him to get You're a for result. A very tough game. How... <laughs> I've not asked you this question, so I'm getting no time to prepare. Yeah. What, what, what painter's play style, what would you compare it to a Premier League team right now? Oh. Maybe like Dyche Everton? You know what? That's probably the, the most fair comparison. And he's a Liverpool fan of that. <laughs> he's not going to like that. Representing Newcastle here at the EPL, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got in the locker. He, he's been a player for so long in around this scene has Painter. We're just getting the games underway very, very shortly. Indeed, if you are wondering where my team is in the E Premier League, well, we've got some games to look forward to. Crystal Palace versus Everton. Wolves against Burnley, not too long away. And Arsenal against Sheffield United. The four teams that are already in the quarterfinals for, it's a mixed bag. Yep. You've got a couple of sides in there, Man City and Liverpool, powerhouses in the E Premier League former winners yep. of the Premier League as well. Brighton, who are a really solid team and a solid outfit. And then the rookies, the underdogs, Luton Town, in the quarterfinals. They'll be in action tomorrow, where we get things kicked off with Championship Sunday. The prize money comes into play in a serious way. £30,000 the winner will be taking home, as well as the E Champions League for runners up and the FC Pro World Championships because it's huge. bigger than just the E Premier League. Oh, here. absolutely. It's huge. It's huge things that are, the players are looking forward to, hoping they can get to that stage of the competition to secure their spots in those elite competitions as well. Painter up against Lyrics. It's sort of the old guard. It against is. Against each other again. Players that have played for a number of years. They've played in multiple E Premier Leagues themselves. You've played on the E Premier League stage yep. a couple of times. You know what it's like to have a poor performance and also have yep. a good performance yep. at the e Premier League as well. What will the players be feeling right now on the main stage? I think nerves, to be honest. That, that first game is always nerve-wracking. The second game, if you make it to that stage, you sort of have bedded in already. You know that you're able to, keep, to cope with the pressure on stage, the cameras, the lights. Your, your opponent's sitting directly opposite you as well. So I think once you deal with that and you get used to it, it's honestly smooth sending from there on out. Well, the wait is over. The main game for this round three matchup is underway. Tottenham Hotspur against Newcastle United. Spurs kicking from left to right. In that navy strip and in the green from right to left will be Newcastle United. Painter representing Newcastle. And if you have done the Miguel Almiron SBC, you'll be wanting Newcastle to get a performance for you. When you talk about lyrics and the group stages, didn't have the best of performances. Over the last two months, he's had a lot of time, a lot yep. of preparation. What are you expecting to see differently from Lyrics here today that you didn't see at the groups? I think decisiveness going forward. I feel as if when he built up, it's as if he was scared to lose okay. possession. And I think when you play like that, it's it's never going to end well. And I think... He doesn't have headphones on, so he's definitely can hear us <laughs> yeah. as well when you're talking about this. The person behind him, Nightwatch, a e Champions League runner-up. Mm -hmm. He's been in the scene for a very long time. And he's a very logical FC player. He will break the game down to the 10th degree. Having him in the corner as well, having that coach who you trust, who you've had a lot of good experiences with, yep. that does help a lot. Oh, drastically. It can improve your performance tenfold in just a matter of two months. Might not seem like a long time, but it's enough time to refine your game, refine your skills, and lyrics pushing forward. Beautiful play in around the box. Tottenham Hotspur, a couple of step overs with Thierry Henry, cleared by Allison. If you are wondering, well, I'm watching Spurs and I'm seeing Henri 
in the attack. It's because we're playing on Ultimate Team. All the eligible items from the Premier League, past and present, are available to be used. So you're going to see the old guard of a rude Hullick, one of the best items on the game. Kevin De Bruyne, Erling Haaland, all going to be involved alongside Declan Rice, who we've not seen too much of. He also features in the heart of this midfield for Spurs. The build-up play, short and concise here for Lyrics. He's trying to open up the deadlock and give Tottenham Hotspur a one-goal lead. 15, 20 passes, building up, waiting, holding, and trying to see if there's an avenue to be exploited. And there it is with Thierry Henry. Opening the scoreline for Spurs. That's more like it from Lyrics, the build-up play as well. Didn't rush his chance, but I did the time. You can see from the replay, building up. Declan Rice into Henri on his left foot. Green time finish into the corner, and it's a great start from Lyrics. You just see Tom behind him there as well. Just a wry smile. That will give Tom confidence. So much confidence. Genuinely, because obviously when you're playing with your teammate, knowing that it's aggregate score lines, you want to... They're as responsible for your performance as your offer. That it's not just own. down to you. You have to yeah. rely on your opponent, or your teammate, sorry. Well, let's see what Painter's got in the locker. The majority fans out there wanting Newcastle to put up a fight here. And also, if you did that SBC for Miguel Almiron at home, he is on the line as well. A plus two upgrade if Newcastle are victorious. Beautiful play, Schweinsteiger. Great interception from Vincent Company. But if you're a Newcastle United fan, that's really promising. Yeah, it's a huge chance there from Pay. It's a great build-up play, in fairness. It's one of the very few times we've seen him progress up the field because Lyrics and Spurs have had the lion's share of chances and possession. Not seen a lot of crosses yet in this game. Yet. The ball's been on the floor. <laughs> I would say yet, definitely say yet, because Nightwatch as a coach for Lyrics, he'll definitely be implementing those yeah. back post crosses, just the knockdowns as well. Ball out wide with Chilwell. Got a couple of runners in the box. Haaland, not where you want him. He's played to feet. As Roderick fires it back into Erling Haaland, the ball being juggled around in the box. Not quite what he wanted there. And Lyrics now given the opportunity to play out of the back, slightly slow possession. Vieira in at right back, Yeah. by the looks of it, he's certainly utilising those wings, and Holly looks to be in at left back. He's got a back four, <laughs> my not, it looks like it. Holly, company, Van Dijk, Vieira. Yeah, it's just height, pure height in that defence. We are doing everything we can to stop a cross. Yeah. And I'm sure when we see some crosses in, I'll, I'll let you tell everyone at home why Erling Haaland has been so dominant in the air. Young in Son into Haaland, yes. not where you want him. Cole Palmer on the edge of the box. And a chance for Newcastle and Painter to come forward. You saw those possession stats, 28% of the ball that Painter had. He's been much better this time around in possession of the ball. Less wasteful, that's a nice little ball over the top. Chill well to De Bruyne, just offside. Really good first 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm impressed from the level of above these players. I speak to Painter outside of... It's not the best warm-up no. in preparation. Preparation-wise, I would say definitely below par. However, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying he sort of plays down the expectation on his shoulders. He would yeah. want to do well in this, irrespective of how the season's gone for him in general the previous years. He still would want to do a... or have a good showing at the Premier League finals. These are the best players coming to the best league in the Premier League. Yeah to compete for huge, huge prizes and huge implications as well. Schweinsteiger had a short spell in the Premier League, but he's featured heavily in the squads. It's great to see all the new items as well. You look at Declan Rice, Cole Palmer, the new foot birthday icons and items in the team. That's flicked into the back post, but Chilwell just underneath it. Ruben Diaz in at centre-back as well. I don't often see the acid. It's Van Dyke plus one. Yeah, I think Van Dyke's the sir. Irrespective of who other option you want to use. Van Dyke, I think Van Dyke, Harland, Rutile and De Bruyne. Those four players for me are staples in the squad. One more chance before half time here. If this is the first time you're watching us. Both games will be played back to back. So we have the Xbox matchup first here. That result will carry over. So if Tottenham also has been 4 0, that means that the PlayStation game, Tottenham would have a four goal advantage going into the second matchup. Every goal counts. Yep. 
as the other match that is taking place right now here at the E Premier League knockouts looks to be Crystal Palace in action against Everton and to my eyes Crystal Palace are 1-0 up yeah 1-0 up is a bit. an important game for Shells just to kick off given that confidence to try and see if they can progress into the competition two very similar stories on the stage to be honest yep. you've got Shells and you've got Lyric who their teammate was exceptional yep. and individual performance they probably felt a little bit like they, they let the team down both players winning their individual matches right now yes. so that will just give a whole new breath of fresh air to the entire football club I think it gives confidence not just to themselves but as I said the teammates yep. genuinely I think that's so key based on you, that aggregate score lines as well in the back of your mind as well there'll be that element of I know that my teammate might not do a lot for me. So you kind of think, I need to win I need to team. win by two yeah, or three. Completely messy. And then up. when you look across and you see your teammate winning, it just gives you, oh. You just play your Relax the game. shoulders, get locked in. Erling Haaland into the box. Van Dijk does well to get back. And that was an early chance here in this second half of action. Lovely manual switch of play. A new pass that was brought in for FC 24. Haaland out wide into Hulley. De Bruyne can finesse. Cole Palmer can finesse. Henri, beautiful. Into Son. Good save. Great shot cancel there in the box from Lyrics. The sort of baiting painter to, to step forward to try and potentially block a shot at goal. Chilwell high and wide. He's the out ball at the minute for Newcastle. He'll continue his run. Doesn't have the options in the box that he wants. Haaland's on the edge of the box. Number nine. Playing as a number 10. Get in the box. It's a good press. From Painter to win the ball back. He will also have looked at this game, Painter, and gone... I know Lyrics didn't play that well yep, in the groups. Exactly. I have probably played him a couple of times before in competitions. He'll have no fear coming into this game. I think for both of these players, they'll go into it thinking it's a winnable game. Yep. It's a winnable matchup. It's also not necessarily a nice game, mm -hmm. someone that you're familiar with, yep. so you know how they're going to play. You're not going to feel pressured or feared by your opposition. Haaland having to utilise the ball out wide. Chilwell just drifting in field, and now Roger will take over. Bastian Schweinsteiger, not in a position where you want him. And again, Haaland is just dropping a little bit too deep to be able to have yeah, a real impact in the box. Linking up play, Schweinsteiger, the extra pass could have been played. Just good defensive work from Spurs to nip in. But Vieira stepping high, winning the ball back, and now you see... Haaland just starting to pull away the back post, ran out of play, unfortunately, and 64 minutes into this game, we go into a port. Great build-up play there from Painter. It's just a, a split-second decision, trying to play the extra pass. Maybe he dwelled on it slightly too long. He could have actually passed it again, but just that little moment of hesitation caused him to lose possession. Just seeing conversations ongoing here. That was Nightwatch, to put a name to the face. Who's stood behind Lyrics. Painter, no coach. Needed. Been around the block. <laughs> Great precision. Oh, switch of play there from Lyrics. Done it a couple of times just to open up the pitch and give him a different dimension to attack. And you again. see the bottom of the pitch there. It's Rude Hullet. Play a look. Fate into the box, couple of step overs, play a lot to the back post, and Allison will pick it up. For people at home who may be unfamiliar with the play a lot, why are you looking to play a lot there? I think it, play a lots are used just to move players into a position or desired position that you would want offensively. Anyway, we've seen the utilization of it defensively, but in that situation, just clicking in both the left and the right and the stick just to move a player off the ball. Balance towards the byline, Vieira steps in, a little bit risky when you go in like that. Yeah, just speaking more on the player dog, I think that was a, a great option there from Lyrics. Just to use that to move the player at the back post for a driven pass. Potentially could have found its way across goal. Haaland wins it, but doesn't win it convincingly. But Cole Palmer, 
up against Rude Hull, it will move the ball forward, just nudging it towards the byline again. Hull in a very similar position. Nagini cancel, trying to open up some space. And this one-touch passing that led to his first goal, coming into play yet again. Declan Rice, Howland on his left foot, just showed a little bit too much to Painter, and he's Van Dijk, who walks away with possession. So, game that's on the real tender hooks right now. It's edgy. You know that when Painter does get a good chance, uh, a 60, 70% chance of a goal, he's probably going to take it. Yes. He's just not really had a sniff in around the box, it seems. Someone that played in, in a previous E Premier League as well. He's not somebody that gets debted or discouraged by not creating chances. All he wants is just one. That's yep. all it takes. And in this situation, it'll be great just to, to get himself. I think it was the game against Nottingham Forest, where he had one shot. And yeah, scored and, and red snatched, light, yeah. a, snatched a draw out of a seemingly just really poor performance. He's got a few buddies up here, does lyrics, and Tottenham Hotspur, and there could be a chance through Thierry Henry and now Hung Min Son taking over for Newcastle United to snatch something out of this game. Howland just derailing the attack ever so slightly. Switch of play, opening up the pitch. Chilwell, De Bruyne, beautifully oh. bounces all the way through. It's unlucky. It's a nice play. Last moments here in this first leg between Spurs and Newcastle. For lyrics, in my opinion, here, keep Should possession. Be. Try and go for the last attack. You want to try and get a second goal. Yeah, you want to resort to game management here, just keeping possession as close as you can to the final whistle, just to give your opponent no chance to respond in case you give up possession. Rude Hullet to the byline. One final chance. Kevin De Bruyne, Cole Palmer. Henri taking over. A little shimmy, a little shake. Is there one final chance at goal here? Son. Woo! Beautiful reverse elastical finesse shot. Green timed. Newcastle stay resolute. It's only a one goal win for Tottenham Hotspur and Lyrics. It's a good performance. It's a lot of building blocks for yeah. Spurs. And if they do win this matchup, and start progressing to the later knockout rounds, I think you'll start to see Lyrics come into a little bit of form. Absolutely. Lyrics has done his part winning the first leg for Tottenham. It's now it's going to be down to his teammate, Tom Lees, in the second game up against Banks. And if you're a painter in this situation, you have lost 1-0, but yep. you've, not been, you've not been battered. Mm -hmm. You've not suffered a 4 or 5-0 defeat. Yeah. Do, you, do you take something out of the game? <sighs> It's difficult to say because I think Peter created a lot of chances going forward. Less, of course, he didn't have too many shots at goal, but it was just that key moment before the shot that he messed up. But I don't know, it's a, it's a tricky one. For me, I'd be disappointed, personally. Well, I'll tell you who's not going to be disappointed, me and you, because we've got a very special guest yep. joining us for this second round. It's getting warmed up. <laughs> Tex, come on down. You'll be joining us on the commentary booth for this upcoming match. It's a big game. You, I heard you requested me and Ryan to join you in the booth as well. <laughs> uh, boys. How are you doing, Tex? Decent, decent. Manchester City's Tex. You'll be uh, in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Um, firstly, how are you feeling? Decent, decent. Uh, do you know what it is? I get scared watching other games going on and my heart yeah. starts pounding. It's the not thing fun. is, it's a, it's a potential opponent as well in, in terms of Newcastle or Spurs. If they overcome their next stage, they could potentially be playing you. So, you, actually, I want to ask a question. Do you have a preference? Ooh, uh, if there's a team you'd want to avoid, actually, I'll ask you that one. I want to avoid... There's a few, like obviously, the chances are it's going to be Spurs versus versus Palace yeah. in the next round. So I was hoping for a Newcastle or an Everton miracle, but now, <laughs> now we're at the Spurs Palace, a preference. I'm not, I, I ain't sure. I don't, I don't know. Like I think they're both just good teams. I'm yeah. sitting on the fence, being a bit boring, but I apologise. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with this man as well, former E Premier League champion in the uh, first ever year that he ran, one of the best players, maybe the best player to ever come out of the United Kingdom. Multiple major champion, a 2v2 club champion. He's going to be taking the reins and talking about someone you know very well. Um, a national teammate in Tom Lease. Um, whereabouts is Tom right now in terms of performance level, in your opinion? Um, 
So far, what I've seen of him this year, he's been very good when I he's agree. played. Like, he's been um, unbelievable. Yep. Like, uh, I mean, he's... Hold on a minute. Hello. Hold on. Direct! Oh, <laughs> great timing! Jesus. Oof. Uh, what, where was we at? I forgot, no, I forgot. Nobody saw that coming. He has just <laughs> launched it 70 yards off kickoff. That would have been some way. Do you know what? When that happens as well, surely that takes you out the zone. <laughs> if you're Tom, straight away, you're like, what is happening? But yeah, Tom Lee's text. Um, this year, where's he been at? Is it sort of an up and down last couple of years? I think for Tom, um, he's I think he's taking it a bit less serious this year than he usually does, and I think it's helped him a lot. He's, he's calmed down a lot yeah. when he's playing, obviously. On like 19, 20, uh, 21, that's when he was at his, at his peak, and the last year has been a bit disappointing for him. But right now, I think he's playing his best he's played for a while, and uh, yeah. We are underway. If you are just joining us, Newcastle United have everything to do, trailing by one goal to nil, and they'll be kicking from left to right in that green strip. And all in white from right to left will be Tom Lease. You also have the added bonus if you did the SBCs at home, Miggy Almiron for Newcastle United, you want him Banks to pull something out of the fire, as for Tom Lees and Benton Kurt, well, he's on his way to a plus two upgrade as Kai Havertz gets forward, but just quite offside. I don't know if you got the chance to watch the last game, Lyrics Painter, two sort of the, the old guard, would you say, one nil in the end, but I think both players will feel pretty pleased with the performance. You know, I was excited for that matchup. That's like an OG matchup yeah, exactly. from 19. Like, Painter, Lyrics. Painter's got a bit of an aura about him as yeah. well. Like, if, if I was to pay, play Painter, I'm, I'm a bit intimidated. Yeah. You, know, you know he's got that reputation. Yeah. But, um, no, nah, uh, I didn't see too much of the game, but I see Lyrics went one up and then, yeah. Would you prefer to play first or second? If you had a preference, of course, it kind of depends on who you're playing against as well, the team. But overall, if you would, would you prefer to go first or second in your matchup? You know me, I, Probably first, because like holding on to a lead is much more intimidating than just playing first. On the you know what I mean? Go on. Palmer gets the bounce back. Ooh. That good old goalkeeper movement potentially coming back. We were to hold Tom Lees. We were in this exact position when he played Arsenal. Yeah. And it was RSD's goalkeeper movement for Arsenal that. I was about to say, I thought Tom learned his lesson. Took his time a little bit, waited for the keeper to move, and he just fired it the same way the keeper moved. But of course, this little. It's just minor seconds or milliseconds in the moment we have to decide which which corner you're going to aim for. Pulley leading the line, that brand new foot birthday item, ultimate team birthday item. It's offside. This game's flying by. I mean, other than Banks having the one chance Look before we didn't run. get settled, he loves that ball diagonal over the top. Chilwell again Harland. getting involved. Whipped into the near post. Harland over. Oh. Henri with the header of Under Cycle. Like corners. corners are dangerous. <laughs> corners. Yeah. Basically a penalty. What is Harland? What is Harland deal? Let's see where he goes. You can see him player selected. Pulled towards the near post. It's whipped in right on the byline. Keeper. Oh. It's a great save. Could have been catastrophic at the near post. How did. It, I've heard this question asked a lot, so I'm going to ask you. How do you defend that? How do you defend that? Because I'm. <laughs> my <laughs> idea is just as. Do you remember, as yours? Do you remember when uh, Stoke City were in the Premier League and teams started passing it out for a corner instead of a throw in? <laughs> yeah. the lap. I'm playing everything for a throw in. Yeah. I'm, no one's getting near my corners. Fingers this year as well. I'm way better at corners. Hello. Chance. For Spurs, good in section. I'm way better at corners than I used to be, so I feel so good at corners. Tomorrow, so good tomorrow, at... if I get a corner, yeah, I think 50% chance goal time, so uh, that's what I'm banking on. And then six minutes half as well. Exactly. You, you so we're going to see Edge of the finesse, corner, goal. Just yeah. every time, just. How, how are you not on finesse? <laughs> <laughs> shut, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> see the offside trap there, played by Tom in the bottom corner, trying to squeeze that team up the pitch, trying to put a bit more pressure. Harlands will win that header. Henri, chance, big goal for Newcastle United. <laughs> this isn't going to plan for Tottenham Hotspur. Me and Tex, we just looked at each other. We're going to be able to take a look at the replay. Just a dinked ball in the air there to Erling Haaland. Goalkeeper movement you gave play Henry the game, one choice. not the player. Yeah. And Banks is playing the game right now. You know what? It's been a great 30 minutes from him. I'll be honest, he could have scored straight away and he's been... The goalkeeper movement. Yeah. Just like a little bit of seed of doubt in Tom's mind as well. It's going to be... He's prepared. A fascinating 60 minutes. All the attention was really on the, the other game. Yeah. Because it was whoever wins that game 
if, if Painter wins, say, 3-0, then Tom's got a lot to do. Everyone had Tom winning this game. I think that's why I'd rather win. In on goal. One on with the keeper. Finesse. Finds the bottom left corner. And Spurs back in front. I was, I was going to say, I think that's why I'd rather play first than second. Because you see Tom got an early chance and missed and you start downing yourself and yeah. stuff. So I'd much rather play first. But yeah, Tom, he's expected to win this game. And I think it'll be a big confidence boost if he could just go on and, and get into the quarter final, is it? Round of 16? Yeah, I think Panks would be a bit up, upset with that. You saw his emotion as well. We were thinking he could have achieved possession with Van Dijk there. Maybe if he went for a shoulder barge instead of a standing tackle. could have. I think if you're Banks in this game, I think... You sort of alluded to it then. You've played well. Yep. You've not played poorly in this match so far. He knows what he wants to do. He wants to get the ball in the air. He wants to play into Haaland. A little bit fortunate there. Henri just maybe didn't have the confidence, but it was offside in the end anyways. Rodri in at fullback. Nothing he can do about Haaland when it comes in the air. But that switch of play is always on when you've got a player with the passing stats that... Man City's number six does have. That's a lovely ball in behind for Henri. He's quicker than Blanc, he's stronger than Blanc, but just pushing Henri to the byline. Approaching half time here. You are just joining us. Elimination FC. You win, you go through. You lose your E Premier League journey, comes to a close. In the first knockout round, that's an offside oh, trap. No. The goalkeeper that's movement a, just too aggressive. That's a horrible mistake. I, I don't know what to say about that one. That's uh. Well, this is why you're on commentary because you should say something. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, but it is. I don't want to say. Okay, okay. Usually I want Tom to win, right? But right now, obviously, I'm trying to play Newcastle in the, in the quarterfinals. So every time Tom's making a mistake, you have to think for yourself. You have to think for yourself. Frustrated at this moment is. Tom Lee, we've seen 45 minutes so far. Um, not going right for him. You know what? Banks has played incredibly well. I think yeah. he dictated the tempo for, from the from the get go. That chance there, I want to say chance. That goal, that's a horror show. It's from the offside track. So why? Oof. In that moment, for people at home who maybe you're just thinking you just left an open goal, what is he trying to anticipate there? You know what it is. You've probably seen it already on the stream, right? Harland at the back post, yep. he's so intimidating. So if you click a double white, a double triangle, the keeper sort of stops the back yeah, post yeah, cross. Yeah. So that's what's in Tom's head. But obviously, he I just think committed way too much. Banks did well to realise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He to did. be fair, because I think I would have crossed it still. <laughs> <laughs> Banks is playing well at this moment, and what that means with potentially extra time penalties could be needed to see who continues their E Premier League journey. On the other side of the stage right now, there is a match taking place, and that is between Crystal Palace and Everton. Palace did win the first game, and I believe it's 1-2-1 one, one right now. 2-1. In that matchup, we'll give you the updates as and when. The goals drop, but we're on our featured game. And with 45 minutes left to play, I didn't know if I'd be saying this, but it's in up in the air because Newcastle have played extremely well. Winning the ball high up the pitch. Banks is flying with confidence right now. You can just tell the way that he's playing, the way that he's pressing. He feels as though he can win this game of FC. Dinked into the box. Howland always going to win the header. And Bene, Son! <laughs> Corner, 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 corner. This is, this is, this is dangerous. Where's he going to go, Ryan? Dangerous. Near post? I think near post is the obvious thing, but it's just about gauging. A lot of people go near post because I think it's easier, in my opinion. Back post, you have to gauge the power. Well, he's actually he he mixed it up. It's on Rodri instead. That's what I mean. You have to make sure you get enough power so it evades the goalkeeper. So, just... That's a poor corner. Yeah. Rodri, no aerial plus. You just need to aim for Haaland every yeah. time. Six foot five, he's... Yeah. You've got Blanc as well, if he's in the team. Yeah, he's in my team. Yeah. I'll tell you a little, little secret for tomorrow. I've got three aerial plus defenders. <laughs> I do not want to concede a header. Right back, Ogbené. Ogbené, yeah. yeah. Hello, one second. Kai Havertz opening up the pitch. It's a cross on. He gets the byline. Whips it in. Howard's up! And Harlan scores for Tottenham Hotspur to send Tom Lees back in front. That's a big goal there. He saw the player lock to the back post, Erling Haaland. You speak about his dominance, playstyle plus of Ariel. Havertz with the whip pass plus playstyle as well. There's one man that's going to win that, and he fires it. 
into the back of the net. Tom and Spurs restore their one-goal lead. You've been with Tom in these situations, maybe when it's not going to plan for him. Um, he does seem to have a knack of getting the performance out of himself when maybe he's not playing at a, a 9 or a 10 out of 10. He gets over the line. Well, it is with Tom. He likes to stay calm, but when he's in the game and he scores, he's a little bit of a passion. Oh. Hello. Oh. 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 <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne from 30 yards out. The goalkeeper was simply taken out of the equation. We've got to look at it again. Havertz, another assist. Green times, top beans. And look at that reaction. If my teammates listening, Bernardo, please get ready to move that goalkeeper. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> And what looked so promising for Newcastle United at half-time has fallen through Banks' fingers due to two attacks from Spurs. It was the cross to the back post yep. and the finesse. Two staples, FC24, two ways to, to generate goal-scoring opportunities just in a blink of an eye. And I think, I, I honestly don't believe Thomas played that well. But it's just the chance as we see straight away responding again from kickoff. Was he a bit, a bit slow to close him down? The thing is, he's far it's out. so far out. <laughs> he is quite far. Obviously, you have to green time it. Or maybe you don't even have that. He's got finesse style or finesse shot plus play style. So what we're saying is aerial plus finesse shot plus the two S tier play styles. 100%. Anything Watch else it. in there with him? Long, long ball. I, I don't long think ball. anything else. Oh, Colombo, talk, talk to me about long ball. Talk to me about long ball. You know but, about long ball. But no, nah, I think aerial, aerial plus and finesse are the, two, are the two key ones, especially for me as well, like everyone else. Yeah. Um, the main man tomorrow, Thierry Henry, he's taking me to the moon. He's taking me to the moon. Rodri brought into play for Tom here, out wide. Speaking of Henry, there he is. Declan Rice, beautiful pass into Haaland. Tom is feeling himself right now. One touch in around the box, another chance on goal. And this game that looks so promising, For the two now, he has slowly Ooh. slipped away. And a green time header, you probably when you take that shot and you green it, you think you've scored with Haaland. It's the manual aim, though. That's yeah. headers these days, yeah. manual aim, and uh, that's why I do miss some of my corners. But... <laughs> De Bruyne, dinked over the top. Real Ferdinand, Ooh. just doing enough. Tell you what, though. Next matchup, Tottenham versus Palace. That's a game I want to watch. That's a game I will be watching. Oh, it's a tough one because it's, it's two good friends in the scene. Palace, of course, Shell is a former teammate of mine. It's just that's a great game. That's, that's a game, game where you the you winner. put everything else down. Yep. And you lock in. That's game of the tournament. Man. For the next 45 minutes. Game of the tournament up until for, for the for the Saturday. Winner plays you. That's the that, that yeah. streak of games is, is unbelievable. Out of bracket. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> Two years ago, won the group, got the hardest matchup. Last year, won the group, hardest matchup. So, yeah. Harland just looking for Rude Hullet. Same pain another day. See a pause queued there from Tottenham Hotspur and Tom Lease. Benton Kerr, 18 minutes away from a plus two for everyone at home who invested in that SBC. Tom seems going 4 2 up. It seems to have just kicked into a bit of another gear. He's winning the ball high up the pitch. He's pressing a lot aggr more aggressively. Oh, and listen to that roar. He knows that that goal yes. is vital. It's Thierry Henry, it's the, the man you mentioned. Tech's building up, running towards the byline. He just cuts inside here with a fake shot and just goes directly for goal. Finesse shot plus again. From those angles, you can still trust the player, the player to find the back of the net. And that's exactly what Tom Lees does there. You see the celebration because a three goal lead pretty certain for me sending yep. Spurs into the next round. We're just in a pause here, so you talked about Bonanno and, and City. Um, how's it been, preparation? It might be the last time we get to chat, talk to you before the quarterfinals tomorrow. How are you feeling going into it? It's been good. If you asked me about a week ago, I was struggling in warm-ups, but I don't know, something clicked in the last few days, and I'm playing my best FC since uh, week two for Open, so... Wow. That's um, a statement. That's a statement, <laughs> so... That, that level, if, then. If, was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, so if I play well, I'm confident I can give Matty uh, some nice leads, but... And how are you feeling with the new items as well that have come in? They sort of changed the game a bit, the birthday I items. I think that's what saved me. Yeah. Five-star, five-star Hullet. Mm -hmm. It's a five-star week for Henri, and them two have sort of... They've, they've like, elevated me to, to be... Yeah. yeah, I'm playing good right now, I can't lie. Wait, so, so would you go for the Henri with the five-star week for over the skill moves? 
Um, yeah. And that's, that's, that's strange that's for me. Unlike, I, yeah. I'm a skiller, but yeah. I've switched it up a little bit. I want to be dangerous on both feet, so that's why I've gone on Ree. But. Saka involved here for Spurs. Hold it on another finesse shot. So I expected the, uh, the start of the game to go. The domination from Tom. But. Just looks like Newcastle have just run out of steam a little bit, Ryan, as we come into these last 10 minutes. The attacks have dwindled and it's been waves of pressure from Tom Lees and Tom Hotspur. Yeah, I think Tom's kicked in the, into gear as the game's progressed. As the clock's ticked on, you can see he's just being sensible, trying to keep possession as, as much as he can. It's been a... Promising start to the game for Newcastle United. However, with only five minutes left to play, it would require three goals of the highest quality, which I just don't simply think will happen. Um, another E Premier League for Painter. Yeah. Um, he's a serial qualifier, he's a serial, serial finalist, to be honest. Four banks, a lot of learning. And yeah. I'm sure he'll come back because this will be the. It, it's been a good performance from him. He Absolutely. had a great first half. Yeah, he's held his own, he's played well. You could argue, if he scored that first chance, genuinely... Could have been different. Complete, completely could have changed the dynamics of this game, but he's done well. But I think the ruthlessness of the E-Premier League this year, coming into the Grand Finals, day one, is the elimination format. One loss, and that's it. You're done. Home time. So in that second matchup as well, uh, between Crystal Palace and Everton, with Nick Stebb winning four goals to one. Uh, so Crystal Palace setting up a tie with Tottenham Hotspur, which will be coming up later on today. A mouth-watering affair. I'm going to ask you, Tex, who wins it? Um, I can't lie, I think... Go on, might be another goal here. Got it. Three times. Easy as you like. But anyway, back to it. Um, I think... Oh, it's, it's a weird one because going off previous performance, Lurks didn't play too well at yeah. uh, the group stage, but I've seen Lurks, he's playing much better now. Defending so, well. He defended yeah. a lot better in that so game. So this is, I don't, it's 50-50. I think if I had to put me on the spot prediction, I think Palace win. The thing is, it will be Nick Snebb versus Tom for the first game, the first leg. Is that first leg? That's first leg. Oof. That could completely change that how the game, the game Yeah. Yeah, it, it changes the game massively because if, if one player wins comfortably, yeah. I think it's going to be tight, though. I think it's going to be... I same. Think, we've not seen it today. I think extra time and penalties might be needed. I think, oh. I think the same. I think the same. But we'll see, we'll see. Good game. We've just seen full time there. Tom Lees and Tottenham Hotspur will go through. Newcastle United eliminated alongside Everton from the E Premier League. Tex, it's been a pleasure. Um, you enjoy a bit of commentary? I like it, man. Get me on again. <laughs> Get me on again one time. Um, when I retire, well, this, is, this is my home. You're taking my job. <laughs> no, Ryan's. <laughs> steady, steady. <laughs> it's been a, uh, an unbelievable set of games so far. Um, what we got coming up, I mean, some of the other sides. See Arsenal getting into the booth right now. From the yep. matches that we're going to be seeing, Arsenal, Sheffield United, is there any teams that, again, you, you're not really wanting to play? I'm going to give you a boring answer. Yeah. I'm, I'm focusing on me right now. Okay. I'm not watching other games. I'm focusing on me. Well, FG is with this man's uh, England teammate right now, Tom Leeds, as Spurs go through to the next round. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Buckley. I'm with a very, very passionate Tom Leeds. We saw so much passion from you there. Talk to us about what it means. First game on, always nervy. It's funny, because when I come out, I said to myself, I'm going to keep it quiet today. And then you go 1-0 down, you're not playing very well, and suddenly I'm shouting the arena down. I don't know why I do it, but I must enjoy playing. Uh, shout out to the boys at home. Got you your Ben Secure upgrade as well, so I hope everyone's happy. <laughs> you just took the next question out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> ben Secure's getting an upgrade. I imagine yeah. you did your own SBC, didn't you? I did, yeah, I have milked that, you know, I've put that everywhere, anywhere I go, you know. I'm known as the Ben Secure man in my family now, I make sure everyone's aware of it, so. Yeah, he's done on all of my accounts, I've, I've done him everywhere, I've made sure everyone in the house has done him, I hope everyone did do him. More importantly, we won the game, because I really wanted to get through and, and get into the next round, didn't want to lose the first game on. Well, you have done that, congratulations. I wonder if Bentancourt did his own SBC, let's head back to Frankie and see what she thinks. Thank you very much. Hopefully Ben Takura is watching this and will let us know on the socials. Hashtag ePremier League. Coming up after the break, the final four teams who get to play Wolves versus Burnley and Arsenal versus Sheffield United.
Town. They are not stopping anytime soon. They are absolutely loving it. What am I saying again? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like coming into it, I didn't really know what to expect as it was my first land, but I obviously turned up on the day. And that's all that matters. Trevella comes in! Marcus Rashford opens the account for Luton Town. First game I was up against Shells, ex-champion in 2020. And just like that, Shells replying in the best way you can. Chris Pass is probably the best team in the group coming into it. So we obviously had to compete with them. There's Rashford, fired into the back of the net. I know I could get a result, I know I could beat him. De Bruyne into Haaland! Going into the last game, we thought it was possible. Of course, we didn't expect it because Palace were definitely the favourites in their games. So far, so good for Luton Town. But as soon as you, well, I had the scoreline, the commentator saying Shells was down, three goals. Palace gutted, as you can tell. As soon as I had that, I knew if we win our games, then we'll top the group. Three, the goals are flying in for Luton Town. Felt very good. This is a full-time result, huge result, Gravison, for Luton Town. To succeed on this stage, you just have to uh, stay focused throughout your game. This is only just the start of the journey. They have done enough, they will be topping the group, and it will be two of the newer players onto the scene that have just surprised the pack. It was important to make a statement, because topping the group means that you're fast tracked to top eight, so you avoid the first day of play. We are one of the underdogs going into it, but on a good day, you never know what could happen, we could go all the way. I'll back us. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> A reminder there of what we have coming up on day two of our E Premier League weekend, where Luton Town will join the seven other qualifying teams in the quarterfinals. FG, you are watching the Luton Town boys dominate Group C. I, I say dominate, I mean they had to kind of share bragging rights with CPFC. That group was decided on goal difference. Yeah, the only group to be decided on goal difference during the last round. I mean, what an impact they made. They were relatively unknown going into the tournament. And I feel like they're two guys which we just saw from the VT to watch out for. Crazy that Harvey in his EPL debut did not lose a single game. Three wins, one draw. But we've got to talk more about what's happening today. So let's take a look at the bracket and find out more about who's still in it to win it. Because if you look to the middle of that bracket, FG, that is a very exciting set of games. It is indeed an exciting set of games. And my eyes draw straight towards Crystal Palace against Tottenham. We, we saw Tex speaking about it on commentary before. It is a sensational clash of two titans yeah. um, in Tom Lee's and, of course, Shells and we've got Nick set there as well and we've got Lyrics as well. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Well, I said before the break, four teams yet to play and to save their round in the competition. This is a knockout bracket. Wolves v Burnley on the mainstream. Arsenal versus Sheffield United and Michael Fisher actually making his debut in the studio because he missed the action last time round due to illness. Yeah, he did indeed. It's great to see him back, of course. Um, he must have lost his voice, I think, a little bit like you did in the, uh, in the last set, but it's great to see him and, and this is what it's all about. I mean, Every player, regardless of what happened in the groups, is allowed to, to be here for today and it's an opportunity that they have to take because it's knockouts. They do have to take it, however, Sheffield United undoubtedly the underdogs in this one, even though Billy Joe did have his moments back in January. Who do you think is going to be taking it on the B stream? Yeah, I mean, Sheffield United are the underdogs, but we've seen so far that underdogs can come out. I mean, I think the first game is so, so vitally important. We saw that especially with the Manchester United game um, earlier on in the show and I think I'm keeping my cards close to my chest. I'm not doing any curse of the commentators like Richard Buckley likes to do. You're not allowed to do that. You're a guest, not commentator. <laughs> no, no, no. No answers from me. <laughs> Fine. I'll bully you during the break. Coming up now, though, Sheffield United are taking on Arsenal on the B stream. And on our main show, Burnley are back in force against the Wolves. Well then, this is the big one now. Before we head into what is going to be another incredible round of action, you saw some of the fixtures potentially coming up. You see Spurs against Crystal Palace jumping off the page. You because whoever wins that will be playing Manchester City tomorrow. Gravison, we haven't been disappointed yet, have we here at the Premier League? No, especially with the level of FC we have seen at the moment, because we've not only seen great matches, but individually, I think we've seen a big step up from January to now the knockout stages. I think they are performing at their best, all of the players. And I do think we got to give them props because yep. they've trained at home. And I do think mechanically we've seen advancements, I mean, in the 1v1 situation, 
uh, in the player switching as well. I do think we are in a great level of FC at the moment, so props to all of the players. And also the teams. The teams yeah. have got so much better, so many incredible items in the game. Let's preview this one for you, then. As we said, it's a big one. It's Wolves against Burnley. Obviously, one of these two will be going through to the next stage in the knockouts. They'll be taking, obviously, the winner between Arsenal in their difficult matchup against Sheffield United there. That's obviously our round of 16. We say goodbye to eight Premier League clubs and then suddenly only 12 remain. After that round, there'll be just eight clubs for tomorrow's quarter-final stages here in London for the Premier League. Remember, there is some incredible prizes on the line. A £100,000 prize pool. E-Champions League tickets, FC Pro World Championship tickets, money can't buy prizes. You do not want to miss any of the action this weekend. Let's have a look at Wolves' breakdown of their journey so far in this competition. They did come third in their group. Luton Town obviously did win that. Crystal Palace came second. This was back in late January now. They only did lose one game, but for Mitch Hayward, a very experienced man when it comes to the E Premier League. I mean, if Sheffield United were to win, he would be playing against his old club. His form in this tournament is always really solid, Gravis. And as you can see, they did not drop a single game. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, for in my opinion, Wolves' performance is really solid in the group stage. I mean, just getting 13 points out of 24 possible, it's good. It's not enough to top the group, as we know, because Luton trooped it. But anyways, if you see this performance, you think this team should be really strong in the knockout format. And I do think they're the favorites against Burnley, because Burnley didn't perform as well. Six points out of 24 possible is not good at all. But then again, it doesn't matter, like, it was January, now it's... The game changed, everything changed, it has, so let's see. The one see. thing I've definitely noticed, Gravison, is players that maybe weren't as strong individually have come back so much stronger, you know? We saw, in the nice way, Lyrics. Lyrics mm. was definitely not at the races back in January. He's completely turned it around and he's put, he put up a great performance there, we just saw. Let me give you two more as well, because Lyrics, for sure, but then Dragon, 5-1, he didn't play well at all in group stage, and then Shells. He wasn't playing good in the group stage. Tuni result convincingly, especially in the defense. So I do think we are seeing something here. Experience matters, man. And Hayward, let's see. The one thing that I love about this matchup as well, obviously with the, the Burnley players, you've got Samo Ahmad and Brad Colson, two massive Burnley fans. For them, this means everything just to represent the club. Obviously, Joey Sharp there as well, one of the coaches behind the two players. He used to actually play four Wolves in past E Premier League tournaments as well. He's had to... Uh, to choose which way he wants to go on this game, but we are going to be jumping into it as it stands now. Kicking off first and foremost with our Xbox leg, Mitch Hayward against Brad Colston. Wolves from left to right in that away strip, Burnley from right to left as this game is underway. Also is Arsenal, Sheffield United on the B stream. Remember the winner of that against the winner of this will be in our next round of play today. As everyone's been saying, when's extra time coming, Graf? <laughs> we haven't it, seen it yet. We haven't seen it yet, which is weird, especially in the, in the first half, but still. I don't know what to expect from this match, because I really like the way Brad Colton attacks, especially he's really vertical. But again, Hayward, solid player. I mean, he didn't lose any single games in the group stage. And as you said, when it comes to when it comes to knockout format, he won't be... I don't think he'll be losing, like, convincingly. But then Brad Colston scores a lot of goals, so... I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Let's see. Well, one of the most interesting stats about Mitch Hayward as this corner does come in now... He's one of the few players that actually recalls the most passes in games. He averages 167 passes in his individual matches, which you're thinking... Is that really a stat? Well, everyone's pretty much been about 120 to 130 passes in an average game. Don't get me wrong, I, I don't normally count my passes at home, but he in short, he likes to keep possession. Yeah, like, if we could just point out to the people watching at home, this could potentially be, I'm not saying to the caliber of the players, I'm just saying the play styles. It could be Liverpool against City. Like, City just builds up slowly in a way, and Liverpool in three passes, they can score a goal. So this could potentially be what we see now between Mitch and Brad. It was defended well by Rodri. Does come in at right back. You're wondering why Rodri, a uh, defensive midfielder, is in at right back. Well, there's a six-foot-plus frame of Erling Haaland on the pitch and a team of the year build, which is just undefendable, as we've come to learn across the last couple of months. 
And these pro players at their top level have been trying to work out the perfect way to stop him. Speaking of robbery now, there's Harlan at that back post. Flick on, his headers and volleys in the box. He is offside, Mikhail Saka. But you just see there a very small intricacy of how simple it can be to create a chance out of nothing. Long ball forward, flick it across. Another day, Saka's onside, and it's a, a difficult save to make for the goalkeeper. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the few things you can do against that cross and then knock down from Haaland is probably offside trap, as Brad did in this, in this chance, because there's not much you can do, even though if you switch up or if you player lock, it could still get to the striker. So it was really smart to do an offside trap, and it worked out well. Now Haaland, in this chance, he decides to go forward. Well defended by Virgil van Dijk. Still, he gets a rebound. He finds Gurley. A second chance here in the edge of the box, De Bruyne and Declan Rice actually gets a start in this one for Mitch Hayward. Aubrey can twist and turn, it was a time green finish which basically put everything in the favour of Mitch Hayward. There's two shots on target. He looks to create another one now, Rice not going to be a player to finesse from distance, De Bruyne might be. Still patient though as ever. Mm. Yeah, but again, if you keep possession for more than six minutes, sometimes your, your players start to get a little bit slow. That's what happened with the pass to Haaland. But yeah, I think we've seen a really cool, calm and collected Brad Colston. This is not the Brad Colston we've seen in previous years in the Premier League trying to attack a little bit more. But I do think he needs to find a little bit of more vertical passes in a way, because we've not seen much from him in 27 minutes. For Burnley, unfortunately, only won one game in the group stages back in January. Yeah. It was a struggle for them in what was a really difficult group, eight. Hey? As you said, we can refer back to the group stages all we want. Everyone came through the groups. Even if you came bottom of your group, you still did get the ticket through to the Premier League finals, which has given you a second chance to really go away, put it right. And as we've seen from a handful of teams, deliver on the biggest of stages for a lot of these players that are playing their first ever eSports event. This is the beauty of the Premier League, giving Premier League fans the chance to represent their beloved clubs in a tour of a £100,000 prize pool. Still goalless. 33 minutes in. Remember, we'll be jumping over to the PlayStation after this one. Kai Harris against Salman Ahmad. And it seems like... We may have chosen the wrong game here because there's three goals in Arsenal <laughs> against Sheffield United at the moment. Arsenal leading 2-1 in that game on the B stream. Declan Rice lost it in. There's the one more flick on potentially Virgil van Dijk. Didn't know much about that one, but just did enough to get in the way. I do think sometimes when you're playing and your opponent is passive, you start to get passive as well. Like, it's really easy to just sleep into... to fall asleep into a flow of a game, you know, in a way. But that's when you need to change this up. And this is a really good long over the top through ball. Let's see what happens. Oh, Palmer. One on one against Kai Havertz. The ball's just flicking around. There's the head down. There's Omri just offside. <laughs> You've had a sort of good taste of this game so far, Gravison. 40 minutes in. It really has been a bit of a feeling out process. Yeah, I mean, they, they're switching up That's the play. So many switches. Yeah, but I do think sometimes you need to drill and pass it to a strikers as well, because you have to speed up things a bit. I mean, your, your opponent is expecting for you to just switch up the play in a way, so it's OK to do it again, but then when you get it into the other side of the pitch, you got to speed things up, because if not, it's going to be a nil-nil result with nearly zero shots as well. Keeping on the back post here, because Haaland will queue up for it. If we're going to be seeing a, a lofted cross into the box, Declan Rice into De Bruyne, Hullet. Can he get round Van Dijk? Yes, he can! Oh, unfortunately, the finish was not great. I did really like how Mitch found himself in the, that 1v1 situation between Hullet and the centre-back. He decided to shoot. That's a really great chance. Maybe it, it, it He's gone great. direct there, hasn't he? Yeah, maybe it's green, it's in. We don't know. Went to half-time for both teams. It's one of the few games that's actually gone into a nil-nil at half-time. We've been spoiled for quite a few goals here in the Premier League, so stay with us. There is more certainly to come in this second half. But we said that Mitch Hayward, look, he likes to keep the ball, he likes to keep possession, but all we saw there was just switch, 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 switch. Don't get me wrong. We know what the plan, what the game plan is with Erling Haaland in the box. Keep in mind that there is another game taking place at the same time here. Arsenal leading 2-1 against Sheffield United.
over on the B stream. If you want to go and follow that one, you can see both players locked in there. That's Billy Joe up against EOJ2. And uh, you can just see a chance. They're building nicely. I think they're about to go in to half time as well in that game. RSD and Michael Fisher ready to step up when we change console there. Last couple of words going in from Kai Harris, the teammate of Mitch Hayward. He's been a familiar name when it comes to Wolves and their esports activities over the last couple of years. He has been heavily involved, and so has Brad Colson as well. Proud Burnley fan. We're back on the way now, nil nil. Yeah, I think we've got a club that the steady cam guy. Wow, that was some take just pretty much throughout the whole arena. That was a really beautiful take. But yeah, coming back into the second half, I think we need something else. We need things happening because at this moment they are playing regular. Like they're not taking any risks and they need to do it. Let's see if Burnley want to take one of those risks now. Haaland, red times to finish. Just to show you, Colston might be feeling a few nerves. So what we're seeing here, it's a late flick on to Erling Haaland, who's right at the back post waiting for it. There he is, and there's the time, Green! And just like that, Burnley will spring into this game, and we'll see again on the replay. It's the simple scenario of you know where the ball's going, but it's a really late flick on into his position. Then you try and peel away, get the ball as far away as possible from any defensive aerial threat, such as a, such as Virgil van Dijk, sorry. 50 minutes in, we finally have a breakthrough. And for Burnley, they'll take that all day long. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to stop those corner kicks. And in my opinion, there's only just one thing you can do. In the settings, you can change from manual uh, to air and loose balls so in default it comes uh, with air and loose balls so if it, when someone just takes the corner it switches up automatically so if you turn it to manual you can maybe try to put Haaland against Haaland it's not like a definite solution but I do think you have to change those settings when you're a pro player but because if not that's what happens it switches up between Haaland and other players and there's not much you can do really if it's your first time tuning into the Premier League. We are playing on Ultimate Team inside FC24. And to be brutally honest, normally you see sort of the same 9 10 players. Vincent Company comes into the fray of things for Burnley at the back. I mean, it's no surprise if he's partnered up alongside. It's always Virgil van Dijk plus one. We've seen a few different variations, Gravis. I mean, Rafa Varane's had a few call ups. Rio Ferdinand, his icon. Northern for the Blanc. first time. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a couple of centre backs, a couple of full backs. Yeah. Watch for the possible cross. He decides to pass it back. You see the pause coming in from Wolves. They're not happy about summoning his mid-chair. Would he be looking for some sort of tactical change to break down this Burnley defensive structure? This is good. Saka finds De Bruyne. He's trying to get into the box. Where's he? The space. It's nearly a great win there for Omri. But Burnley able to play away from danger without going for a goal kick or a corner. Goes for a corner and into a pause menu it goes. Yeah, and we know what to expect from corners in a way. But yeah, Mitch in that situation, he recycled the ball back to the strikers. And I do think when you find yourself in those 1v1 situations against the centre-back, you got a skill or you got to find a speed boost. He decided to look for the pass to other striker, but I do think that was a little bit obvious in a way. Uh, it happens to me as a player as well, because I'm a player who passes too much inside the box. I do think with the current meta, you have to find those 1v1 situations against the centre-back and try to skill and speed boost. So, what, you know, as, as a pro in this scenario, Graham, so when's the moment when you're like, let's just take a risk, let's just take a 75, 8% chance at the edge of the box, let's just have a shot. Especially when, when you see your opponent is 1v1 defending you without the second man press, I cannot pass, because if I pass it, my opponent will take it. So if he's defending manually, I gotta go for the 1v1. Well, Wolves with a great chance from this corner. Fortunately, didn't go anywhere near. Aaron Haywood was looking for it to go. Well, we just saw in that last game, didn't we, with Spurs, the importance of holding on to a 1-0 lead for your teammate to then come and take over the controller. And then what could happen? As we saw Tom Lee's coming to life. Benson could get that upgrade for those that 
missed the game. Spurs with a massive 6-2 win against Newcastle. There's De Bruyne outside the boot. He's going to fall back again. Van der Sar. Keeping. Wolves only one goal down. And another pause comes in again from Wolves. They're not happy still. I'm sure they're not happy because Brad is quickly and easy finding the pass to the strikers. And when you find yourself in those situations over and over again, you're really uncomfortable as a defender. M. Hayward, does he fancy a chance when he's far out? De Bruyne again, still trying to work it. He just can't find the gaps. The passing lane just won't open up, and as we say, there's been another goal that's gone in. It's an equaliser for Sheffield United against Arsenal. Over at our B stream, that's 2-2 now, De Bruyne. This is your chance to shoot. Back to Henry again. Still trying to manoeuvre around to find that killer pass or a offside. pocket of space. Henry's offside. Possession will change hands again, and it's just a really frustrating day at the office for Wolves at the moment. They can't find a way through this Burnley back line. It is frustrating, but I think there was a, an open space for maybe a finesse shot with De Bruyne a couple of times. He worked the angle well enough, but he decided to pass it back to the strikers. And I do think when you pass it back and forth, back and forth, you kind of become a little bit too plain in your gameplay. So I do think right now there's three things you can do when you're passing it back and forth. You can cross, you can finesse, or maybe you can try to look for the 1v1. Uh, he's been trying the 1v1, so maybe it's a good time to try to cross it, to try to try to find the finesse as well, because really, there are a lot of options. Why do you think he hasn't been getting those 1v1 battles? Because you don't feel as comfortable in your game style, because Mitch's game style is just passing, which makes sense and which is a good play style. But right now in the meta, sometimes you don't feel comfortable with, I don't know, with the skills, with the way you flick the right switch in a way. So, I think it comes down to game styles. I mean, when you're put in a situation in which you're losing 1-0, you're not feeling comfortable, you kind of do what you've always done when you've competed as long as Mitch has done, which is passing, but it's not enough. Well, we're jumping back into the game now. A couple of changes made. There was a few words between him and his teammate and Kai. There's only one goal down. We have to remember that. And there is still a second match to be played, and that scoreline will determine who will be going through to play for Arsenal. Sheffield United. There's that famous big switch of play for Burnley. And Chilwell picking up possession. A second goal for them would be huge. Remember the... It wasn't a good day. A few days for them back in January in the group stage, but just goes to show what can change. Oof. That was close. That was nearly a golden chance, wasn't it? Hyun Son did so well just to set off a, a few of the oncoming runners. I do think both of them are defending really well, and that's another reason why we are not seeing any chances. The offside trapping is correct. The player switching is correct as well. The use of the second man press is really good as well. So they're defending really well. We have to give them that. Time to go for Wolves. It's more direct, it's more... And Roof is in the final third. You see a couple of changes there just to freshen things up. There's the room, there's the chance, and there's that goal! The Mitch Haywood has been so patient for... He was probably thinking, would it ever come for him in this game? But he just got a little bit faster in the final third. He was more direct. The punches, the passes were punched into the feet of Hullet, who can eventually pull away. And that just sets up the tie. Even Stevens, with four minutes left heading into the second match. Yeah, there is another thing he could have done, which he has done with both, with both Bastian Schweinsteiger and Kevin De Bruyne. It's the playstyle plus. The bullet pass. First time bullet pass from Smash Tiger to De Bruyne, first time bullet pass into a striker, and a beautiful goal. Playstyles are huge in this game. That's why you can see Thierry Henry with the finesse shot. That's why you see Haaland with the aerial plus. And for example, Tex uses all of the playstyle plus so well. I'm sure we'll see him making a difference tomorrow. 
play sets are such a thing right now. They are game changing, new for this year on FC24 Ultimate 2. And in time of two minutes is played, it will be a full time 1 1, even Stevens between Wolves and Burnley at the end of match one. But there is still much more to unfold between the two. A frustrating game for Mitch Haywood, who just couldn't really get going, could he, Gravis? And he was frustrated by Burnley, he was frustrated by the play style of Brad Colston, but for Brad, it was, there was a game plan to follow. It all worked out pretty well. I think, yeah, Brad was feeling comfortable with a 1 0 result. Uh, he did have a couple of chances, which could have went in, but he missed them, and then Mitch really did adjust well because that last goal was nearly impossible to defend against. But yeah, it's 1-1, one, one. it's the second leg now, and let's see what happens. We have a special guest joining us in the commentary area. Leah Ravel joins us. Leah, I mean, we've seen some crazy matches. This is more of the, the lowest scoring of games we've seen before, but this is the beauty of over two legs, the game can just change. It can, it can indeed. And that's the beauty of a 1-1 draw is anything can happen in the second leg and it's all up to the, the PlayStation players. So we'll see what happens. And I don't course. have a box. Don't worry. I'm a little bit shorter. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Of course, you've been following some of the action, uh, obviously, on our B stream as well, where there's been games taking place off stream. Mm -hmm. There's been some crazy games, crazy. especially the Aston Villa one. Yes, yeah, that one was crazy. It could have gone either way. Aston Villa was leading, Brentford, or, um, it was Brentford, right? Brentford was mm -hmm. leading and then Aston Villa came back and it was wild. Yeah, a lot of action over there. 90th minute, wasn't it? Last kick yeah. of the game. There's been some drama here at the Premier League so far. Don't worry, this is only day one of the competition. You can see us loading into the PlayStation game now. It's time for Sam and Ahmad and Kai Harris to go head to head. It's a 1-1 scoreline. It's all to play for, I mean, it's just the best of one for these players now, Gravison, really. There's no scoreline to chase. And again, if we go back to the group stage, uh, which we, we don't have to think about the group stage as to a previous thing to, to for, for it to decide like what's going to happen now. But K. Harris did score loads of goals. He did get seven points out of 12 possible. And Salma did just get two points out of 12 possible, so it looks like K. Harris should be a favourite, but let's see what happens. Well, it could be an early start for Burnley. And as this game is on the way, so is the second leg of Arsenal. Up against Sheffield United. As the guys were saying, great to see Michael Fisher back here at the Premier League. Couldn't make the group stages, but back who's... Ready than ever, and he's in a great position as well because it's 2 2 over there, Leah. I mean, they're both just smash and grabs this, but for RSD, he got a top eight finish last year of Nottingham Forest, looking to do the same, or if not go further this year of Arsenal. Yeah, RSD was very powerful last year with a really good performance for Nottingham, and I think, you know, this year as well, is going to look to duplicate that performance. Well, play a lot teased from Kai Harris, who has a familiar name when it comes to Wolves in the Premier League. He has been here a handful of times. And a few people were saying, Grav, sort of behind the scenes, that maybe they are a, a silent underdog to go quite quite some way in this tournament, Wolves. I agree. I agree with that, with, what, with that phrase because, I mean, Mitch, as we just saw, he's a really good and solid defender and he manages to keep the possession as well, which is something you would probably find in a person who was playing the first leg. But then, K, if we look at the stats, he played really well in the group stage and internationally he's been playing, playing really well in the qualifiers as well. So That's a big yeah. win, that is for Haaland. Snaps off the toes of Rafael Varane. Can Kai Harris make the most of this one? Back to De Bruyne. Can he turn? He can. He did time that shot green. Unfortunately, it's not going to matter, but to back up your point, what? He averages a lot of goals per game, just over two and a half goals a game, what we saw in the group stages from him. And he will create chances, Leo. I think well, averaging seven shots a game, when you play against him, you know you're going to be hands full. Definitely. I think, like Rav mentioned, he had a, a very strong group stage. And, you know, he has a good experienced partner in Mitch as well. Both of them have been representing Wolves for a long time, playing together for a long time. Obviously, Mitch being an E-Lion as well. This is good. This could be a big chance. Got Harris through with Haaland. It's one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper. It's down. It's through. It's going to be a tap in. He gets the ball, squeezes it through. <laughs> I mean, I thought the chance may have gone there, but for Kai, it certainly didn't. Still remain composed, a little ball roll. 
And the timing of that finish to sum up put it through the players' legs. I mean, Haaland is just a force of nature, really, because from the right back just kind of attacked in a way. So K knew it was a chance for if you got back the ball, then a player lock and really a through pass to Haaland. But then from a really 50 50 situation, he finds himself against the keeper. The nutmeg, too, is crazy. That's Haaland in a word. Split, <laughs> split second earlier or later. It, it just doesn't happen, does it? Oh. No. Bene dives into the tackle, goes through his legs, and just like that, Wolves from 1 0 down in leg one. They do lead 2 1 now. Chance to break away again. It's a long ball forward. Haaland's always going to try and jump onto that one. Still all square. Between Sheffield United and Arsenal, 2-2 over there. Ah, right back, I think. The pass wasn't meant to be to Henry. Ah, oh, that's a shame. It would have been a brilliant build-up. You saw the run trigger, didn't you, from the full-back there. I mean, this Declan Rice shout has been a, an interesting choice from both players. Mm -hmm. Just going to say, it's the first time we've seen Declan Rice, no? Uh, I've seen it before in the game between Crystal Palace and Everton, but yeah, even I mean we expect Rodri and Vieira mm -hmm. to be the right backs. But yeah, I mean there's just so many good players you can use. Good step over it's Haaland just trying to bundle his way forward. Offside. 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 It's an offside, it won't count. Well back to the point, I think we're so used to seeing Bruno Fernandes in there alongside Kevin De Bruyne. Mm -hmm. Declan Rice just offers you what you need in that role. Yeah, as I mentioned before, it has to be the play styles because De Bruyne has the bullet pass and the finesse, but then Bruno has the long pass as well, so they're just too good. Bene, still in possession here, Burnley. In his final ten minutes looking for an equaliser. Nice defence. Had to be aggressive to Virgil van Dijk and certainly that's what he was. It's new foot birthday icon, Rude Hull. It comes as a centre forward. And it's been causing all sorts of problems. Saka, back to De Bruyne. There's a player lock tease. He's going to use it into Henri, and it's a red time shot. You imagine if it was time green, it could be nestling into the back of that. Definitely. I think Grab and I talked about this a lot in the games over on the B stream, but we haven't seen quite as many aerial threats as perhaps we thought we would have given the other competitions this season. Commentator curse, it's coming. In a few <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind a few more goals. <laughs> I wouldn't as well. I think they're coming from K. Harris's side because he's attacking really well. He's building up the play, and I think if you want to play FC at his finest, you gotta build up. But when you are in the last third, you gotta attack. You gotta find those one v one situations, and he's doing it, especially with the bullet, with the player locks. He's playing really well at the moment. Henry back to Hullet, there's the player lock, there's Harlan at the back post! <laughs> Just offside! Almost, it was almost the curse. <laughs> the build-up there though, Gravison, was superb. The player locks, he knew exactly what he was doing before the ball was even played. He's playing really good. Unfortunately, it's just one goal, but the player switching to try to cover this thing exactly, yeah, he's been doing it right. He's going to get another go at it. Is there a flick down? There it is, back to Hullet. There it is. Just couldn't really find a clean connection to the finish, and that will do us for half time. Wolves 2, Burnley 1. And as both games go into half time, it is still a 2 2 scoreline over there between Arsenal and Sheffield United. 0 0 yeah. at half time there. It seems like a frustrating day in the office. For RSD, just saw 41 possession, 41% percent possession to Michael Fisher's 59% percent possession. Remember, both these players have been here at the Premier League before. I've got a feeling that that game might be going into a potential extra time or a late winner. We yeah. can only hope. Could be. We could only hope. Both very stagnant games. And after that, we'll be going into four more matches this evening here in the Premier League. So we'll see Chelsea take on Aston Villa. Nottingham Forest will take on West Ham. Spurs against Crystal Palace. That's the one that everyone has been talking about because the winner of that one will play against Manchester City tomorrow in the quarterfinals. 
<laughs> I mean, that match and the match against Manchester City. What can we say? Whoever goes through, it's going to be a great game, isn't it? What's the bigger match, though? This one, Palace and Spurs, or City and either one of those? I think all of them are great, but... I think maybe you'd say the quarterfinals because you're closer to the... Yeah, mm -hmm. the probably. ...spots and the tickets, aren't you? Yeah, and especially Manchester City with Tex and Bonanno. Yeah, that'll be... It's good, like, whoever plays against them is going to be a brilliant match. Which, for them, they've just had to sit back and watch today. Mm. Twiddling their thumbs, waiting to to get going tomorrow, where they come straight into a quarter-final. Nice cross. You're going to go for a direct finish? <laughs> yes, he is! <laughs> Kai Harris! He heard us. The walls tank! <laughs> a 2-0 lead in this game. It's a 3-1 aggregate scoreline. We spoke about those lofted balls into the box. It's that time green finish there, just to make sure. <laughs> he enjoyed that one. He's playing the perfect match. I mean, the player switching. In the first build-up from Salman has been perfect from K. Harris, but then, again, the variety of attacks. We've seen player locks, we've seen crosses, we've seen... Driven shots. Everything, everything. Uh, I, th I think he's playing the perfect FC24 match. The perfect mix of aggression and patience. And it's not an easy thing to do, especially when you're playing a match in which you're just leading by one goal. He's playing really well. And Salman is, I think he's frustrated because of the offside traps and because of the player switching, which has been flawless at the moment. And again, for Salman, it's, it's, it's really a tough situation because in the group stage, he didn't win any single matches. So for him to find himself losing by first one goal and then two goals, it's really tough for you, like on the confidence side of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially going into a game a decider game, a draw, like you mentioned in a previous a previous match, it could go either way. There's pressure, there's no pressure. Well, there's been a massive goal in, uh, in our other game, just to the side of us here. Arsenal have just scored their first breakthrough goal in the second leg. It's RSD, the leads now by a goal to nil. 3-2 on aggregate. Remember, the winner of that game, by the looks of it, will be playing against Wolves in the next stage of the knockouts here. But just back to your point, Gravison, it goes to show, forget the group stages. It doesn't matter, really. It goes to show you can have a great group stage, but then you're playing, what, six, seven, eight weeks later in a very different environment, in a very different format, where it's straight knockout. And if you're not your best, you're out of the tournament, and for some players, it's the end of the road. For example, we have the example of Manchester United. They were at the bottom of the group. They played the first match. And it was... <laughs> Destroyed. Yeah, 5-1. I mean, Dragon played a really, really near-to-perfection match, so... One more goal to seal the deal. It's all perfect, though, isn't it? Even there with Omri, it's a time green finish. So it's the whole way you could basically time your shots on FC24. If you time it green, it gives you a better chance of that finish, not just being on target, but ensuring that the goalkeeper can get no way near it. This has to stick! Woo! And there is still a lot of time left. 60 minutes on the clock, Salman Ahmad. Back in the tie for Burnley, and you just feel like one goal. You know this more than any, anyone, Graveson. A goal like that, it just gives you all the confidence, doesn't it? Especially when you've not been attacking well, but then you find the spaces. You pass it every single time to your strikers because he didn't pass a single pass backwards. And he finds a really good chance to him in son. He did attack really well, and now he needs to keep going because the momentum is in his side at the moment. How do Wolves react? Great player. Mm. Switching a lot there onto Hullet. Nice defense. The player switch was really quick. Oh, big mistake. Should give it away to the ongoing runners. Harland Hullet all queuing up. Omri there as well. Again, possession given away. We go back down the other end for Burnley. And as you see, Webb has been changed from Burnley. Wolves aren't happy about it. Paul's coming in. We try and match them up. Go and run there around the corner from Omri. Just needs to be aware of not being offside. There's the flick down. There's the ball back to Omri. In between Kai Havertz and Virgil van Dijk, they just about deal with it. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> Lost the possession of the ball, and now you can see how Kay might be a little bit nervous at the moment because he did have the whole leg managed in a way, but then. 
this is FC, this can happen. You can concede a goal and then the whole momentum shifts in a way. So for him to just pause it now, try to take a deep breath, try to analyze what he can do in this last 20 minutes of the game, I think it's really important. And having someone as experienced as Mitch besides him, it's a big factor as well. Who certainly has been to this event so many times, Gravison before and Mitch Hayward for different Premier League clubs in the past. That 90 seconds, I'm sure, will all be being used. Use every second of it because what a, uh, what a scenario this could be for them to go through to the next round of the competition. A couple of changes being made there. We can just see the players' screens off camera. What would you do in a situation if you were Kai? Breathe. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. Breathe for nine seconds. Yeah. It really makes a difference. Like, it just gets your pulse down. It lets you concentrate on the game. Like, it's okay for you to hear what your coach or your teammate is saying to you, but it's also important to just breathe, to try to be calm, because you got to be cool, calm, and collected to face those last 20 minutes of the game. You have to think that it might also affect the momentum of Salman Ahmed as well. Yeah, he just wants to play now, because mm -hmm. he's playing well yeah. at the moment, and he hasn't been playing well for 60 minutes. But that's where the passes come in. Mm -hmm. The period in the game, he's on top, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And he has to just keep pressing, keep creating chances, which I'm sure he certainly will do. We're jumping back in now, last 20 in-game minutes. Who will be going through to the next stage of the competition as we say goodbye to two more Premier League clubs. Some of the clubs already eliminated today. Man, uh, sorry, Chelsea falling out of the tournament earlier on today. Bournemouth, Fulham, Brentford, Everton, Newcastle, all eliminated here at the Premier League in day one of the competition. Really good. Oh, unlucky. Oh, unlucky again. <laughs> Gets a reflection, but yeah, the second man press from K was really good in there. And we got a full-time result. Sorry to interrupt, Graveson. It's Arsenal 3-2. Winners over Sheffield United. Sheffield United eliminated from the competition. Arsenal do go through. Well, that one sadly wasn't easy either. 3-2 with only one goal scored in that second game. RSD just doing enough to get the Gunners over the line. Massive switch of play, Declan Rice. Fine Fiera. Looks like he's come on as in a left back. Mm. For his last 10 in-game minutes, Burnley. You said earlier, Grav, you're maybe a little too slow for a full back. Yeah, but he's strong as a defender. But yeah, he's a little bit slow in my opinion. But when you're defending with your full backs at the end, it can work. Ben, last eight minutes now. It's time to go for Burnley. They want to keep their E-Premier League tournament alive. It was a risky pass to play into the feet of Hullet. Now the constant press has to come. They have paused it. It's just a question if they'll see that pause or not. Won't be stopped. Brother is faster than Havertz, yep. Yeah. Every round the corner, Ruben Diaz. Oof. And about Paul, off the line, oh, it's the bow! <gasps> Cole Palmer thought he was on for a match winner. Keeper just about does enough, and it gives enough time for Burnley to go back down the other end. An equalise would allow them to go into extra time. Okay. And Salman Ahmed can make something happen here. This game's got grab on the ropes as well. Yep. <laughs> oh, big mistake. Possession given away again, and you think that was their chance. Doesn't really need to score again, does he? Added time to come in. How generous will the officials be? One minute. It's only one minute. Yeah, it looks like Burnley will be eliminated from the competition. It will be Wolves against Arsenal in the next round of the knockout phase here. A very composed Kai. Harrison, what was a difficult game to come into? It was even Stevens, as we said, coming into the matchup. Salman Ahmed got going in about the 60th minute, and it was a tough last 30 minutes just to see out the result there. He's done enough, and Wolves go through Burnley, unfortunately, out of the E Premier League. Yeah, we're going to see now uh, Wolves against Arsenal match, which is going to be interesting because we just saw the game management from the Wolves to be really good, but then Ricky as well, RSD. He's a really good player as well. He manages to just move the keeper really well, to find the, the, the to be confident enough to be cool and calm as well. 
And yeah, I don't know what to expect from this match. I think any one of them could win. Absolutely. I mean, look, Arsenal versus Wolves will be a game that will probably be our last one, actually, to come off air today here in day one. RSD off camera looks across to us, gave us a thumbs up. I'm sure it was a very nervy game. The only one by a goal to nil. But as we said, eight teams are eliminated from the Premier League. Only 12 remain. As you said, four are through to tomorrow already. We've got eight teams left. And we're going into four more games very soon. Very, very exciting. I'm, I'm excited for the next round. It should be really good. Yeah, can I ask production to just have a come to the face of Ricky first the whole time? I mean, he's entertaining. <laughs> he's entertaining. He's an entertaining player. Not, not Zoom. Not me. Not Zoom. <laughs> not, my, not my teeth. Not it's okay. <laughs> anyway, enough from us. Robert, uh, oh, go back to Frankie now, sorry. Before we jump into our final four games here at the Premier League. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, Leah Ravel. They didn't zoom in on your teeth. They zoomed in on your chin. But Amelia, the makeup artist, did a fabulous job. Now, <laughs> coming up after the break, four more spots up for grabs in the quarterfinals. And unfortunately, the other four teams will be going home before Sunday's action. And coming up after the break, it's going to be Manchester United versus Aston Villa. Welcome back to the E Premier League Finals 2024. I'm Frankie Ward and I am joined by Aaliyah Ravel and FG to talk about our first round of 16. We had so many epic goals, but also I have to say, I think we had some nerves as well. I was kind of hoping for some blood buffs, but we didn't really see them, Leah. No, not really. I would say Manchester United was a good way to start the day, um, especially given their performance in January. Um, they were bottom of the group in January and I think ended, what was it, 7-1, 7-2 uh, on aggregate, which was a crazy performance for them. Dragon really proved a point, but let's take a look at the rest of our results from that first round. Any surprises there for you, FG? Um, I mean, when we're looking at surprises, I mean, I think the Manchester United fixture was a surprise just based on how they started, how Dragon started. He came out really, really all guns blazing. But I mean, business as usual for, for, for Tottenham and, and for Crystal Palace, I think. and. And Forest and West Ham as well. You say business as usual for Tottenham, but actually you have to hand it to Painter and especially Banks from Newcastle United because they didn't play like they were playing into their opponent's hand. They really did play as if they wanted to play without pressure and do what they knew they could do best. And Banks really playing to his strength there with those long balls. Yeah, he did, definitely. I think he gave Tom a really good game. Um, Tom built up some confidence towards the end of the match and ended up coming out ahead. But um, yeah, I think both of them should be proud of their performance. 
But you know what I'm missing in my life right now? Tell me. I'm missing some Casey Anderson, but we've tracked her down and we've got a camera on her. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yes, I'm backstage in the Players' Lounge with Nick Stepp from Crystal Palace and Lyrics from Spurs. And they're about to be not going up against each other directly, but their teammates will be going up against each other. So, Snap, let me talk about the last game. Shells, he had a rough start to the group stage, but how proud are you of that performance? Yeah, it was really good. Um, very promising. Um, he put a lot of time in and it looked like it paid off so far. He's, he won 2-0, it was a nice, comfortable win and set me up really nicely. So yeah, really well. Now let's talk about the next matchup that you have. You will be going up against Tom, which he's done fantastic in this competition. So what is your mindset going into that? Um, I don't really have a mindset. I just go into every other game the same. Um, obviously, he's one of our good mates and he's probably one of the better players at the tournament, but um, doesn't change nothing. Going positive and see what happens. All right, well, Lyrics, kind of similar to the Shell situation. Your group stage wasn't that great, but this one, it's a different story for you, right? Sure. I think this is a, a different lyrics from the group stage. I put in a lot of time, a lot of work. Obviously, when you have a teammate like Tom, I kind of owe it to him to get better. And the performance in the group stage, it wasn't good enough. So uh, I put in a lot of work and I'm really confident going into this game. Now, talk to me about Shells, which is who you will be going up against. Yeah. I know he's a friend of yours. So how are you feeling going into that? Yeah, I mean, me and Shell's got a lot of history. I've coached him, he's coached me. Um, obviously, we're really good friends outside. And we've, ironically, we played each other quite a lot. So um, <laughs> yeah, it'll probably be a tight game and we'll see you win. All right, well, Lyrics, Nick Snub, this matchup is about to be intense. Spurs versus Crystal Palace. I will let you guys get prepared. Back to you guys. We're not prepared for that matchup. That is going to be a heartbreaker. No wonder who ends up going home. And whoever goes through is going to be facing Manchester City. So much to look forward to on tonight's show. And especially, I have to say, this next matchup. Manchester United came out swinging at the start of today. And now they've got to swing again against Aston Villa. Well then, we're into the next stage of the competition here at the E Premier League. You win now, you go into Championship Sunday, top eight guaranteed, more prize money, Ryan, and you are in touching distance, not only from this trophy here at the E Premier League, but from E Champions League tickets, an FC Pro World Championship spot. The pressure's building. Absolutely, I think for all the players, they would have just wanted to make it into Championship Sunday just so that they're in the conversation to get all of those listed accomplishments, as you said, so... Yeah, the stakes are getting higher and higher as the day progresses. Well, look, let's have a little look at this journey so far of this competition. It is Manchester United against Aston Villa up next. And what's more exciting is we're kicking off on the other console first and foremost. Yeah. We're on the PlayStation. It's a massive difference because, of course, Dragon started off blistering. Probably the best performance we've seen so far today. 5-1 win in his first game against Jack Sharp, but he started the tie. Now he's going to be responding off of this start from David Murray on the attack. There's been a corner straight away. Cameron Rocket, in case you missed it for Aston Villa. Clutching up when he needed to. A 90th minute winner of Erling Haaland to send Aston Villa into the knockout stage. It's Bruno Fernandes, times it green, went for a outside the boot. Finished towards the back post. Just didn't come off in the end, but you're absolutely right to say both players having to play in the opposite way around now. We kicked off on Xbox, now we're kicking off on PlayStation, which... For a lot of players, they were used to having an order, Ryan. Switch of play, finds Cole Palmer. He probably does what he can, he'll kick it out of play. Palmer again, happy to pick up possession. Can he work it into the box now? Omri, one more pass, he's in the air. The Ben Chilwell, who able to defend it well. It's great play there. Just a build-up from Cameron Rucker. Corner, which we saw him score from in the last moments. Headed clear there from David Murray. And break forward to try and start an attack of his own. Haaland. On Schweinsteiger, it is relentless at the moment from Cameron Rock. There's a time green finesse from Thierry Henry. Again, it's blocked well. 
Both these two had massive individual performances in their earlier matches. See, David Murray had the, the luxury of coming into a 5-1 scoreline when they beat Chelsea in our first opening game of today. That's a massive win back. Hullet's going to win that. In the leg race, it's a great save from Van der Sar. Courtney brought in again, defended well by Virgil van Dijk. Remember, the winner of this one will play Liverpool in tomorrow's quarter-final stages. Obviously, there's four teams here in the Premier League that did enough in the group stages in January that they're able to basically skip on through, through a few rounds through to tomorrow's tournament, which... I'm sure they'll be sitting there now watching in the back room thinking, oh, I actually wouldn't mind playing now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're able to just have to oversee potential opponents they could be playing tomorrow. For Stingray. And Darosh, they'll be taking on the winner from this game here. Been a relentless start so far. Is that Cole Palmer as a left back? Yeah, I think it is. Could have been a mistake there as well. It was a poor attempted control there, but. Bob he has the height, of course, he's got the pace with his item in-game. A huge upgrade as well, finesse shot plus play style, which you've seen be effective on the edge of the box so far in this tournament. Harland on the overlap, finds Ben Shield, though. It's a case of working into the box now or finding it on the feet. Time Green, first time of our skin from Yumin Son, second time Hullet was there. Actually, a chance to breathe. I might mention, you might notice someone, I should say, in the background for Aston Villa. Spencer Reed, really better known as Gorilla, former world champion, was a runner up in last year's competition with Spurs. Now in a coaching role for this Aston Villa side. I think he can do enough. The Jay Brown and Cameron Rock, Schweinsteiger. Happy to pick up possession once or twice. David Murray doing a great job of just making this Manchester United defensive and midfield line so compact. As yep. A misclick of a button there gives possession back to Manchester United and they will come hunting forward. Finesse maybe on the edge of the box. Carl Palmer fancies it. Did everything right, but when you've got the height of Van der Sar there, Ryan, you just, you just need the perfect angle. Yeah, didn't get the elevation it needed as well. You saw the, the sigh of relief from David Murray. I think he knows. He didn't move his goalkeeper there. So if it was perfectly placed, I think it would have found the back of the net there. But David Murray can push forward to try and get an attack here. Oh, smart. Cole Palmer. On his right-hand side of the pitch. Happy to go all the way back round again. Just on side is Hullet. I was asking for a lot there, the timing of the pass. Through to Hyun Min Son. Could be a potential option down the line here. Thierry Henry. He's certainly got the pace. Haaland punches it into Hyun Min Son. Tiptoes round one or two. Surely got me a chance. It will be. It's Aston Villa. That will find the breakthrough again. Looking to make it three years in a row. Well, they've been quarter-finalists in the Premier League. It was just a second or two there where he was just able just to sort of take his time with the finish. Yeah, it's a great goal. The build-up play from Cameron at Rock there was methodical. He took his time, he waited for the space to open up. Shot cancelled as well, just waited for the goalkeeper to move. Of course, Cameron Rock made the right choice there to give Aston Villa the one-goal lead. Potentially going into half-time, there could be a last attack there for David Murray and United to try and get back into the game. saying Aston Villa have been super impressive in the last handful of the Premier Leagues. Oh, oh that's a thing. Honestly, that is a goal-saving interception. They would have been one-on-one. -on -one. A little scoop turn inside. Corner, last kick of the game for the first 45 minutes. Any time has been used. What could we see from this area here? Thierry Marie just dinks it in towards that back post. And Virgil van Dijk with a... Ooh. 
Probably the strongest header I think I've ever seen. It was green timed as well, just wasn't aimed on target. It was probably, probably a little bit too much power there from David Murray. But we go into the break, Brandon. Aston Villa, one goal up against Man United. It was a promising game, a promising start, I should say, initially from Cameron Rock. He's building up very well, very well. He seems calm, he seems composed. And he took his chance, took his, I don't even speak, took his chance very, very well. As we said, roles reversed. Kicked from the Xbox in the last game for Manchester United, where Sean Allen, AK Dragon, had an impressive 5-1 victory. They haven't got a bad coach, have they? Aston Miller behind them. Yeah, having Spencer Ealing, Gorilla behind you, coach you, guiding you through the game. Of course, his expertise, not just in the mechanics of the game, but just his experience overall. He's been competing at this level of competition for a large number of years. It could be approaching a decade almost. You can't forget as well that he also won 200,000 and a world championship back in 2017. And was just a runner-up last year. One match away from putting himself in the Premier League archives as a champion. Get Haaland here, near post. Is he going to go back post? Got numbers around him. It's Virgil van Dijk that just about does enough. Manchester United. To find a way back into this tie. I mean, look at Manchester United's history in this E-Premier League tournament. You have to look back to 2019, really, the first big year where... Carl East came onto the scene, there were runners up in the tournament, as you know, Tex was the champion on that year. Ever since then, it's been a real mixed bag of results for the red side of Manchester. Schweinsteiger, De Bruyne, Omri, it's two for Villa! Just about squeezes it through the near post, carved out. The perfect chance, right? And just like that, Aston Villa will double their lead. Yep, incredibly well worked again there from Cameron Rock. Picking the right passes, chose the right shot type as well there, outside of the boot with Henri in at the near post. And he's given David Murray and Manchester United an uphill battle to try and get back into this game. You don't want this game to go away from you. You have to remember the second leg is still to be played after this, where your teammate will be responsible potentially for Man United to try and get back into this game and having Dragon alongside you is somebody you could definitely trust to bag a few goals. Omri could be in oh. for three. Harlan, what a save at the start. We'll get there in the second time of asking. Incredible save. That really would have been a difficult position for Manchester United again that just about keeps out Harlan as Van der Sar. For a third time of asking, yeah. Right place, right time. How many more Erling Haaland headers is he going to have to face? Here's another one coming for you. Oh. Poor pass, isn't it? This is where Cameron Rock and Aston Villa can really punish Manchester United now. Thierry Henry, great save, Van der Sar. It's an onslaught of attacks from Cameron Rock. We're going to see a familiar corner again. Erling Haaland selected. There he is, in the air! Eventually, there's only so many times you can keep this monster out. Erling Haaland makes it 3 0 to just, Aston Villa. It just felt destined. The amount of corners in quick succession there for Aston Villa. It felt as if surely one of them would find the back of the net. And that's exactly what happened now. 3 0 down. David Murray finds himself. Despite the scoreline, Brandon, I still just... Dragon is somebody you can never count out. Even a three-goal deficit, you can still... You never know when it comes to Dragon and scoring goals, but a four-goal lead for Villa could be dangerous, and they're pushing forward again. It's going to be another corner. I'm not sure if that took another deflection, but a pause cue there from David Murray. It's one of those, though, isn't it, as a teammate? You know you're not in a good position. Yeah. But as a teammate, you still get in there and say, look, come on, I know it's not going well, but... Just keep on me summon. The thing is, you don't want to put pressure on your teammate. I think that's the worst thing you could possibly do. It's just about making sure they feel comfortable. They know that or they feel as if you trust them. Irrespective of the scoreline or the result, having your backing sort of gives you that confidence going into games, gives up going on to, to future rounds if they make it further on in the E Premier League finals. But 
It's just not been the, the perfect game that David Murray would have wanted. Just even a goal or two, but you're right. There's, there's just a feeling, isn't there, that Dragon could certainly turn a game like this around. He's been in this scene and played at the highest of levels for a handful of years. But on the other side for Jay Brown, you're like, I've got a three-goal cushion now. I cannot throw this away. Yeah. Could be four. Harland again. Eventually deals with it. I mean, if you could have your own way, Ryan, you'd be like, I just don't want to give away a corner. Yeah, but literally. It's not that easy. Manchester United desperate for a bit of hope in, in the form of a goal from somewhere. Just well defended again there from Cameron Rocky. Just makes it compact with the offside traps, the player switching them, the second man press as well. Just not giving a lot of space for, for David Murray to try and break through the defensive line. Possession given away, Manchester United will happily take that. A goal or some sort of comeback story. Oh, in for our first one here. Just about poked away from danger there by Kevin De Bruyne. Omri. Schweinsteiger might fancy one from far out. Four goal cushion for Villa would be unbelievable. Got Palmer. Gaining some extra yards for Manchester United. Punched in again to Yomin Song. Oof. A couple of times he's done that. He's done for those little one twos, hasn't he, Ryan? Yeah. But he's just been a clutch piece of defending. It's a key interception there. And it's very good that the player lock cancellations there from Cameron Rock. Just making sure that he keeps David Murray thinking when defending. He's just giving away, potentially giving away, he's definitely giving away possession now. Big switch here. Just about keeps it in, Erlen Harlebal. But to queue up in the box. It's just no space. Just resolute defending it. This could be a chance, though. Again. Just seems like the ball's finding its way back to an Aston Villa shirt. It might be Aston Villa that will have the last laugh. Cameron Rock, 3 0 leads, as I said, looking to get back again to another quarter final in an Aston Villa shirt. He's done it twice before. He's always just like that extra step forward into a semi final or a grand final. Is this the year that it changes for them? And that will do us in the first leg. 3 0. Aston Villa lead, but this is still not done as of yet. Still a second leg to come. It's all on Dragon. Yeah, as I've mentioned already in this game, I feel as if in another situation, I would say it's game over, a three-goal deficit. But just because it's Dragon, I've seen him come from way bigger deficits and, and restore leads again. And it, he's somebody, as we saw, who's scoring the first set of games for himself, five goals in quick succession. So he's definitely capable of coming back in this game. As we said, he certainly has got the experience to do it. Has Dragon, one of the few people that's actually not text out this competition. A handful of years ago in the knockout stages in a Manchester United shirt. And he did represent Liverpool. Some wise words going on board from Spencer Reeling behind him there. And as we have another special guest join us here in the commentary area. Casey, I mean, look, it's a mountain to climb 3-0, but as Ryan's saying, if there's one player to do it, maybe Dragon is that man. 
Yeah, the guy has tried to retire so many times, but I think he is meant to be here in this situation right now. And if anyone can do it, like you said, it could be Dragon. He scores so many goals, and so I, it is a, a tough battle to climb, a, a tough mountain, but we'll see how it goes. Look, he has teased, look, this could be the last the last event for him, the last hero. What a way it would be for him to end with a top eight, Brian. Yeah, exactly. He's somebody that he's got a lot of accolades and accomplishments throughout the years, but I think this would rank up there if he's able to progress far in this tournament. Let's jump into it now, live for you. We're over to the Xbox now. PlayStation is confirmed. It's a 3 0 scoreline for Aston Villa. Let's see how this one plays out here. Will there be a comeback story? Will there be some drama? Winner of this will play Liverpool in the quarterfinals tomorrow of this year's E Premier League. I mean, to the football fan, Manchester United Liverpool in the quarterfinal. Huge matchup. Aston Villa looking to rip up that script and put themselves there as they've showed that form in real football this year as well. Hullet. Trying to find goal number four for Jay Brown. That will be on his mind. Let's just get an early goal. Let's just give myself a four-goal lead. Referee plays the advantage. Player lock teased a few times. Sierra Real still in possession for Aston Villa. Waiting for that cut back. Goes towards the back post. It's really clever. And eventually, Alisson will get two hands on it. It's composed to head it back to the goalkeeper there. That's what he intended to do from Dragon. Now it's Salah. It's a centre mid. That's one thing you're going to notice, right, with Dragon. Unorthodox formations, doesn't really stick to the meta and unorthodox player selection as well. He Season loves Carlos Tevez. <laughs> Carlos Tevez up top, Mo Salah in the team as well. Adolgi in fullback, he's not afraid to, to select players that other players wouldn't select as well. That's a great read there. Finds Carlos Tevez! He very nearly gives Man United their first goal in the game. I think that's why players struggle so much against Dragon, because at every aspect, you can't anticipate what he's yeah, doing. Literally. That's why players like Stingray talk so highly of him, Yeah. because he doesn't play like a regular player. Some of the risks he's taken, though, as well. As you said, players out of position, technically you're playing with one real ball playing centre midfielder, Mohamed Salah. But he wants, just, he wants to pack his team full of forwards. You've got Omri, Tevez, Hullet, Haaland, Salah, and then you've got Kevin De Bruyne just doing... just doggies along the pitch, back and forth. <laughs> he wants to give himself, which he can fully understand, the best chance of any sort of comeback. But it worries me a bit in terms of defensively, when you have yeah. so many attackers exactly. who is there to save you when it comes to any type of counter-attack. Speaking of counter-attack, here he is, Dragon on the attack here. Erling Haaland building up. Carlos Tevez was after the ball. I guess the one thing that he's got in his favour, Hullet, although he's a centre forward, will offer you the stats of pretty much an all-rounder. You can just see him dropping in alongside Kevin De Bruyne. These heavy touches. Jay Brown does very well again. It's just to get himself out of that one big switch of play. He's already survived 20 minutes without conceding a goal. Player lock and a player run. Well, Palmer to Hullet. Now it goes for a corner. You can understand where this one's going. Harlan Harland at the front post will try and flick it on Ooh. off the line just about. I mean, that goes in. Manchester United would have been 4 0 down. Chance to break on the counter attack. I mean, I don't know what that was a flick, an acrobatic effort. It's a similar corner that. We see it placed in the box there. I think it's something that the Villa players would have been working on together. Udogi. Trying to get down that byline, Salah. Back to Thierry Henry, there's a body in the way. Second time of asking, there's goal number one for Dragon. And he just nods and locks into the zone. And this is where, Ryan, you can say and explain better than most. In your head, you start to think, no, I can't. The thing is, it's a two-goal deficit. He, but Dragon believes, I can assure you, he believes if, if it's three or four, he, he believes, let alone two. And I think the, the fear could start to creep in for Jay Brown. You start to second-guess little things. Should you go forward? Should you stick or twist? Am I making a mistake by playing the same way I would if it's nil-nil? You don't know what to do, and it's, that's the scary part. 
momentum is a very scary thing in this yeah. game, and it easily can switch away from you, even if you have three goals on your side. It could switch just like that with one goal. Even there, just, just hesitate and turn it back on yourself, and then just a bad touch, and you take it out of play. And now Dragon gets possession again. And if he was to get, let's say, another goal without conceding by half time, it is going to be a, a very, very tough second half for Jay Brown. Just constantly triggering all these runs forward. So for Jay Brown, get himself a goal, get himself back in the game confidence wise. There's an offside trap played there. Salah just about stays on sides. But can't find the ball through to Erling Haaland. He was looking for the press, relentless Carlos Tevez. Trying to pull the pressure on the player switch, it is crazy from Manchester United here. Trying to manoeuvre bodies all around the pitch. To stop this Aston Villa pressure, it's another big win there from Rodri. Seems like every play is fine for the badge. Yeah, I think with Dragon, the way he defends and attacks it, it's, he attacks very direct, but when he defends, he doesn't fall for the baits, like the players, the player lock or anything. He just carries on going for the person in possession. This could be a chance, punch into Haaland, this could be a one more, Carlos Tevez oh. looks to drop the shoulder, back to Haaland! There's two goals in 40 minutes! And from a three-goal deficit, it's only one now! It's fortunate, Casey, it's very fortunate that I thought he lost possession in the box, I thought he attacked so well, I thought the extra pass from Tevez, once he, if he tricked him into thinking he could have just played an extra pass there, but he fell his, his way and he's right back into it, Casey. He is right back into it, and like oh, we no. said, if anyone could do it... Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, it could be 3-3. Three, three. Oh, oh, my goodness. I mean, the fact that Dragon has been able to shift this game here, if I'm in Jay Brown's shoes, I'm worrying, because you're at the point where you're like, all right, do I continue to push forward to give us a little bit more of a cushion, or do I just start going full-out defense and try to not let him get one more bye? I'm not sure what I would do at this point. Ryan, you probably have a better yeah, idea. Yeah, I've played Dragon countless times. We go way back from... Yeah, a very long time ago, we've been playing each other, but he's somebody, genuinely, if he's... If David Murray had won that game 4-0, he's playing the same way. He's going up for the attack. He wants to win his game by a substantial margin as well. And he's gone into the break 2-0 up now against Jay Brown. And it's, it's nervous settings for the Aston Villa players as well. It's such a full cycle moment as well, because if you remember rightly, when the man that's coached Aston Villa was a world champion, the man that coached him was Sean Allen Dragon. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. Now in 2024, seven years on from that, He's now coaching on the opposite side off the stage to yeah. in a knockout game in the E Premier League. It's unbelievable. But you are right. It's the mental side of the game for Dragon. He doesn't care, does he? He, he? he believes. You know what? I think it's one of the most the most relaxed Dragons I've ever seen. He is, of course, celebrating. He's, he's not afraid to celebrate when he scores, especially if he feels like it's an important moment in the game. But like he's not responding negatively to anything that happens in the game. Even though his teammate was like, he just he sat there calm, composed, he just backs himself. For Jay Brown now, has to back himself. Look, he's had a great tournament so far. He looked good in, in the last matchup too. He played his part in that very important win against Bournemouth of a 2-2 draw against Nathan BP to set up the game for his teammate Cameron to go and win. And we jump in now. Manchester United were 3-0 down in this game. They are. Only one goal behind now. Much more of this pressure and the correct decisions can drag and bring before Aston Villa can pickpocket the high press and maybe find a way through, Hullet. Looking for the cutback, finds Harlan, oh, Carlos Tevez! Sensational. Who else would it be? Then the former Manchester United man, 3-3, game on. The ball here, they're like, okay, I cancel. That pass is unbelievable, and he's meant that because he shot straight away. That's a great, great pass there from Dragon. Thread of the needle stuff, and he's... I I, honestly, I don't know what it is about... Just, you're never safe. You have to be up by genuinely four or five. I said a three-goal lead is not safe against Dragon. Carlos Tevez. Carlos Tevez. The only man. Only man using him. <laughs> I mean, whatever works oh, for him. Goodness. It's another big win. Schweinsteiger recovers well, but everything is just going Manchester United's way in this game. 
The confidence must be oozing in the final third. Oh, oh, oh. Makes it 4 3. Wow. It really is the comeback of dreams here in the Premier League. Do you know, he gave a bigger celebration there, David Murray. You looked at him there. <laughs> This is it. It came from a, a chance. The space opened up. The finesse right at the near post. <laughs> He'll be taking him out for dinner tonight. <laughs> Literally, I can't. Have be. a starter. Have a dessert. Oh, Have what you God. want. Oh. To go from such an unfortunate group stage that Manchester United had yep. to the stuff we're seeing right now from Dragon, it's almost as if he took these few couple couple months and perfected everything that he knows best and he's coming into this the most confident that I've seen of him this year. It's just the belief and I'm sure you won't mind me saying this it's just I feel like he's let himself down in tournaments based on his mentality it's never been about the skills fundamentally Dragon has everything it's just about sometimes the little mechanics in the game he sort of not refuses to adapt to the meta you can see he doesn't cross the ball he plays his own way he plays narrow he aims to blitz and score a lot of goals in quick succession and he's coming to this the e Premier League Finals and he's been unbelievable. Just the fact that, as you said, we're talking like seven years ago he was at his peak in his career and yeah. seven years on, there's still hunger there. Still going. What a turnaround this one is. If this was to be his last season, then by God, he wants to make it one to remember. Representing his beloved Manchester United, Aston Villa, 4-3 down now in this game after being 3-0 up at the end of leg one. A goal now to turn the table. Hullet, great feel. It reverse Elastico, just patient as ever. I think for Jay Brown, he'll be obviously devastated. He's still in this game. He's still got 30 minutes left to go. There's no point being upset and, and thinking about what if or, or how he could have approached the game. That's done now. He has to focus on what he can do, and he, he just needs to try and remain as composed as possible. But he has to shut down. Dragon, who's just attacking KC with just... Honestly, the directness from Dragon has been incredible. I'll be honest, this is going to sound weird, but I do feel like going into that second leg, being up, is actually a very I've difficult said situation this, but, to yeah, I hated it. I would love to go first. I would hate to play second just because you don't know what to do. Even if you've won by three, do you keep on... Do you try and sit back and defend the lead? But then if you concede one, that game plans out the window because a two-goal lead, you can never really rest on it. It's just, it's tough. There's, there's a question mark there, isn't there? Yeah, you're coming into a game with a clean slate, you're just thinking win. Mm -hmm. Shot from distance from De Bruyne. Comes off the body of Virgil van Dijk. Remember, winner of this will play Liverpool. As it stands, Man United Liverpool as a first quarter final. How about that one? For setting up a day of the Premier League round final action. It's a great pass, Tevez. Is he onside? Yes, he is. Harlem will turn away. Holly! Wow. Makes it five. Oh, five nil Manchester United leads. He is not per foot wrong. Oof, the driven pass there again. Fantastic pass. The extra pass I thought we could have gone with, with Harlan. And he plays the little layoff, and this is. David Murray must be feeling all right. Oh, absolutely. It's He's a just tough laughing pass. over there. <laughs> Massive smile on his face. I feel so bad for Jay Brown because. Oh, it's a three-goal lead he's, he's given away, but it's so difficult because you don't know what to do. You don't. I guess in this position you do because you have to go for it, but coming into it, it's just tough. Also unfortunate for Cameron Rock. Yeah. He did supply him with a good start, but now he just has to sit back and have no control over what will happen. Yeah, absolutely. But I think for this one, you, you sort of have to... You take the losses with the wins. You're, you're a team. I know it's separate games, technically, but you rely on your teammate to, to give you, hopefully, in, your, in a... A leading position, but Dragon again. Not done yet, is he? No game sound, no music. Just listening to the <laughs> Just everything in this room. <laughs> Still, do not count Aston Villa out of this one. One goal for them would... Just give a huge awakening to Jay Brown. Just not falling their way though at all. Man United. I mean, what the setup from Dragon here has been superb. That Mohamed Salah play, pretty much just overloading into a five attacking scenario, giving Kevin De Bruyne just a free roll to do whatever he wants in the middle of the pitch. Omri, is it goal number six for Dragon towards the back post? It is oh six nil. Huh? 
<laughs> I don't believe this. And at that point, he thinks he knows that it's enough to send Manchester United through to a quarter-final day with Liverpool tomorrow. Look at the back post. He just ran from deep there, Rude Hullet. The pace, the play style plus of Rapid with Henri. Direct to the byline, played across goal, Casey. And to me, that's game done. Yeah, I think that is the end of this match here, unfortunately, for Aston Villa. But for Dragon, that is two matches that he's had today. He's the leading goal scorer out of this entire goals. day. 11 goals so far in two games. Insane in knockouts as well. Oh, my goodness. Dragon's been superb. We always say, could he pull this back? And oh, I mean, you, you, you thought he could. No, you cannot sleep against Dragon. I've played him way too many times. You can see the, the look there on Cameron Rock's face. He's, he's devastated. He feels as if, obviously, he has done his job. A three-goal lead is great. He's done incredibly well. It's just, it's unfortunate for Jay Brown that, as ruthless as it may seem, the fault will completely lie on his shoulders. Harland to try and find one more back in. It's not going to fall their way. It will go for an own goal in the end. But four minutes for two in go. Sorry, four in game minutes for two goals. It just is not going to be enough time. For Manchester United, what a turnaround from David Murray being 3 0 down at the end of leg one. Aston Villa, they look like they were in dreamland. Now they're in a nightmare. And it will be Manchester United going through to play Liverpool tomorrow. One more goal to seal the deal. Had it time to come. But what a performance it has been from Dragon and David Murray. And look, it's going to be a rematch from the groups again, isn't it? They're going to match up Liverpool, Manchester United. We're in the groups together. They will play tomorrow in a quarter final. Sean Allen, AK Dragon, has done what he needed to do from 3 0 down. He picked up a deflated Manchester United side and said, look, we're, we're in this. And they've got one step further. They are in to a quarter final tomorrow. Massive result. And what a way to kick off this next round of knockouts. What a way it is. I just had a look over there at Dragon. He looked over and the look on his face was, yeah, I just did that. <laughs> no, but this next matchup, Ryan, against Liverpool. Huge, huge game tomorrow. Dragon was incredible. Incredible performance. He's done well to turn off, turn off a three-goal deficit. And not just against any old player. He played against a top player called Jay Brown. He's been insane that's, that's as well. That's the difference, though, from playing on these stages and bigger stages than this throughout the last, what, five, six, seven, eight years for him. He's just got the extra reps there. He's got the extra experience. A massive congratulations to Manchester United. They are through, and I believe FG is catching up with Dragon now. How is he feeling? Well, I imagine he's feeling absolutely unbelievable. Listen, going into the game, you had a deficit. But you played that game like you were an absolute machine. How are you feeling and how did you expect it to go that way? I, I don't know what I expected. After 3-0, I know 3-0 is doable. I know I can attack well. I know it's always going to come into the opponent's head that like they've got a lead, right? They've got they've got to see something out. I've got nothing to lose. That's kind of how I played. I just I knew he'd be like a bit passive, keep switching the ball. I knew I'd to stay patient. I knew the chances would come and lucky I took them. Well, your E-Premier League journey is continuing. We will see you tomorrow. All the best for tomorrow. Let's head to Frankie, who's waiting. Congratulations to David Murray and Dragon. We'll see them playing versus Liverpool tomorrow. But right now, we have got to get ready for Nottingham Forest versus West Ham, who will be booking a date with Luton Town in the quarterfinals.
Welcome back to the E-Premier League finals. And if you missed the action before the break, you missed teamwork making the dream work. Cameron Rock with a fantastic performance in the first leg for Aston Villa versus Manchester United. But you just could not deny the dragon in that second half. This man wanted a date with Liverpool in the quarterfinals. And by word, he has got it. Lee Ravel and Casey, I haven't really got my breath back after that performance. <laughs> Watching Dragon do that interview with FG before the break had me feeling emotional because Dragon's been around since 2016. He's retired, he's unretired, he's retired, he's unretired, and he's here to prove he can do it. And I think he can, Leah. I think so too. We were actually talking briefly um, before he started playing, and he's like, oh, I don't know. He's reluctant to say whether he was confident or not. But I mean, the, the score line shows more than what he said, so. Yeah. Casey, it was it was an absolute bomb burner. Let's take a look at how that's impacted the bracket. Because we can see that they will be facing off in our first quarter final tomorrow. I can't wait for, for Darius versus David Murray, but especially Stingray versus Dragon. That's veterans at war. Yes, because we've seen it before and we know how highly Stingray speaks of Dragon. He knows he has the potential to win a game like that. And honestly, Dragon is a better competitor than he was in the group stage. And so tomorrow is about to be an all out battle for Liverpool versus Manchester United. And our next matchup is incredibly exciting too Nottingham Forest versus. West Ham United. West Ham United, I, I'm excited because we get to see Brig Army return. He has made such a debut so far in this competition and he's, he's got a good shot. However, goal poacher on the side of Nottingham Forest, Leah, he has won this competition before. Yeah, so he has the experience, whereas Brig Army doesn't. Brig Army seems to have the confidence though, which might take him all the way. Both goal poacher and Red Lake have been performing to a higher level this weekend than in January. So. It could go either way. It could go either way, which is why you need to keep your eyes on the screen as we get ready to go into this second knockout match of round number two. Thank you very much. Big game feel here at Elstree Studios, live in London for the E Premier League second knockout round. We've got one quarter final in the books. It's Liverpool versus Man United, but our attention turns to Nottingham Forest against the Hammers West Ham. One game at a time. Big match feel. I just got the opportunity to catch all four players backstage, and it, there was nerves, but there was excitement. Graveson as we're going to get into this game. Forrest from left to right in the red and white strip and all in white from right to left will be West Ham United. Yeah, I think we could confidently say that Nottingham Forest are the favourites yep. coming up to this match. Uh, but you never know, actually, you never know. Um, we have, at the moment, goal poacher playing against JRK. Yep. And I do think Gold Poacher really needs to win this game, in a sense, because I do feel the red lag against Brick Army match is going to be... A bit more 50-50. Yeah, 50-50, 100%. And GRK didn't play well at all in the group stage. Of course, he can play well now because it's the knockouts, and he did really play, play really well against Brentford, but still, I do think... I've, I think the favourite in this match is Gold Poacher, and I think he has to win by a couple of goals. Yeah, absolutely. I think what GRK, Get Rig Kid, the, the person on the right-hand side of your screen for West Ham, uh, is offering in this matchup is he's just a little bit more relaxed than he was the first time around. I got the opportunity to stand behind him when he was playing his earlier matchup for West Ham. Uh, they were taking on Brentford. They won eight goals to six in the end, and there was just a level of calmness, a little bit more calmness, because I know he spoke quite openly after the groups on his live stream and on social media saying he was scared, he was nervous. Mm -hmm. And he just seems a little bit more composed, he seems a little bit more comfortable in the surroundings that he's at. And if he starts playing his best FC, West Ham oh. will be a serious outfit here at the E Premier League. First chance, goals West Ham's way and it crashes off the crossbar. Yeah, and I do think Gold Poacher has a lot of positive things, positive things about his gameplay, but I think he pulls the defenders out of position a bit too much. 
especially the center backs. We just seen this 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 attack with Van Dijk being pretty much defending the wing, which is I I think you need order to defend well Great. in FC24. Great press. Yeah. From Jigarke here, getting high up the pitch. You saw Schweinsteiger on the toes of goal poacher's defender. That's a nice speed boost. What goal poacher's got maybe a little bit more than GRK is LAN experience yeah. at the, the huge events as well. He's won the E Premier League in the past. When you, you think back to that side that he won it with Dami a couple of years ago. And then also I remember him at the E Champions League opening match. Who did he play? Nicholas. Arguably the best player to ever grace our beautiful game of FC. He played him in the first match of the tournament. So just having those experiences be able to recall back to previous events, it does certainly help you. It's been an end-to-end -end game, though, this opening 23 minutes. Dink to the edge of the box. Mm, he's crossing too much. I do think a player lock was needed in that occasion because, I mean, it's a 2v2 situation and the centre-back cannot go and cover Hullet. So if you just play your lock into Haaland and then choose to go near post or back post, it could have been a goal. I do think goal poaching needs to play your lock a little bit more in those situations. Saka out wide. Playing into Schweinsteiger, holy extra pass, Haaland, good interception from Kai Havertz. He's playing well though at the minute, GRK, getting into a couple of good areas, just can't quite find that final shot or the extra pass needed. Yeah, the build-up... Break the deadlock. The build-up has been amazing, same as this one. This game's played at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. The pace of this match is incredible right yeah. now. Both players getting the ball, going forward, they're being aggressive, they're attacking with serious intent. And that's going to happen in the first leg and the second leg as well, yeah. because we know the style of these players. I mean, they're young and they don't like to play just safely into, I don't know, switching sides. We're going to see a lot of driven passes, a lot of crosses like this. Back post, Havertz just got in front of him. The cross wasn't quite good enough to pick out Erling Haaland, and that's an early pause cued by goal poacher here of Nottingham Forest, but oh. Allen will bring away from Laurent Blanc and makes Allison work for a corner kick. 30 minutes on the clock. It's been a real, real good start from both of these two players. Yeah. Chances at either end, GRK crashing against the crossbar. Goal poacher starting to get into this game a little bit more. JRK did play a really good match against Brentford with a 4-4 result uh, when where he didn't need to win, so he just kept the ball for pretty much Still the whole... four goals. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot. And I do think maybe his decision-making is the last third hasn't been the best, but the build-up, brilliant. Almost perfection. I don't know if you can uh, get the the reactions of uh, Brigami during this game as well, because he can't, he's not really good at hiding his emotions. <laughs> so every single time there's an attack or one of the two players goes near, you can see it on his face. This is whipped in straight over the keeper. It's direct, it's headed under the crossbar from Kevin De Bruyne. What's he looking for there? I don't think a direct corner is possible at the moment with the speed of the goalkeepers. This is a good pass. Oof, knockdown. Ooh, Laurent Block just about does enough. Saka. Picking it up, Rude Hullet, left-footed strike, finesse shot, Vieira clears it. Was he looking for the back post? No, he was looking to try and score it direct, okay. but that worked when the keepers weren't as quick as they are right now. Because if you do that in November, in October, it made sense because we didn't have team of the year, we didn't have those icons with 92, 93 rated. So I do think the direct corners were a thing in the past, but I don't think they are anymore. Switch apply. Just offering too much to Ogbené. You can see those play styles just in the bottom left and bottom right corner. What they do, if you are unfamiliar at home, it just gives the players that little bit better stat boost in certain areas. So, for example, you can see the this is slide good. tackle with Zoran. He would be have better success rate when going to ground for the ball. Henri in the box. Oh, Finesse, yes. top corner. It's been a good start. It really has from and GRK. And he goes 1-0 up. As soon, as soon as you talk about those play styles, boom, and finesse, finesse shot. shot. I've read the script. Yeah, you have. You already have. But, <laughs> I mean, a brilliant goal. And it's just like sometimes when the right back is out of position, you can just run and run and run. I think what the play styles do as well, it leads you to utilise them in a way that you wouldn't have previously. Because if 
that Henri item doesn't exist and say that's, I don't know, Ginola, you're not finessing that, really. No, no not a chance. for a different strike, but you know Henri's got it in the back pocket to be able to finesse, to be able to score. Andy Green timed it. It's a real good start. Yeah, we did. Poche, he, he'll feel a little bit sort of hard done by because it looked like he was in the right lane to intercept the pass. That's the reaction from West Ham United. And yeah. GRK. Yeah, he did really defend well in a way because it was he defended with the second man press and man it as well. But sometimes I do think you don't need to cut the passing lanes, you just need to press in a way. Be a bit more aggressive. Yeah, I do think so. You just criticised him 15 minutes ago in game for being too aggressive. Uh, okay. What's it going to be, Graf? This aggressive, is... not aggressive. I'm an opportunist, let me be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, anyways, <laughs> I do think this there's going to be more goals in the second half. It's not going to be a one it... result. Is it aggression in the right area? Yeah, I do think, like, I work about these things uh, with my coach. So you you need to be aggressive inside the box. Or you need to be aggressive when, let's just say, a midfielder is attacking you and there's a potential chance of a finesse or something like that. But when you are, like, let's just say, building up, you have to cover the pace. You cannot pull, pull uh, any players out of position. But then, inside the box, just go for it. Back underway, three minutes into this second half. Goal poacher winning the ball high up the pitch. Kevin De Bruyne, left-footed strike. He won it high. He nicked it off the toes of the defender and he was direct. Three passes later, a timed finish, timed green from Kevin De Bruyne into the bottom left corner. Yeah, the finesse was time green, and now the shot is time green again. And that shows how important it is to be focused in a way, because if Neither one of those shots were... Does it go in? No, they, they, they won't go in. So you have to be patient to find the chance, but when you have the chance, it has to be green, because if not, I mean, you won't have many chances like that. It's interesting to see Rodri as a midfielder again. Yeah. He's played everywhere, Rodri. He's yep. played right back, left back, centre mid. Floated towards the back post, Haaland over it, but Vieira very, very casually just shouldering it off to the <laughs> defender. He's not feeling the pressure. <laughs> Saka has the chance to come forward here. Good cool build up. Yeah. Switch up the play now. Ah, Ooh, big stake. That's a risky pass. He's gone to ground as well, trying to atone for his error. Could be punished here. Thierry Henry out wide. Hullet, recycling possession, Haaland into Rude Hullet again, reverse Elastico inside the box, a nice skill move, but West Ham just about make up for their previous passing error. He did try to do something because the keeper was moved to the back post, so he thought, OK, he's not defending right here, maybe if I try to reverse Elastico, maybe he'll pass it, but no, it wasn't enough. De Bruyne, switch of play, bringing Rodri into play, just offside. But he played an hour in this game. 60 minutes already gone. It's flown by. Yeah, they just flew by. And look at that potential German cross. It's coming. Whipped in. And now, just patiently, has to build up because... When you say German cross for people at home, yep. you're unfamiliar with that. What What is that? A German cross is basically when you uh, trigger a run to any of your centre-backs or full-backs, and then you switch up the play and you wait patiently until your defenders, let's just say, go to the final third. So when you're there, you just cross it full bar and hope for the best. So it's a centre-back who's passed the ball off, made the run forward, and then you, you cross it into them as they're arriving just on side, but past the back line. Pretty much. Ah, uh, I think it was a little bit late. The pass was good, but a little bit late. Rude Hullet trying to bring more players into the game. Yeah, Gold Bo Bo isn't feeling comfortable. You can see his webcam at the moment. He has done a couple of mistakes, which he doesn't... He shouldn't punish himself. Oh, he was, he was almost perfect yeah. in the groups. He won his game in the knockout as well, so he, he's... He's been the form player for this Forest side. Yeah, definitely. Group stage, three wins, one draw, and then one win in the round of 16 again. Henri to the byline. Saka, Hullet, 
twisting, turning, reversal elastico, bundling Kevin De Bruyne off it. What a mixture of De Bruyne and Ogbené just about. Keep out, Rude Hulley. This is not an easy thing to do at all. Look for the potential. No, he doesn't do it. So goal poacher is moving the keeper every single time. I think he should the speed boost, which is not an easy thing to do at all, but when you find yourself 1v1 and he moves the keeper, speed boost, because he won't be able to defend. Rodri floated into the back post for Haaland. Hulley wins the header. Henry! GRK and West Ham take the lead with 10 minutes left to play. Or you could cr cross it to Haaland. <laughs> that works as well. That's a brilliant thing. Me through it. Yeah, he crossed it to Haaland. He passed it to Hulley with a knockdown. And the thing is, he tried to go to defend, obviously, the first shot by Hulley because it was a clear chance. But he was patient enough to pass it to Henry. And now with Henry, you have pretty much you can choose between the back post near post you can do whatever and he was patient enough and brick army that look that look that's a man that wants to play the second leg we've also seen how dangerous going into that second leg can be yeah we've just seen the, the example of it 20 minutes ago yeah. david murray and manchester united gave dragon everything to do and he did it. And he did it. To quote Ryan Pessoa, I cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were in the commentary booth with me. <laughs> OK, last 10 minutes to play. Let's see what happens. This game far from over. We've still got Brig Army versus Red Lack to come. Nice That's cross. where the game will be decided. Haaland's... Just offside. Off side. Yeah. Just went a little bit too early. As you see, West Ham United right there, the two players on your screen representing the Hammers. On the flip side of it, Nottingham Forest. Trailing by two goals to one, however, Redlack will be taking control. Just gave his teammate a little pat on the back there, saying, come on, 10 minutes to go. Give me a goal. I really think the best thing you can do as a teammate there is just like play the game. Like yep. it doesn't matter if just you win, in. if just you focus. yeah, just focus. Because like if you lose by one goal, yeah. I'm confident. If you yeah. win by one goal, I'm confident. Just do your thing, and well, I do you, mine. If you were playing right now, obviously you, you, you're back on the scene right now. You're playing in a, in a domestic league yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you've been playing for a few months now, training to the, to the highest of caliber. Mm -hmm. With a teammate, what lead would you feel like is doable? Three goals down? Doable. Yeah. Three goals. Four is really hard. Four is really hard because they can just switch up the play and there's not much you can do. But three goals, as Ryan mentioned when it was before the game, the Dragon game, three, three is doable. Three is doable. Four, it's hard. Nice offside traps at the moment by goal poacher. Offside trapping is really important. It's the first thing about defending. Forcing the players forward, making GRK go sideways and backwards instead of anything forwards. Couple of press coming in here, pull it alongside Henri, but the out ball always on to the full back. And with only one minute left to play, I don't think we're going to have too much more action here. Um, let's see. Maybe we have one more chance. Yeah, we have it. Henri. Asking questions of the defence, cut back. Hung Min Son proved me wrong. No. There you have it. A big, big result for West Ham United. Goal poacher defeated for the first time. For the first time. E Premier League. Yeah. Group and knockout journey. It's not over yet though for Nottingham Forest because Red Light will be taking the reins and having it's all to do. He only trails by one goal and that can be turned around in the click of a finger. The first kick of the game could yep, happen. Absolutely. But Brig Army has a lead, has a one goal lead going into the second matchup. What are you thinking if you're Red Light right now, if you're Brig Army? Is it just, I just got to play my game? I think Red Light is thinking this is my moment because, you know, I didn't win any matches in the group stage. I know. He's really, he talks about these things, so, what? Is that for me? Hello, everyone, just keeping it warm. It's the closest I'll ever get to it. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? Are we allowed to touch it? Why not? You can borrow it off me for a little while. It's nice, oh. isn't it? Well, Buckley's gone, well, there you go, I don't blame him. Yeah. Is that uh, so? Oh, man. I'm you can hold it. 
Probably the closest Is this I'll ever like get. heavy? Feel it. You look a bit scared. It's just... Can't drop it, you're not allowed to drop it's it. There's two as well. Oh. One for each player. One for me and one for you, right? No. No, absolutely not. Never. It's the closest we'll ever get, though. Um, we've got a big game coming up. Are you going to be joining us for the game? I will be joining you for the game. Okay. What I'm going to do is go and put this in a safe You go and sort and yourself out. Right? Join us for the kick-off. See you later. <laughs> um, talk to me, Grav, before we got interrupted by FG and the trophy, uh, about what we can expect in this second game. I do think it's Red Luck's moment. He didn't play well in the group stage, but, I mean, last year he didn't drop a single game. Yep. He won or draw every single game, and he was let down by his teammate. Well, but this it. year, it, goes, it could go all the way around. So I do think... In his mind, he's focused. I can see prepared. the players are ready, they're locked in. Headphones are in. We're underway. Second game in this knockout matchup. West Ham United leading two goals to one. Here's Nottingham Forest and FG has found the trophy back onto the uh, plinth. Yeah, it was a nice few seconds, but this is where the action it's where it really continues is. and it where it really is indeed. It's a very, very tight affair, still all to play for in this. Um Red Luck will be feeling confident, won't they, Grab? I, I think so. I think he's one of those players who Delicious. likes to take yeah, the opportunity. And he likes to take his responsibility. You yeah. know? So I do think in a way he wanted to have this chance to redeem himself in the Premier League. I also think if you're Brig Army in this situation, your teammates and everything you can. You've beaten arguably one of the best form players in the tournament. Two goals to one. You've been given the controller, given the reins to go. What about send West? It's a great block by De Bruyne. Into yeah. the into the knockouts, into the quarterfinals. Yeah, I think it's an added pressure as well for Brigami in this situation. But it is surely just a case of playing your game and sticking to what you think because they'll be they'll be watching each other. They'll be aware of of each each other's strengths and weaknesses, and they'll try and execute it, won't they, Graf? I think it's going to be a brilliant FC match, if I'm honest. I think it's going to be brilliant. I um, went all backstage, I saw Brig Army go up to Nottingham Forest, just maybe 10 minutes before they walked out, and he just said, it's going to be an honour playing against you. Shook both players' hands and said, Oof. let the best team win. And what a tackle that was, by the way, by Vincent Company. Twice in a row. I mean... Your hero. My hero, indeed. And there's no surprise that he's paired up with Virgil van Dijk, as we see the Such long Such a ball. play, bringing Kai Havertz into it. Haaland just away from his man, pulls onto the edge of the box. First pass to Hullet. Elastic goal, Brilliant. forcing the block. Brilliant attack. The second man press was just right enough for the auto block to happen. But when you get to the last third, that's what I'm talking about. you got to decide something. So he did the Elastico. It was the right thing to do. This has been the best game that we've seen so far, in my opinion, in terms of quality on the pitch, in terms of mechanical quality oh. as well, and the actual the tightness of it. Either team could win this game right now, and we've not been able to say that a lot. Yeah, there's, the CPL. there's a lot of things you've not been able to say also that Kevin right. De Bruyne is defended absolutely brilliantly. Your this. champion, FG. This is <laughs> yeah, the visionary, the, the vision that these players have to see things that no one would expect. I wouldn't expect to see Kevin De Bruyne team of the year defending like he is, but wow. Thanks anything, for the badge. Anything that happened here in the e Premier League? Hullet playing a little bit deeper as well for, for Brigami. A lot of people have played him as a striker. He's just sat a little bit deeper. Haaland's offered the space to run into, but that's passing. The one thing that I will say about Haaland, he gives the ball away a lot. His passing's not great. I mean, he makes up for it, I think. Just yeah. score a goal now and again. It is very, very nice to see on FC24 the meta sort of go towards the bigger type players, the aerial plus, because it's something that we didn't have, you know, in, in, in previous times and, and something that people are really, really enjoying to execute. Here is Erling Haaland. No. As, <laughs> as Buckley said, giving the ball away. It's just his, pa his passing is just not great. You want him to be the final piece of the jigsaw, not the corners. If you're not starting with him, yeah. you're finishing with him. Yeah. Again, the switch of play. It plays into West Ham's hands right now, but it's a long game to try and keep hold of the ball. I think his trigger runs a bit too much at the moment the West Ham Greek army. I do think at some time he has to... It's OK to trigger runs, but you've got to be special about it. Could be a bit of space here on that far side. It's Thierry Henry. Just look at Haaland getting away from his man. Company comes across. Gets the foul away. This is dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous, because there's one man that you aim for. And it's really hard to defend against. Henry over the free kick. Is that Erling Haaland marking Erling Haaland there as well? Yeah, he's trying to take it short, but... The Brenner won't come. 
Vincent Company fired across. Bruno Fernandes wins it back. Is there a counter on here for West Ham? Son. Nice. Nice defence. Great defending by Virgil van Dijk. Is that where you talk about the aggressive defending, where you need to be aggressive in those one-on-ones where you feel like you've got the upper hand and you just take off? That's the thing, it's a 1v2. So if in a 1v2, you've got to take risks, because if not, if you play it, like, patiently, there's not a chance of you defending it well. Rodri out wide, floating into the box, Haaland will get up for it. Heads it Ciao. down, oh, he's onside! Red Lack and Nottingham Forest back in the tie. Not only his course, he green times it. It wasn't necessary, but he did it. I didn't know if he was offside. I thought it as well, but ah, Havertz. It was Kai Havertz on the left-hand side playing him on, but oh, what, what, what composure to green time that as well. Because you don't really need to do that, but that's what sets apart these players from the casual players like me and Mr Buckley. Sorry, me? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one thing you can do in that situation, which is offside trap and pray for the best. I mean, Havertz dropped back to deal with Rodri, and then you... It's great knowledge, to be honest, to for Red like to see that he's going to be onside as well, because first glance, he looked like he could have been off. Back in the game are Nottingham Forest. That's a beautiful ball. Virgil van Dijk against Erling Haaland, and van Dijk comes out on top. But the press... I actually Ooh. saw Red Luck backstage as well when we were doing the analysis earlier on today. I was sort of saying he's been the player that let down this Forest side. He just said to me in passing, I've won a game now. You can stop. Hey, they're stop. listening to us. I've won a game, so... Uh, just, just pay attention to me. It is, of course, such a great opportunity for these players to be here, and there's so much more mm. as the interception from company. Again, there's so much more than just winning the E-Prem, isn't there, Grab, this weekend? There's so, so much up for grabs and the opportunity for people to, to keep their season alive. Yeah, and look for the cross. He's in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, he moved the keeper nicely. Recycles. This is good. This is really good. Finesse territory for Kevin De Bruyne. Bruno Fernandes does well. You're talking about the further implications of the E Premier League. You win it, you get a FC Pro World Championship sport and two tickets to the E Champions League for second place. You're taking E Champions League places as well. Grav, you keep putting your hand up. Just... Yeah, I want to talk because it's not <laughs> only those ECL and Pro World Championship spots, it's not only the money. You are the best player in England. And that's something else as well. And especially us players, uh, our ego is just like out of this studio, you know? So to be the best player in your country, it's something else. And you get the trophy as well, which felt really good. Honestly, my ego was being in play as well. Nice. Whilst I was touching it as well. But yeah, I mean, it's so important because these players, the season will continue for them. And that is a massive thing. You speak to some of the players, even if they get to that final, it's massive for them. It is, it definitely is. And. We talked about this match being potentially one of the best matches we could see, and it's a delivery. Living up to it. Yeah. Living up to it. You see West Ham on your screen right there. Brig Army came in with a lead that has been wiped away due to Red Lack's goal in the opening 45 minutes. I heard the whistle blow, which means one thing and one thing only. We need to find out our next quarter finalist. 45 minutes left to play. If we have to go to extra time, and penalties, I don't think something we've done today at all, nope. actually. No, it would not stick on this console, so it would be Red Lack versus Brig Army potentially stepping up from 12 yards. I really hope it goes to extra time because it's been a beautiful match. And I, I just want to see both of them just pushed against the ropes to see what you want to see them suffer a little bit more. Yeah, in a way. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I would like to see a penalty shootout as well. I wouldn't like to be involved in a penalty shootout with the stakes this high, but. Absolutely, but the quality, like you said, has been exceptional so far. Wow. It's a long, long ball up the pitch. Oof. Vieira, the main man. That should be out of. That's a big tackle. What a player. True. When you talk about the word icon, true Premier League icon, Patrick yeah. Vieira. Pull it, dinked it through to Henri. Is he onside? Yeah. He actually pulled away from it. Yeah, he wasn't. I do think... Manually pulling the, the player away, so you have to go for a free kick. Mistake at the back for Brig Army, but Rodri, as he ever does for Man City, just in the right place at the right time. Yeah, a right back doing a really, really good job for a lot of players this weekend. Um, on, that, on that topic of, of players, goalkeepers, we've got Petr Cech and we've got against Edwin van der Sar. Who would your pick be? I really like van der Sar. I think he's the most complete keeper you can pick. But there's also Alisson. Yeah. 
Henri. Henri. Oh, Not man. a goal, but... Van Dijk. <laughs> <laughs> what a centre-back. I think I would go... Uh, I think I would go Alisson. Yourself, FG? Um, well, you said Henri, but we could go Ruben Van Nistelrooy. Look at the cross, look at the cross. We could. Havertz just didn't make the run, did Henri at the back post there. Ah, oh, that was a good pass, but Hulley didn't react. This game's just getting a little bit cagey. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's really tough to play when you're in a two bit. I mean, it's 2-2 two, two, two and... How do you play? Do you try and go for it? Do you try and win the game? Do you just continue to play out the match? It's a... A mental arithmetic battle that is really tough to crack. Maybe you can cross. <laughs> no, but I think you've got to be aggressive. I do think in these situations, the player who takes the bigger risk usually wins, in my opinion. It's not an easy thing to do because, like, you're just, I don't know, so tense. But you've got to find that confidence. At what point do you take the risk, though? Because we're going into the final stages. No. This is the moment this to do it. This is the moment. Is that because you could potentially have time to recover as well if you can see the goal? Yeah, probably. I think there's also that element of the feeling that you get once you step off the stage, I'll, I'll wait to try and win the game, just as Red Light's trying to do. Power shot cancel. Cole Palmer! It's a huge chance. As the pause goes in, it is a huge chance. Wrong post, in my opinion. But that was brilliant. I... Rav, you've got another chance to talk us through it. But did he do anything wrong? Not really. I thought he was going to finesse with Hullet. But yeah, I, I, Red times. Think, I, I think it was yellow. But yellow. yeah, either way, I do think it was the wrong post. But yeah, we got me catching a breath in there. He greened the one that he probably didn't need to green. Yep. The first goal. Yep. The one that he needed to green. Couldn't quite get it. And that's nerves. That's pressure. That's what it does to you. It does to you, yeah. But maybe a finesse by Hullet. I mean, he had the finesse plus. Paul Palmer so, finesse? As well, he has yeah. the finesse plus as well. Eventually. It's great to be on the position where we are. <laughs> it is. <laughs> when you're in that booth. <laughs> it's a lot, lot tougher. It's a lot easier to watch, isn't it, than, <laughs> than to play, that's for sure. I'm telling you, if I was playing here, I would love to have FG with me as a coach. I call? thought he thought he said he'd love to play against me. No, 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 as a mental coach. I'm, and I'm telling you, 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 I'm sure you would hype me up. I'll hype you up even if you lose. Long throw in, Henri, Ginola for West Ham. They've not offered a lot in this second half, I've got to say. It's been a lot of Nottingham Forest, the close chances for Forest and the, the near misses. Greg Army hasn't created too much. Not really. But he only needs one. Yeah. Great pass. Henri, Vieira. Not the man you want leading the attack. He offloads to Rodri, Kai Havertz with a good chance. And what does that mean? Rodri's out of position. You try and exploit it while the Spaniard is up. There's space in behind if he tries to play. Bruno Fernandes with long ball pass plus. This is good. Can bring Hully into play now. This Howland, is good. great touch. Finishes it past the keeper. What? Brig Army and West Ham United are 15 minutes away from a quarter final tie. Small margins, just a small margins. He had to time it right. He did. Green. And that went in. And the oh, reaction. Great play. The build up play. Amazing. Amazing. He saw, the, he saw Roger out of position and then exploited. He created the overload on that left hand side and, and oh my, did he. Three players against advantage. one. And you, you said it perfectly. Like he overloaded, but correctly because Roddy was out of position. So he forced the centre back to be out of position. And when that happened, you're kind of in a tough position because the defence is completely messed up. What do you do? You try to go for the 1v1, but then he passed it to Haaland. And the green time, oh, beautiful. But still, I mean... It's well, a long way to go. Still. It's kitchen sink time now, though. Um, this is the moment where they he's got no choice. This is to save himself in the E Premier League. The winner of this game plays Luton Town. Massive game. Massive game. Huge game by oh, the two players who did so well. Oh. 15 minutes left to play in-game. That probably works out at about a minute and a half, 90 seconds left. No. Potentially of the e Premier League. Henri Genoa! Red time. We've seen a lot of the um, the long throws to Erling Haaland again utilising that aerial plus as well, which is an interesting tactic. But I mean, we were talking about corners earlier, saying how dangerous corners can be. If you're just going to throw the ball like an arrow directly into Haaland's head, there's even less pressure around him. There's only one player marking him. I and mean, you're not going to get Haaland on Haaland defensively. So it's almost a guaranteed win every time. 
Willian, fresh off the bench, alongside Ginola. Great pass. Keep well, in a 50-50. That's got to be a pay. Whoa, oh, referee. It looked like a penalty to me. Just absolutely clattered him. Say it's great goalkeeping, shall we? Let's say that, yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. Nice press. Yeah, that's a brilliant press. Henri looking to put the final nail in Forest Coffin. Check just in the way, more than anything. Into the corner flag, only seven minutes left to play. It's whipped into the box. Van Dyke wins it, and Vincent Company can clear in no. Ireland. That's a mistake. Nothing seems to be falling Forest way at the moment. Oh, really? Yeah, he can pass the ball backwards. Did you know that? It's onside. Yeah, he's taking Does the time. Brigami have what it takes to send West Ham into a quarter final tie? That's brilliant. Twisting and turning to find William again. You would hammer it offside. home just offside. Gives a chance for Forrest to go forward. They need one. It only takes one attack in situations like this, and you see it so, so much. Early switch of play. Could be another switch of play. You see it on the, the top hand side of your screen for people watching at home, but it's Rodri down the byline. Dinked into the box. Haaland will be up for it. Wins the header. Son. Oh, wait. Great time. Van der Sar, the near post. Makes the save. We do have a corner left to play. There's time on the clock. And it will be Kevin De Bruyne over it. Inside foot curl. Now he's looking to curl it away from the goalkeeper. Haaland selected. Whipped in, Howland up, Rude Hollett with a fantastic header. To one more in. chance, one more chance. Cole Palmer back out wide to De Bruyne, whipped into the back post, Hollett! Oh, what a chance. That could be it. I think that's it. West Ham United on the verge of knocking out Nottingham Forest. A 2-1 win for GRK versus Gold Poncher. And a 1-1 draw. Sealed the Hammers into the quarterfinals. Unbelievable stuff. Come on, man. Come on. Amazing. Let's look what it means on both sides of the coin. Desolation for Forest. Come on, man. Pure joy for West Ham. Look at that. That's what it means. And that's why we came here, and that's why we come here, to watch these West situations. Ham. There were always the conversation, they're a good team, but are they good enough? Yes, they are. They've answered the question. They are good enough. Brig Army has been a player talked about for a year or so now. This is his coming out party, a GRK. Look, he's got fans online. He's got a growing community. Not only... Is he a very good competitive player? He's an e Premier League quarter finalist. Yeah. I mean, the performance which is seen from the West Ham side. Rav, get yourself a lie down, because we're going again very soon. Frankie, what a game. <laughs> What a game. I can't wait to see West Ham do it all over again in the quarterfinals versus Luton Town tomorrow. But next up, we need to see who is going to win the ultimate showdown between Tottenham Hotspur and Crystal Palace.
Welcome back to the E-Premier League Finals 2024. There are just two more matches to go in this knockouts of day one. And West Ham, you can just see the emotions on their faces. This means everything to them as they send Nottingham Forest out of the competition and book a spot against Luton Town in those quarterfinals tomorrow. Next up, though, Leah Ravel and Casey, we have got Crystal Palace versus Tottenham Hotspur. Each team has a former champion. The question is, who is going to be wanting it more? Who is looking hot to trot? Lee Ravel, I'll start with you. Who do you have it in this matchup? It's hard to say. I mean, Tom and Lyrics. Lyrics was perhaps the the one that struggled more in the group stages. So, but Lyrics on his day is you know, one of the best as well. So if they perform to the best ability, it could be them. Shell, same thing, struggled in the groups, but has been playing well today. So alongside Nick Snab, if they're at the top of their game, it could be them also. What's really interesting is whoever wins this is going to be playing against Manchester City. Shell's won EPL back in 2021 with Manchester City. I wonder, Casey, if that's already on his mind. Yeah, I think that that is definitely on his mind as he's thinking about this, but it's important to go one game at a time. And I know that Man City is possibly in the back of his mind because they are arguably probably the team to beat in this whole competition, but he is going up against Lyrics, who is his friend. And so all four of these competitors have played so many times. I've been looking forward to this matchup all day. This could be a semi-final or a final. It's really lo interesting looking at the duo for Crystal Palace as well. Shells, we know he has proven Pedri is described as one of the best defenders in the game. But Nick Sneb is also a newer player, and yet he is holding his own for this duo. And, and Leah, just how mechanically skilled is this man? He's only 19. That's the thing. He does have that technical ability um, in the mechanical sense, but he also has the experience. He's 19 years old, but he still competed at the highest level. All of them, all four of them have competed internationally. So it's a level of match that maybe we haven't even seen today. So even though Tom Lees has got the 2020 title to his name, Casey, we definitely shouldn't be counting Nick Snab out. They're Absolutely both starting not. off in this leg. Absolutely not. I think that Nick Snab is one of those players that both offensively and defensively, defensively it's almost perfection. And both of their teammates, I think that Tom and Nick Snab, they dominate in the group stage, but both their teammates are rising to the occasion today. And so they're both very well-rounded teams. So looking at their matches earlier on in this competition, is this a case of our first match being the one where it's all out aggression and we see the most goals? I, it's hard to say, attacking players, but also no one wants to be the one to make the mistake or concede the goals. And I think, again, the experience here might come into play because they know how to game manage, they know how to approach this. And they've, like Casey said, they've all played together numerous, numerous times. Well, all I can say is I have an appetite to see the most goals possible and I'm a hungry woman. So let's <laughs> kick off this third knockout stage between Spurs and Crystal Palace. Well, where do we start for a game like this? Crystal Palace against Spurs in what is going to be a decider for tomorrow of who will be playing against Manchester City, a team that you know too well and a play you know quite well over there on the stage as well. Shells, former yep. teammate now of Crystal Palace. This one plans to be fireworks, Ryan Pessoa. Yeah, it's a huge matchup, as Casey said. Arguably the best or the biggest matchup we've seen so far. It's four juggernauts in the scene. They've performed on, on massive events. We've had two E champ or two E Premier League winners, I should say in Tom and Shells. Nick Snebb and Lyrics, top players as well. Well done. This is game number one. We're kicking off on the PlayStation first and foremost. It's so hard to try and paint the picture for this matchup here of the quality that these two players have on this side of the corner. It could be an early start for Tom Lees. Three minutes in, and it's a power shot already. It's an exciting start from Spurs. But one thing that we can guarantee from Tom Lees is that he is going to be full of goals. 23 for the competition now. But defensively, Ryan, my point I wanted to make is that they're both so solid. I mean, up to this point, Nick Snebb, he hasn't, he hasn't drawn a game, let alone lose a game. It's just been win after win after win after win all the way through. Only conceding four goals up to this point in the Premier League. 
He is a consistent player, so is Tom, in terms of making the latter stages in this competition. The last two years, he's had a top four finish with Crystal Palace's Nick Stebb, looking to go one step further this time. And for Tom Lees, former the Premier League champion, back in 2024 years on, after coming so close last year, we're looking to make sure that he can put, get it right this time. After a heartbreaking end to Leeds United, in what was a really difficult final. Last year's competition, 10 minutes in, what are we expecting from this game? I mean, look, I know it's over two legs, Ryan, but this leg in particular is going to be a real battle. It's huge, it's two of the best players in this competition kick-starting this leg. Nick said, I think that goal came from a bit of rash defending. I think he pressed intently, didn't end up winning possession, and it gave Tom Lisa a huge chance in that goal, which was expertly taken, to be fair. Time, oh sorry, I should say power shot into the, the underside of the bar. His next step, driving forward, looking for that all-important equaliser, defended well by Bruno Fernandes. If you have just tuned in, this is a huge game here at the Premier League. You win this, you go through to the quarter-finals tomorrow to take on Manchester City. Earlier today, in case you missed it, it was a huge 5-2 win for Spurs. And Tom Lees' individual game is Kicking around the box here of De Bruyne. There's the finesse shot deflected well. And eventually handled by Nick Snep. If you are a keen ultimate team player, that Benton Kerr did get an upgrade. Thanks to that result from Lyrics and Tom. Overall, they won 6-2. Lyrics winning his individual game by a goal to nil. And it was also very convincing for Crystal Palace in a 6-2 win against Everton. Those two results put them into this match up here. It's been the game of the round that everyone's been talking about. Thierry Henry. Next, it's well, a couple of step overs, and it's an aggressive tackle from Henry. It's enough to win the ball, but give possession back to Crystal Palace. Only for so long. It really is one of those, if you think about it, it's the first time we've had a console swap in terms of the way that. This yeah. match is going. We've always normally kicked off on the Xbox, haven't we? And what we've learned from today, Ryan, is that if you're playing second leg, it's a very horrible game. Yep, you have to carry the weight of the result from the first leg, whether it's worked for you or against you. What's the main thing right now is that from Crystal Palace, Nick Snev gets back into it. Defensively. It's another great call to make from Tom Lees. The conversations we're saying at the desk before we go going today mechanically. Nick Snebb. Unbelievable with the offside. No, he's not. Rude Hull, a massive chance off the woodwork. Oof. Could have and should have been 2 0 to Spurs. He still is very much alive. Harlan back to Hull, interchanging so well. Carl Palmer is blocked by Virgil van Dijk. And then another day, Spurs should be leading by two goals to nil. Should be 2 0. 100% that chance there. In on goal. 1v1 hits the post there for Tom Lees. But a shaky start there from Nick Stebb, in my opinion. Defensively, and even in terms of just keeping possession, it seems like he's, he's gifting it away a lot of the time. Third of this game already got. But this is only the first leg. An aggregate scoreline will be needed across two individual games to find. He will be playing in the quarter-finals tomorrow against Manchester City. I'll be in for an equaliser. The touch wasn't great from Bakaya Saka there. Just sort of juggled up onto his boot. Massive tackle from Virgil van Dijk. Possession finds its way back again to Spurs. Roderick and hasn't looked out of place in a full base. There a flick on available. From team of the year Harlan. Oh, the pace. Cynical challenge was needed there from Tom to stop 
Erling Haaland running in behind. Five minutes left to go of this first half. We haven't seen too much offensive threat from Nick Sneb. I think he's managed it all well, Tom. I think he's been incredible. He could arguably or should definitely be 2-0 up. A number of brave decisions there at the back, hasn't there? Just some big defensive calls where when he's needed to be aggressive, he has. I think it looks like Tom Lees will be going into half-time, 1-0 up, yes he will, Spurs lead by a goal to nil. And that goal came in just three minutes. We speak about defensively how good these two are, they, they just don't ship many goals between the two of them. Yeah. Tom Lees has conceded five, Nick Stepp's conceded four, and that's including group stage games back in January as well. Yep, and I think that goal, the first goal, just stemmed from Nick Snebb. I think it was just a bit too rash defensively, I mentioned, just ran out a little bit, gave possession away needlessly as well, so maybe you could Point that towards nerves, being on a big stage, an all-important game as well. Winner goes through to play Man City. Losers eliminated from the E Premier League. So much talent on that stage as well. The two players in action now, Tom Lee and Nixon, they're both E Lions in their own right. They represent England at a national level. It just goes to show. Now they are both at the top of their game, of course, teammate. And good friend Shory behind him, pushed him through and see Lyrics watching on. He'll be in the action against Shells in our second game today. It is his fifth time in an E-Premier League for Tom Lee. So remember that he did win it back in 2020 with Watford. Other than that, he's been on a mission with his beloved Spurs to try and pick up that trophy there. It was a top eight finish back in 2021. Top 16. And then a second place finish last year, losing to the hands of Leeds United. We'll be hoping that this time he can put it right. Yeah, exactly. I feel as if Tom's got unfinished business irrespective of being a previous champion. And he's coming into this tournament as, in my opinion, one of the best players in Europe, let alone Absolutely. in the Premier League. Kai Havertz. It's going to fall back to Bruno Fernandes. We know how deadly he can be with a finesse if it was to be Kevin De Bruyne. But just back to your point, that you say about how good he is. I yeah. think he's that good and he hasn't even been able to play him That's the thing. That's the thing. And I think that's why he'll be relishing the fact that he's on the main stage now. He'd want to be playing here at the biggest stage of all. Of course, representing his, his club as well, his favourite club in Tottenham Hotspur. So, he'll be hoping to do them proud as well. Pull it back to Rodri. There's at the Bruyne. Option from the edge of the box. Disguised it well. Nick Stebb again. Huge tackle from Kai Havertz. Goal saving. Genuinely a goal-saving tackle there. Last ditch to prevent Crystal Palace from getting a shot at goal there. Well, Good that one out so well. Cole Palmer. Have the idea. Would be happy to overload in a bit of a onslaught on this right-hand side of the pitch. He does find the aerial read after the first. The icon is there. A potential cutback available. Look to go down to ground. Look to be some contact there from Rio Ferdinand. The Poles play out from the back there from Tom and push forward De Bruyne. Happy to keep possession. The triggered run there as well. It's gone for the finesse. It's red times. And just goes wide of that left hand post. I think that's the key component to building up in FC24. Just triggering the run there from I think it was Bruno Fernandez running deep from Tom. Just made and forced Nick Sneb to switch curse. We'll just to pay attention to the run. That's a Another mistake. One. Can you make the most of this chance there, Thierry Henry? One-on-one -on -one with Virgil van Dijk. Went to corner for his efforts. Well, what can we see from here? We'll see Nick Sneb defensively. Trying to stop. Merlin Haaland's run. Whipped in towards the back post, and there's two hands on it from Van der Sar, and into a poor Spurs. We'll be looking to it. If this stays at a 1 0, Ryan, it's so open for the second game. Yeah, it sets out perfectly for Shells and, and Lyrics, of course, watching on from the sidelines right now. Two good friends as well. A lot of experience playing against each other, practicing continuously throughout the years as well. Over it. Not the man you really want. They get into the box, offload it to someone else. 
pull it, De Bruyne, does he fancy it from this far out? A couple of ball rolls, this is nice for Nick Sneb. One more fine to Henri! And Crystal Palace! Find a way back into the tie! It's a massive goal there, Brandon. You see the build-up, driven into Erling Haaland. Plays a reverse pass to Henri on his weaker left foot. Finesse shot plus play style into the top corner. And that's the route back into the game for Nick Sneb and Crystal Palace. Frustration from Tom Lees, who has defended in his own right really well in this game. But Nick Sneb, he's going to create. He's going to create, yeah. create and create and create and create and make it so difficult for you in the final third. As we said, if you look through his group stage, 4-1 win versus Luton, 2-1 win against Fulham, 1-0 win against Wolves, 2-1 win against Bournemouth, and a 4-1 win again today against Everton. He has not tasted anything else but a win throughout this competition in his individual matches as Nick Snap. And also in the same breath, Tom Lee, you have to remember, has also been unbeaten up to this point as well. The only point he dropped in the group was a 1-1 draw against the arch enemy in Arsenal. In a North London derby played in the E-Premier League. Of course, remember Arsenal are also through. Into a massive game that will come up after this one. As that goal sparked some life into Crystal Palace. Goalkeeper movement there was interesting. Vieira, right back, which is, of course, defensively, it secures you with this playstyle plus as well. Just a statue of Vieira as well try and battle at the back post aerially, but going forward doesn't really offer you a lot. Tenkan Rice also. Player that's been drafted on. Paul's coming from Crystal Palace. Last 18 minutes here. We have just tuned in to see Premier League Grand Finals. Winner of this plays Man City. That's going to fall nicely to well in Haaland. See the way Tom builds up there, just looking for the finesse shots. He's had that a couple times, I think that's three times already in this game. Was blocked there from Cole Palmer, who has the play style plus, so it increases the accuracy and trajectory of those finesse shots. It's making it a little bit more dangerous and something you have to always keep note of when defending. You have to move the goalkeeper. You have to, any sort of area. We saw Tom actually earlier on score a finesse shot from around 30 yards with De Bruyne. It was out of nothing, out of nowhere, and that sort of gave him the platform to push on in the game, so... For next step, you have to move the keeper. Frustration building there for Tom Leach, as you can see. Into the pause menu we shall go. We already saw a couple of changes, such as Declan Rice and Patrick Vieira coming onto the pitch for Spurs. Looks as if there'll be a couple of personal changes as well for Crystal Palace. Probably expect the fullbacks just to be replaced. So if there's any sort of danger. He's covered up well. Someone else you notice in that booth as well. Dr. Nightwatch, former. A Champions League runner-up, coaching good friend Lyrics this weekend. Some of these boots we've had, it's full of, full of knowledge and history and yep. got Shory accolades. Behind. Shory behind Tom Lee's there as well. Benny on the other side, supporting and coaching Crystal Palace. Both players, of course, have all played in the E Premier League in the past years. Got so many reps in the E Premier League. As I said, on one side of the defence, you've got Tom Lisa, 2020 winner. And then coming up next, you've got Shells, who won this competition on a penalty shootout back in 2021 for Man City. Now playing for Crystal Palace this year. Yaya Torre, fresh off the pitch. Still Yaya Torre now. Tries to squeeze it back. It's a massive save from Van der Sar. And already you can see the instant impact of that hero. And he's offering... Him in the final third. Big win there from Omri. Has to win it again. Very nearly does. Rodri, isn't it? The left-hand side now, the back line. That pressure there from Mixon. Very dangerous, plays well. Under that pressure does Tom Leeds to get himself a, out of that spot of bother. Happy to take that big switch once again. Is it going to be even Stevens heading in? The second leg between these two. Hullet, is there a through ball available? Finesse from distance. 
what it is there. It's just triggering the fullback on the overlap, using them as a decoy and then just going for the finesse shot. Didn't really have too much of an angle on it, though, did it? That finesse shot. The routine save in the end. To be the last attack of this game. Crystal Palace hoping it falls their way. Nick Sneb looking to keep possession, approaching the 90th minute, and he's just launched it out for a throw. And the last attack will fall the way of Tom Lees and Spurs. See how much time is added on to this one as well. Only one minute, last chance of the game now for Spurs to take a very slender advantage into the second leg. Early to Haaland, times it green, wins a corner. Good keeper movement there to prevent a goal directly at goal, but it's going to be a, a corner. And we know how well Tom Lees has drilled at corners this year. Scored a number, scored a few all important goals from this set piece. This was the chance, the last guard defending there, committed from Nick Sneb. The keeper movement towards the middle and backwards as well onto his goal line, prevented a goal from Tom Lees. And as much as it was time green run, the angle was just getting smaller and smaller. Of course, smaller. yeah, yeah. And especially if you move the goalkeeper there, it sort of nullifies the attacking threat, especially if you, you move them backwards. It's not just about committing to a side, you have to keep them in. If there's someone that knows how to take a corner in this game, it will yeah, be dark watch. Genuinely. He is telling Tom <laughs> exactly what to do. Let's jump into it now. Corner. Last kick of the game for Spurs in match number one between these two. Now let's see if there is to be a last laugh in this one. Where's he going? Rafa Varane is there towards the front. Post off the woodwork. Oh, my goodness. And so nearly. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. A winner wow. for Spurs in match number one. Ryan, what happened here? I mean, it was nearly two on to Spurs. Yeah, taken directly. It was Rand running in. Oof, just off the bar, and it could have fallen for a rebound, but it didn't. You can see the reaction from Tom Lees there as well. Look over his shoulder tonight, watch. Wow. It sets up, Brandon, perfectly for a second leg between Shells and Lyrics. 1-1 in the first leg. Winner takes all in the second leg. It couldn't have really ended in any other way between the two players in that game. We know they both scored plenty of goals, but defensively, we know they are both so solid indeed. There is someone else who uh, just, just joined us as well. Richard Buckley, Rich, you've been watching it from the sidelines for that first game. I mean, it's the match of the round, this one. And look, this second leg sets up perfectly. It does set up perfectly. And do you know what else? I think that first leg, the, the vibe that I got from it, both players felt they had to win. Yeah. Agreed. Because you, you, I, I'm not being disrespectful, you're passing it off to the player who's been worse at the Premier League. So you've got the yeah, two players who have, have carried your team to this point, and you're passing over the controller to someone who hasn't played as good during this process. The thing is, so and they're playing against each other. Yes, that's what I was going to say. That's a key moment here. I think whoever wins this, that could spare them on to genuinely go the distance. I know you have Man City in there. What way. a game. You've got to be unbiased. Yeah, I'm always unbiased. <laughs> Just for context, for those at home, obviously Ryan Pessoa and Shells were teammates to Manchester City for a handful of years. Obviously, since then, four years. I think so. Yeah, it's been a, been friends for longer than that as well. So it's it's tough, but it's going to be a, a huge game. Lyrics and Shells play each other a lot in practice games. But just back to Richard's point as well. I mean, look, you look at Lyrics' record in the group stage. He didn't win a game, but one draw, lost three games, picked up his first win today, one goal to nil. He did look pretty good, I've got to say, against Painter. And he said in an interview, look, it's, it's a very different lyrics you're looking at now. I had to rightfully so put more practice in, more hours in, more reps in. So back up my teammate in Tom. Let's see what lyrics has got for us here in this first chance of the game. De Bruyne's got a clean, free cool. chance here around the Great goalkeeper, save. saved wow. by the feet of Edwin van der Sar. But already, here's your first warning shot fired. You say could have been a... A quick goal again for Spurs against Palace. It's a massive save. You speak about lyrics. For me, you're seeing lyrics as uh, intensity and will to win by flying in Nightwatch from behind it. Yeah, it's a different player, as in Absolutely. lyrics. It seems genuinely, if you compare this lyrics to... I know we've only got to the pleasure of seeing it for one game plus this so far today, but... It just looks a lot more focused, looks more lazy. It's, it's a complete... That overhaul in preparation. That corner in the first game made me laugh. My night watch turned me exactly <laughs> what button to press, how much power you want to put on it. It nearly worked for him as well. You didn't know what to expect, did you? On the other side of it, you have to remember that Shells has been here before and has been a champion for Manchester City back in 2021. He won on a penalty shootout. At the moment, he's having to 
deal with all this pressure which is coming his way. Keeper's going to save into his own goal. He's bundled in. It's not the most prettiest of finishes, but he won't care. Spurs lead by two goals to one. Just to build up with Vieira, the step overs, the, save, the keeper movement was great there. It's just, for lyrics, it's very fortunate, of course, it falls his way. And for Crystal Palace, they're down by one again. I think, obviously, it's a, it's a disappointing goal to concede, and, and it's a sort of goal that that goal's in, and it could drop the head. I think Shells as well. Obviously, playing with him for a number of years. He's a confidence player. He's somebody yeah. that he if doesn't he gets going, he's yeah. flying. But the thing is, he's, he's one of those players he doesn't necessarily gain confidence from results. It's more so how he's performing. Exactly. And I feel as if if he will see he's defending well, he's creating a lot of chances, he's not making unforced errors, I think he'll gain confidence. Like that goal, I don't think, would deflect, deflate him or derail him. I think he moved the keeper well. He'd done what he could do, and he conceded. I think that. He's very mature when it comes to that. Like, yeah. it's not a. As much as it is a results business, it's not a results business. Yeah. But you need to get a result now. Of course. All important, this is a huge game. This is it. This could be the season defining. It's the first time he's been able to sort of really have a feel of the ball, because at the moment it's all been Spurs saying that. Thierry Henry will snatch it off. Shells and look to drive forward. I mean, it's a perfect opportunity for Lyrics to show exactly what work he has been putting in since January in the group stages. Well, I also, I, I know I was having a chat with Lyrics as well, and he was talking about the formation and his tactics, just all wrong yeah. in the groups. He's now playing pretty much where everyone else plays in terms of the, the formation and the tactics and the way that he's playing, and he probably was at a disadvantage playing how he was in the groups. He does tend to sort of stick with his own play style and, and method of formation and personnel, similar to Dragon, but not on a a drastic scale. It's just sort of a toned down version, in the sense they'll go for formations that he likes playing as well. And the 4 2 3 1, the 4 4 2, but I think the 4 3 2 1 is probably the most effective. Just have way. to. Yeah. Big switch there. Can he win it in the air? We'll come back nicely to Crystal Palace here. Declan Rice for Shells driving this attack forward, yet to really register a, a proper chance or shot or goal. 30 minutes gone already, Spurs lead by two goals to one. Winner of this plays Man City tomorrow in the quarter-finals of this year's E-Premier League. That's exactly what he's looking for, if he can get the ball out to either side of the flank. There's a six-foot-plus frame of Erling Haaland there. It's going to fall nicely back to Thierry Henry. Can he show us a skill or two, as Flip Shells often does in the final moments with that flary side to his game? Again, doesn't get anywhere on that occasion. And there'll be lyrics. Come on forward once again. Happy to take his time. Company. Back to Hullet. Could be in for a second. Yom in Son. Red block at the back. It's a huge, huge block there. I thought it was almost certain going to be another Lyrics goal in this game. Charles just hasn't got going. First it's 36 not. minutes. He's just. He's played very reactionary. Yeah. He's not been able to get a, a hold of this game whatsoever. Lyrics has been the better player. Yeah, even then, he could have played it in behind there. He opted for the safe pass. Oh, not in the box there. Really result for the cross. Lyrics still there too. He offers you... So a very reasonable option. In the box, long ball forward. And there is a group of people watching this game because they'll be playing them tomorrow. Man City there in the back room here at the Premier League watching on to Broida from distance. And it's two. Wow. Didn't even need to time it, Green, I don't think. Just flew into the back of the net. Kevin De Broida will put Spurs up by two goals to nil. I want to see the goalkeeper movement. Was he? He wasn't. I'm surprised he doesn't say. This is Lurik's best 41 minutes I've seen. Agreed. He's been in the last few years. He hasn't conceded the goal. He's been he hasn't conceded the goal so far. Absolutely flawless. Attacking, pressing. He looks confident. He looks like he's, he's rolled back the years. Yeah. I'll be honest. Again. He looks really good. He's not going to wait back to Bucharest. Two near we leads. And so far in knockout play in this tournament, he hasn't conceded the goal yet. Going again, he's in. For three. three! Wow. And it's all before half-time. 
I think Tom could go over. Tom's over. Go in. <laughs> Where was this in January? 3-0 Lyrics leads on the stroke of half-time. And it comes a mountain. A lot of players often say, yeah, I've been putting in the work behind the scenes. And they've not. They've just been playing now and again. You can see it. This looks like a Lyrics that's been playing six hours a day for the last two months straight. Genuinely. It's a, it's a completely different player. You can see the player lock as well there for the pass across goal was perfect. And for Shells and Crystal Palace, down by three at half time, it's a big, big second half. But Lyrics has been superb. If I'm, if I'm, you saw Man City, if I'm Man City watching this game, I'm a bit worried. <laughs> anyway, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't think these lyrics were here. Yeah, this we is, thought this lyrics this is gone. the throwback lyrics. You can see City, as we mentioned. Matthias, Tex, Edu and everyone at City preparing and looking on for their potential opponent. Is that Yago? It is Yago. Former, Former West Ham. <laughs> Yago. I'll tell you, minute, tell you what about Yago. Unbelievable senior. I had the to play a few games with him in uh, Copenhagen couple of years ago he loves football that much not only when he was playing in the five aside but when he wasn't playing he wanted to referee the game <laughs> so we were on the pitch still <laughs> loves fc as well he's flown into it yeah. what changes need to be made here ryan for any i don't think any chance. I, I wouldn't change any formation or tactics yet i know it's three goals if you change it and you can see this game done but if you play not the same way in terms of do you think if you stick it on lyrics just a little bit, you yeah, might get you might get something out of it? It's not early. I don't. I think it's too early to potentially go all out. Yeah, way too early. What minute would you say then? 65th, I would say. But when it, if it's three, if it's three goals at that point, then yeah. If he gets four, for me, it's done. But even then, three against lyrics is is extremely difficult to overcome. Especially, I can't remember a chance, let alone a shot from from Shells in that first half. Schweinsteiger, big chance. Company does well to deal with it. Let's see what this Crystal Palace team is made of in this second half. Back to back top four in the last two years. The roster may have changed slightly with Ethan Higgins obviously coming out of that team now. Shell's coming in to partner up with Nick Snap. Oh, that's a great trick. It's great play. There's Lyrics on for goal number four. Romery, one more into Hyun Min Son. Vanessa. Cole Palmer disguises a shot well, still happy to keep possession until. He finds the perfect angle to finish with it, cuts it back inside. Thierry Henry, time that green. Lyrics is dangerous. <laughs> He's still not done yet. Minute. He is cooking in the final third. I'm seeing Berber cancels. <laughs> Paul Palmer. Let's look at the... Declan Rice, the pace of this attack. There's the player, oh, there's Haaland with the flick on. Oh, it's superb from Lyrics. Sun steel, De Bruyne! Oh! This, this oh, looks like oh, it's now. unbelievable. Hold on a minute. Wait a second. Timed it green as well. Deserves the goal. I'm going to be honest, that was sensational build up from Lyrics. That might have been goal of, of honesty today. I think that's caught Shells off guard. All of his life. They've played a lot and Lyrics is just a different beast. Is this a Nightwatch effect? It could be. There's still time to go and Shells will know that, but that his performance level has has not been up to the level of his opponent. No. It's very simple. Lyrics is playing at a level that we've not seen. I said it once and I'll say it again. The entirety of the groups. He lost three games in the group and Dream. Yeah. We didn't see this from him. And that's true there. Even the a... game earlier versus Painter. 1-0. It was okay, but this is a different level. Shows to start a comeback. Has, shows has to be directed. Ooh. And it needs to happen now, Schweinsteiger. So passive. Holy, it's just not going to happen, is it? Time just keeps on trickling away. When you say so passive, what, what, do, you, what, what do you mean by that, Ryan? So me and Shells used to practice, right? I took, I'd fall guilty of this as well. We called it punching the ball into the strikers. You'd be building up on the edge. Last year, the most effective way is just to try and get the ball to your striker's feet, and then the magic starts from there. He's getting the ball down the byline, relatively successfully, but then when trying to recycle and get the ball into the striker, sort of playing the ball in when it's open, he's scared to lose possession. So he's turning back, recycling again. It's going back to Schweinsteiger, De Bruyne. They're taking so many touches, whereas the strikers are just not seeing the ball. I mean, it's cute to pull shells, but it's going to come too late. Robbery in a battle with Hullet. See, just a negative touch, he's turning back. I know in that situation it's hard because it's bouncing, you've got Rodri, who isn't the most nimble in possession, but... 
He's playing like a defeated player right now. And he's not, he's still got time to go. Yeah. Is this the chance now? He's to get at this defensive line of lyrics. Great defending. Great defending from Lyrics. Just stood up to it. Look at the ball. Oh, Palmer, number eight on your screen. Robbie will try and track it. For Lyrics, it has been a perfect game of FC24. When you're in this position as well, when winning, you see your opponent caught or a Cuba pause. I'm doing everything in my power to not let the ball go out of play. Genuinely. Which I think Lyrics might be. To be just that, the best leg individual game of FC24 he's probably played all year. We're seeing it now. And the most important time in this competition after a 1-1 draw in the first leg between Tom Leese and Nick Snep. Lyrics has come out flying. 4-1, the lead on aggregate. If he can hold on to this for just 12 in-game more minutes, they'll be in a quarter-final tomorrow. Kept in as well. Yeah. Will be taking on Manchester City. Look at the space. So much space. It's sealed the deal now. If they want to find a fourth, Haaland to the back post. He might go on his own. Into Haaland for four. Yes, Lyrics. He's back at his best. Game, set, and match. Tottenham Hotspur versus Manchester City. Put it in your diary. Quarter final. I think that's more of him turning around, turn around to Tom and say, I'm here. Yeah, that's I'm a here. huge boost of confidence for Tom, genuinely. That would do not just lyrics, but Tom the world of good as well. So now you've got confidence in your teammate. Yeah. Which, I'm not saying you didn't have it, but the performances from the groups maybe diminished I that confidence. I don't, I don't think he had it after the group stage. Genuinely, I know how Tom is, and I think he's probably responded to that on social media as well in, in cases that he felt as if he'd done his part. And obviously, lyrics admitted to himself as well, he would say he didn't. Now he's definitely putting his way. He's here. 50-50 split. Literally, he's been insane because if it wasn't for him in this game, if there's a time to peak, it's now. Let's, exactly. Let's do it now. Yep. One point from 12 in the group stage, and you can actually understand the frustration that was coming from your teammate of, look, I'm getting the points on the board here, and I need a bit more from you. Fortunately enough, there's been a big enough gap between the two events here at the Premier League. There's been enough time to get the practice in and get accustomed to how competitive this tournament is. He's blown away a former E Premier League champion, Paz Lyrics. Shells lifted this trophy only a few years ago, and right now, Lyrics has carried Spurs into the quarterfinals. He won five. Last four minutes of the game. That'll be three quarter final sets in stone. Great play. Hoyland on for five. <laughs> See the look from Shorey and Tom. They're blown away by this. <laughs> Unbelievable from Spurs. It's a case just waiting for the full-time whistle now, but we'll turn our attentions to what our quarter-finals look to be. I mean, there's three already confirmed in the bag, isn't there? Manchester United take on Liverpool tomorrow. Luton Town against West Ham United. Man City against Spurs. Not oh, crazy. That result is. This was the game we were talking extra time, penalties, it might be needed. 6-1, and uh, it went into the second game at one apiece. Unbelievable wow. scenes again. You just didn't, you just didn't predict that in the second leg, and I think Tom would probably even stand there and say the same. I mean, look, we haven't seen a convincing performance from Lyrics. Yes, we saw a one the win against Newcastle United, but as we said, he did not win a game in the group stage. He drew one game, he lost three, but whatever's happened across the last couple of months, he has completely turned it all around. A huge five nil win. Resounding. It was a, a demolition job, I'll be honest. From start to finish, I think Lyrics dominated. Shells were never in the game. No, not once. I couldn't tell you a, a moment in the game where I thought Shells is getting back into this. I thought Lyrics controlled it from start to finish.
You said about confidence for Shells. He just didn't have any opportunity to be confident in that game at all. As we said, Man City against Spurs will be the game tomorrow. FG is catching up with that Spurs side now. They must be over the moon. They're in the final eight. They absolutely are over the moon. And the man who is also over the moon. It's like a throwback, that lyrics. What a performance. Um, let's talk about your level. Man, um, I don't know where that comes from, to be fair. I think um, how prepared I am for this tournament, how much work I put in, um, it gives you a certain level of confidence where you can go and put out performance like that. And I don't know, that's not always going to happen, do you know what I mean? Like, I think everything just went perfect for me. And I don't think Shells played his best game. Like, I, I played Shells a lot. I know Shells can play a lot better than that. So, um, yeah. But yeah, what a win. <laughs> what a win indeed. Let's talk about tomorrow. Manchester City up next. Uh, what mm. can we expect? I'm not sure, to be fair. Obviously, um, I think they're the only team that hasn't played. I mean, obviously not the only team, but, you know, one of the three, the four teams that were group winners. Um, so we haven't seen them play since January. Just don't really know what to expect. Um, obviously, the game has changed a lot with, you know, the Halo Meta and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I just play my game and hopefully we come out with one. Well, all the best tomorrow. Let's head to Frankie. Thank you very much, FG and Tex. Watch out, Lyrics is coming for you in that Xbox matchup in tomorrow's quarterfinal. Coming up after the break, though, we've got our final match of the night. It's Arsenal versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Good, thank you. I saw Vicky put I'm talking about I really want to win more than anything. I'm more like a kid at Christmas. It's party time for Liverpool. Liverpool will top the group. We have a lot of passion between us, don't we? Yeah. And at the end, we have big hugs and big cuddles. I don't really get nervous. You know, my expectations are, you know, win every game. Rashford, Trevella, Green! But coming into it, there's a massive like, chip on my shoulder. This is the one tournament that I've not performed at the level I should be performing at. I'll probably say Stingray is one of the best players in, I'm not going to say Premier League, in the whole world. My favourite moment was, I think it was the comeback against Brentford. I was 2-1 down. Shot from distance! You can never count Stingray out. Getting the first three points there, winning 3-2, that kind of set the tone for the rest of the games. Nice turn into Haaland. Still Haaland! Liverpool six points from six. Perfect start for the Reds. My best game, I think, was against United because that's when Stingray dropped point. It seemed a bit crucial, that game, that I won. So it's always good to rely on um, each other, and I think we did that, especially last game. 
I had a bit of a rough start, but as soon as I looked to my right when I conceded my second, I saw Stingray was about 4-0 up. There's a flick on, and there's a finish! 4-0! And I know he, he, he would never um, give away a lead like that. Well, I hope he wouldn't anyway. I don't think there's anyone who can beat us if we won our game. Liverpool, they are steamrolling through! I still feel like there's another gear we can go up. I feel like we've grown a, a stronger bond, so I think Carrying that forward and taking it up to that next gear that we've talked about, I think that we should we should be able to walk it, to be honest. That was a nice reminder of what we've got to look forward to tomorrow on day two of the E Premier League weekend. Because Liverpool are going to be playing for the trophy and, of course, playing for the badge in the quarterfinals. And Brandon, talking of playing for the badge, our next matchup, they're going to be playing to see who's going to be facing off against Brighton, your team. But more about that in a moment. Because, first of all, Liverpool, just how storied is Stingray as a player? I mean, the thing about Stingray, which is so impressive, which I don't think gets spoken about enough, he actually went and played in a French league last year and went and won the trophy there and has come back to, to basically, in his own words, unfinished business that he's got to do to try and win this league. And from his own standards and his own level, there's no reason why he's not at least in a top four conversation by the end of play tomorrow, if not one step further. And he's already got himself a ticket to an E-Champions League and maybe an FC uh, World Champion. He's got a face-off against his mate Dragon, though, so I... Can't wait to see that match go down. But right now, we've got to see who takes it between Arsenal and Wolves. Absolutely, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what is going to be happening. Coming up between Wolverhampton Wanderers and Arsenal. You're going to buy yourself Richard Buckley, Graveson and Case in the booth for this one. Grav, I'm still a little bit bewildered, I'll be honest, with what we just saw from Arsenal's rivals in Tottenham Hotspur. Um, Lurix with a truly remarkable performance. We turn over to the red and white side of North London right now against Wolverhampton Wanderers, and Wolves are that side that just chip away at you. They're very methodical in their approach, and when you're watching Kai Harris right now for Wolves, he's playing against RFD. It's going to be a, a chess match of a game. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, we've seen probably the best game throughout the whole E Premier League this year. But OK, it's done. Now we got to focus on this because RSD against K. Harris. I'm, I'm curious to see what happens because K. Harris is this methodical player who will just build up, triggering runs with the fullbacks, then kind of player locking. I mean, the build up is, is perfect, but RSD is He's a weird player, like in a good way. Like he plays in an unconventional way and it really works. And I do think he has a game plan that fits well against top players. Chance here for Kai. Beautiful play yes. from Bukayo Saka. The step over was inside the box case and it's a beautiful way to start this knockout match. Beautiful play and beautiful build up for Kai Harris against RSD here. And I think that this is the type of start that he needs to propel him forward. Obviously, a lot of game left to be played, but his build up is impressive. Yeah, it is extremely good. I mean, he triggers runs with the fullbacks, and then when we, he switches up the play, he is always finding the player locking to a striker. And there's nothing you can do, really. And especially when he finds himself those 1v1 one -one situations, I mean, the execution was just perfect. RSD in that previous matchup, I was watching it actually on the B stream. He won 1-0 against Michael Fisher. They won the tie three goals to two against Sheffield United. And if the game's at a clean sheet, you, you probably back him to go and win 1-0. Yep. However, when he's against it, you talked about that unconventional play style. It doesn't typically play into his hands because chasing the game, opening up spaces at the back, I think playing first for him is really good. Yep. Because it means that he can continue his way of playing all game long. If he loses 1-0, it's not the end of the world. We've seen results being turned around in the blink of an eye. Yeah, definitely. I don't know what you guys think about that defensive line, especially Baran as a right back. It's very big. Yeah. Do you like that, Casey, or...? I think I'd prefer the Rodri selection over Varane in terms of right back. I think he's just more of a well-rounded player to put in that position. Rodri's doing a joint left back. He's got interesting choices. Six foot two, six foot three, all across the back, and it doesn't matter oh. one bit because Haaland will win it against anyone. That's the thing. You put Baran as a right back, and Haaland wins. And then and you're just losing out on a right back. Yeah, I mean you're not attacking with him, yeah. and you're losing the headers as well. 
corner to be played in. Haaland selected. Penalty spot. It's the defensive Haaland who nudges it away, but the pressure maintaining here for Kai Harris. The press after possession loss, like manually, has been brilliant throughout the whole tournament for Kai. But he got to look forward to last game of the day. Mitch Hayward for Wolves against the OJ2. Henri just trying to turn it around the corner for Rude Hollick, but it's good defensive work from Arsenal and just calming it down. It's RS2. I, I think it favours him if there's less chances for both sides because if it gets to this just attacking game, he'll lose it for sure. He needs to calm it, which he is trying to do. Play a game of moments. Yeah. But Kai Harris clearly knows that because he has been outright attacked throughout this matchup so far. Whenever he's got it, he's gone forward and he's on forward with a real intent case to score. Yeah, it's interesting though, because in the group stage, Arsenal had a goal difference of zero. And so for as much as they attack, they are conceding a decent amount. And so I think that's one thing that they probably need to fix in, in terms of not conceding as many goals because that has been their downfall. Because they actually performed really, really well in the group stage. Yeah, they played, they played well. No, oh, should have been to Cole Palmer instead of Hullet. And That's this is nice good. ball in behind. Haaland to run away. Van Dijk comes across, maybe just take the space. Probably. I don't think Van Dijk would have been able to stop him if he just keep running. But it's also, I mean, as a player, when someone starts just player locking every single attack, it's really confusing for you as a defender. You don't know what to expect. Son, trying to move it around the corner. Good defensive work. Here is Varane again involved. Great. He overloads one side. Play a lot for the back posts. Keeper comes a long way. It's good goalkeeper movement to pull him out and, and minimise the error. This is exactly the same player lock he tried against Tom successfully when he drew the game against Tom 1-1. I think we're going to see it a couple of times more. It is the foot birthday of Iran at right back. Five star skills, but still, that big body doesn't yes. move very well. I'll tell you who does move well. Thierry Henry case. Kai Harris 2 0 up. I mean, what a fantastic pass into Henry there with the quick, determining movement. He quickly turns, slots it right back into the right side of the net. He makes it look easy. easy. Rude Hullet isolated his centre back. Yeah. Um, just held him off. Yeah, pretty Didn't much. Didn't allow him to get close to him. And it, first, the player lock, he player locked to Saka on the edge of the box, moved it across the box, Hullet held his defender off, and it made for a pretty simple finish in the end. That's the thing, it's Ruth Hullet, especially the 94 rated version of him, battling against Laurent Blanc, which is, in my opinion, a big weak physically. Mismatch. Yeah, I do think it is. Always, something, these things happen for a reason in FC24, like it's not a random goal. If you're using Laurent Blanc because you're using Van Dijk, and Rodri as fullbacks. This can happen. Who would you like next to Van Dijk? Ruben Diaz, Ferdinand, company. I mean, company has been really good when I watched him. Yeah. I'm sure you've got to say that, guys. Oh yeah, number one choice. <laughs> <into the company. laughs> Absolutely. He won't be stopped. Thierry Henry coming a long way down this line. Oh, it's lucky. Like, hopefully, lucky. dink into the box. Unlucky because the animation wasn't right, but. The player up was really good. Maybe a little bit more of power? I don't know. Well, at half time in your first matchup here in the final game of the day. Thank you for sticking with us throughout today. Wolves leading two goals to nil versus Arsenal and discussions going on in the Arsenal camp right now because the man on your screen, RSD, is trailing by two. I would probably, if I'm losing two nil and I'm not really attacking with the right back. I'll probably switch Rodri to a right back. Maybe and bring Varane off. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a more attacking left back. In Havertz. Way. Yeah, that could work with the crosses. Chilwell. I don't know. Varane, you're using him. He did do a Mc Magidi spin, which was beautiful to see. But <laughs> apart from that, nothing really. Surprising to see that, though. Yeah. You don't really anticipate that from a player yeah. like Varane. But it's key moments like this during halftime that he needs to realize what he needs to change. And I do agree with that. 
he needs to switch up those fullbacks because whatever he's doing right now is not quite working. And that's what they're fighting for. You just saw the trophy flash across as we're about to get into the second half of action in your first leg here. Before the quarterfinals are confirmed. Ready and raring to go. Same place, same time tomorrow. That is that trophy that I just mentioned. The E Premier League champion of 2023-24 season will be crowned tomorrow. Back underway. Wolves 2-0 up. Bit of a dark horse, in my opinion. I, I actually backed him. To go all the way to the final. All the way? Believe it or not. To the final. And I just thought the way that they match up together, Kai Harris has got the potential to beat anyone, in my opinion. And then Mitch typically doesn't lose heavy. And I think as a duo, you do need a little bit of yin and yang. And I do think this format of them, you know, sometimes it's PS5 first, sometimes it's Xbox. When it's this and K playing first, I do think it favors them because Mitch is going to be able to it's just... Unbelievable with the possession. And the game points. management is going to be there. A few uh, really poor passes. Yeah. Help me five minutes of the second half, I've got to say. I think the thing that also helps Wolves is that they've been in the league for so long, so they're comfortable under these lights, in these chairs, because for Mitch, he's been in here five years, Kai for three, and so they're definitely not new to the scene. Well, Mitch has also had success on this stage. When I mean, you look at his previous results in the E-Premier League, some really good performances and, and maybe feel a little bit hard done by not to have got to a grand final and potentially been fighting for that trophy, because a couple of top four placements for him I feel really confident going into his matchup if the two goal lead is intact and the clean sheet is still there. I think it's too offensive, the team. Roderick digs into the box for Haaland. Schweinsteiger takes over. Now Haaland! Big, big goal. It might not be the prettiest, but it means an awful lot for Arsenal. It means a lot, definitely. I mean, we saw the bullet pass from Svan Steiger to Haaland. I think he could have tackled, in my opinion, and that probably would be a successful tackle, but he tried to move the keeper. It was a poor pass out the back from Wolves as well. Yeah, I think that it just set him up for failure there. It, I, kind of an awkward bounce into Holland, but he's somehow, it's Holland, and so no matter what, if he's getting a foot on that, he's going to put it back in there. But I agree, if he would have just stepped in that situation, I think he would have gotten contact with the ball and it would have been a goal. Sometimes you got to choose between goalkeeper movement and trying to tackle. Defended. Yeah. I mean, you can't do both. Well, you can, but it's very, very hard. It is hard. But there are some players in the Premier League that can do that. For example, Matias Bonanno. He's excellent in doing that. Six in. Yeah, as well. How we might have won that. We're going to see those two names that you just mentioned alongside Brighton and Hove Albion, who are there watching intently as they play the winner of this game tomorrow. Jaden on your screen. One of my MVPs in the, group, in the group stage. The player locks, I don't know, the volume, the, the of outplays he had, I don't know. For my, in my books, probably one of the MVPs of the group stage. We get to see him tomorrow. Yep, so tune in. <laughs> so he grabs MVP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> RSD could be going up in that list if he can turn this game around. He looked out of it at half time. He's back alive. That's the skills that we want to see from what? RSD. He's got it in the locker. I was commentating earlier with Ryan on the B stream. We said he's got this skill move repertoire that I watch his streams, I've seen it, he just never pulls it out online. I don't know if it's nerves, I don't know if it's, he goes to that crossing mentality, but he knows every skill going. Yeah, sometimes when you're playing here, you just, you want to do what works. Yeah. But sometimes your opponents expect that. So to pull something like that out of the trick, I do think like when Henry, he had the chance to shoot. He could have shot left foot. Yeah, I do think so. In my opinion, RSDs, especially the midfielders, are a bit too defensive because he's using Schweinsteiger Fiera. and Vieira. Maybe another kind of offensive midfielder with more playstyles could have worked better. And a bit of speed. Yeah. They're a bit clunky as well. Yeah. But still, this is 2-1. Like, yep. Game on. Yeah. Henri out wide into Declan Rice. He's the one holding the fort down for Wolves with 15 minutes left to go. 
couple mm. of step overs, Rodri against Rodri action. Nice balance, yeah. The press, look at the press from Kay. He won't let you catch a breath. He's pressing with his strikers every single time. And that's uncomfortable, you know? Because sometimes when you just take the ball back with your defenders, you, there's that chance of a small breath. But when you're playing against a player like this, which just presses, it really is frustrating. Mentally, you've got to be so switched on as well, okay? Because if you switch off for a second, more than likely you're going to see the goal. Right, and if we notice, the amount of he switches play as well, it's a ping pong game back and forth. And so you constantly have to readapt to the side in which you're defending on. And he keeps it very, very unpredictable by passing it back and forth every single, pretty much every, look at this, it's every single second. And I think it's making him really not be able to predict him. Yeah, the player look, that player looks really good. Howland in the corner, trying to shake off Rodri. Couple of step overs, trying to get the speed boost. Just create a little bit. That pass is a little bit too optimistic. That's the thing. If you have the brain, there is the, uh, always the danger of a possible finesse shot. But if you have Bieda and Van Steiger, if you pass it back to them, it's always going to be a bullet pass Extra into a striker. Pass. Yeah. But if you had the brain, Palmer. Yeah, he's using Palmer, but I don't know. It's just kind of to up the pitch, in a way. This is good. Creating the space out wide. One final chance for Wolves. There's the Bruyne. It wasn't even green. And he's rattled the crossbar. That's exactly what we were talking about. Last kick of the game for RSD. One additional minute. This could be a potential cross. He decides to take it. And re. Probably a finesse by Hulit. He decides to skills. Whoa! That's brilliant! Oh! oh! Post! We've got, to, we've got to see it again. We've got to see it again. Rich, you asked for it. I he wanted, did it. I wanted to see some skills. I know he's got it in the locker. And he dug deep into the locker. Let's have a look. Couple of step overs. Creating the space. He did deserve the goal. Oh, the reaction. He deserved the goal. <laughs> he knew that should have gone in the back yeah. of the Oh, Should have went in. That's his party move. That's wow. what he pulls out. RSD would have been superb and a true magnificent way to end this first leg. However, it's not done yet because a corner has been golden for many players here in the knockouts, whipped into the front post. Chance still not over yet. Jota nods it down to De Bruyne. Player locked, Haaland running away. Yeah. Dinked in and that will do us. Heading hands, to be honest, for RSD because he knows that that chance at the end of the game is an absolute golden opportunity and he worked it so, so well, guys. He really did. And it's not for lack of creativity because RSD was actually very, very impressive there. And I think he really turned it up in that second half as well. We saw him be a bit more confident, but it wasn't quite enough. But I will say it is the road is not over for Arsenal because we have one more match to go, Rich. We certainly do. One more game remaining. Graveson, You've been in splendid, but we're going to sub you out for the second Thank you half so of this much. match. I leave you with a better analyst. <laughs> we'll be uh, joined in the booth with Leah Ravel for this final match of the day. It's going to be Mitch Hayward for Wolves taking to the stage against EOJ2. But what an opening game that was. It was. It was impressive, exciting. Kai Harris was, I was about to say Kai Havertz again. Uh, Kai Harris was impressive, confident, and I think Mitch, with his experience as well, will prove himself proud by the end of this last match. Arsenal, just for the, sh the skill at the end, I feel like they deserve something, guys. They did, and that wasn't the only opportunity. There were a couple, a couple other mixy times that I was like, this deserves to be a goal. Couldn't quite get there for him. Yeah, we're going to get underway with that game very shortly indeed. That's what they're fighting for, the E Premier League trophy, 2023-24. One team will be champion. We've got nine left in the competition and we're about to find 
eight. One team, one club will be eliminated as we're going to get underway. The final game of today. 2-1, it currently stands. Kai Harris for Wolves giving the Wanderers one goal advantage. However, ELJ, I got the chance to watch him on the B stream. Real, real good player. Attacking will go at Mitch Hayward and will make it uncomfortable at points for Mitch as well. Yeah, the thing about EOJ, especially in the group stage, is he did start off a bit slow. But as soon as it clicks for him, as soon as that light bulb goes off, you kind of see his confidence grow throughout the entirety of the match. And so I actually really enjoyed watching him during the later half of the group stage because he kind of really came into his own. And I'm curious to see if that will continue with this match as well. I know I was watching Wolves earlier on today and Arsenal, and I think with EOJ it was... He had really, really good highs, but then the consistency over the 90 minutes wasn't quite there. He has to be perfect. From minute one to minute 90, Rude Hullock power shot straight across the goalkeeper. That's the sort of confidence that we like to see early doors. It was almost one of his highest highs that he could have had. We have almost like polar opposites here, a debutant in EOJ and an experienced veteran in Mitch Hayward. Mitch has been on this stage many times before. Not only at the Premier League, many tournaments around Europe and the world as well. Had the opportunity to represent England as an Eve Lion. Experience is something that comes very, very easy to him. But this opening 10 minutes, it's flown by, I've got to say. It's been all Arsenal. Possession has to be... Up in the high 80s, 90s from this opening spell. A couple of step overs, Ruth Hullett with the strike and forces the save. The thing about Mitch, though, is that he's one of the most patient players out there. And so even with the pressure that EOJ is applying here in this situation, I don't think it really affects him. It, it, it's a, it reminds me of sort of like a tortoise. OK, he's, he's just, I'm listening. He's just so... <laughs> consistent, he's hard-shelled, and he's always there. Mm -hmm. They've got very long lifespans. I see it. And uh, he, he is always at the E Premier League, every single year. He never gives up. A bit risky inside the box, but Schweinsteiger just clears it out. It's the story about the tortoise and the hare, yeah? It's good, good shout. <laughs> good shout. And you look at this game as well, you look at Mitch Haywood, Leah, it wouldn't surprise me if this ended nil-nil and Kai's performance from the first leg proved vital. Yeah, I agree. I think, like Casey said, Mitch is patient. He has the experience to game manage, as he should. But, on the contrary, Arsenal and EOJ are going to be looking to attack. Yeah. Because they're trailing and they're going to need to do something if they want to move on to tomorrow. Well, he was playing against Burnley earlier on today. That was his first uh, qualifying match, his first knockout match. Mitch played against Brad Colson, and Brad went 1-0 up in that game and were leading for a pretty long time until Mitch found an equaliser, got back into the tie, and then Kai Harris went and beat uh, Salman Ahmed to win the tie three goals to two. Would it be a shock if Arsenal were to win this game? I don't know if it would be a shock, I think... Obviously, Wolves have some experience, perhaps have some more skill, you could say. But the, I'm not going to say inexperience of Arsenal. RC obviously has been here previously, was at a quarterfinal last year. Um, but the hungriness of Arsenal could propel them. Yeah. They come forward here. Rodri out wide into Thierry Henry. A couple of step overs. We're going to see. Saka, he's always that man on the edge of the box. He tiki taka plus flashing up as well, but <laughs> we've played 30 minutes so far. Other than that power shot case, there's not been a lot to dissect. Yeah, there's really not. I know that EOJ has been dominating for the most part, but like I said, Mitch Hayward has not been phased. And I know you mentioned a second ago, Rich, you, you'd, you said, would you be shocked? But I think after all of the performances that we've seen today, today Dragon, Lyric, nothing's going nothing to <laughs> Here is Mitch Hayward on the edge of the box. First time he's really come forward, but good defending from Arsenal. Ben Chilwell 
is an item we haven't seen. Yeah, that left back position, it's it's up for grabs, you gotta say. We've seen Ogbene used at full back, Rodri's played either side, Varan has been in there as well, Ben Chilwell, Kai Havertz. It's it's the position at full back that is ever changing and until someone locks it down. It is up for grabs. Thierry Henry has walked straight into the teams though, and I do think the birthday promo has had a lot of spice into these squats. Definitely. I think that some of the items that have been released, Hullet, Henri, they're just so elevated from their previous versions of their items that they complete every single team. That's, that's a bad mistake at the back. Mitch, giving the ball away, Varan just about steps in. I think one thing, Leah, that I don't think it would be any sort of... Uh, change to say uh, a lot of the time the attackers especially in the Premier League is maybe where the teams are let down midfielders we've got team of the year midfielders couple to choose from you're looking at the defenders great work across the back but in that attacking area maybe a lack of five star skills maybe a lack of five star weak foot Henri and Hully just walk straight into the team five star five star yeah. and like I was saying either to you or Grav previously um, on the B stream this year and last year we've been graced with more items in campaigns like more different icons different player items and items this year Henri and holland being two that weren't typically us usable in previous years yeah being blessed the premier league yeah. especially in the last week yeah literally each team has what three four five for birthday items they are the stars of the show i mean alongside erling Haaland as well with the recent change in meta and him the aerial plus being so, so strong. That will do us for the first 45 minutes. Not loads to break down and dissect. Uh, but what we can tell you, the top line news, Wolves are 45 minutes away, Case, from a quarterfinal. They are 45 minutes away, but I will, like I said, I will not be shocked if Arsenal somehow pull back in this game because one goal, I mean, they're easily back into it. Momentum could shift and I don't know. The thing is, Mitch is one of the most well-rounded players I don't know if he lets us get away from him. I, th I think we've, I mean, we spoke about it. You see the stats there as well for a quick glance. 59% possession. Mitch hasn't had a shot, but he's controlled the ball. And you would probably say he's controlled the tempo leader of this game. It feels like it's very, it's played like a Mitch Haywood game, mm. this match right now. And EOJ's not really been able to implement his style of play on this matchup. I'll be honest, both Mitch and Kai look they don't look faced no. <laughs> at all, um, which is good. Confidence goes a long way in this game, but things can change at the drop of a dime, so... I mean, you're also going to see EOJ at some point throw bodies forward yeah. and put Mitch under a bit of pressure and really to. just test him and say, what you got then? If you're just going to sit off and you're not going to attack, I'm going to come for you. <laughs> I'm going to try and get this goal because I'm not going out with a nil-nil draw. Yeah. Like, I'd rather lose two by two goals and at least know I tried. I tried my best. Yeah. Yeah, that'll go one of two ways. Either that will open it up for more scoring opportunities for EOJ, or it could be too risky, and Mitch will capitalize on that and potentially score off a counter, and we'll see. We've not seen extra time all day today. Could it be now? The game. Yeah. <laughs> Last game of the day. Rich, you've jinxed it. This will be the game. We're here till midnight. <laughs> the caster's curse. Rude Hulley inside the box. Couple of step overs, throws the defender to the floor. Forces the save from the goalkeeper. Rude Hullet just took control <laughs> of that situation. Like a man possessed. We all know where this is going. You would imagine Haaland near post. There's the run in. Oh, Allison. Came a long way, but did OK. Let's have a quick look at the radar. No real counter-attack on. If Hullet scores that, there's got to be an inquest at the back case. Saka could be in on. It's just off side. No, it could have. I, the strength of Hullet is actually insane. The fact that he could just power through. He to be investigated. Like it, it honestly does. Five star, five star Hullet does need to be investigated. Kai Havertz still in the teams. He was one of the only sole survivors from the January groups. Flotwood into the back post. Haaland up. Hullet taking over. Good save from Allison. Mitch is showing a little bit more in this second half than he did in the first. It's direct straight in. Haaland too strong. Haaland is absolutely too strong and the goalkeeper, although he gets a few fingertips on that one, the power on that header 
is just too much, and it is slotted in the back of the net. Unfortunate for Allison. It's the pace of the corner, Leah. He it didn't is. mess about. He just stuck it straight in. Yeah, he did. That's the last. I've been saying this all day. Aerial plus is the aerial threat that Holland has. The power header. And Allison, I'm not sure about Allison. I've seen him. I've seen like three or four goals be conceded that Allison has had fingers to, and I, I don't know. You got Schmeichel, could be used. Check. Check. Van der Sar. There's a couple of goalkeepers there that, that could come into the side, but it's. Uh... The shout of Allison that is utilized as we're just waiting for this game to get back underway. You can see the nerves in EOJ. The pressure of this situation, because it's one game at a time, but it's a lose, you go home situation. You know what, the shivers might be because it's very cold in this studio. <laughs> I'd have to agree with that. <laughs> I'm very nerves. cold. <laughs> cold and nerves don't go well together, I'll tell you that. We are about to get back underway. That one on your screen, EOJ, has it all to do. Two goal deficits with 32 minutes left to play. It's quite sad that I had to try and wear that out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long day, but Magic. the action doesn't stop. If you, if you look at this game from a completely neutral perspective, taking the, the stats that you know, taking the Experience, performance, recent history of the two players. It looks pretty bleak viewing for Arsenal, Leah, at this point. Mm -hmm. It does, I think. Uh, I don't know. The, the experience, like I said before, goes a long way. And I think even even the like stone-cold face of Mitch. Oh, Mitch! Oh. What are we doing? Never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well. You were saying? That is a monumental mistake. He's tried being clever, he's tried being cute. And he just said to pull it. Yeah, have a free goal, mate. It's making it interesting. And now it's a 3-2 game. I was about. Wait, 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 wait. I've got to see this again. <laughs> so he's, he's gone to play out the back, he's invited the pressure. He's on, yeah, I'll dink it to him, I'll nod it back to the goalkeeper. That is... Yeah, well... That, if I concede that, I'm checked. I'm checked out. I don't know how I come back from that. Yeah, I mean, that's not an option at this point, though. He needs to regroup, forget that it happened, and... I'd be queuing a pause straight away, just to <laughs> head it off. OK, that just happened. Let me compose myself. 20 minutes left to play. Wouldn't be a game of FC24 if there wasn't some excitement <laughs> now, would there? And you just wonder, is that just a crack in the Mitch Hayward armour? I was about to make a, a compliment about Mitch and say that in these situations, it, it doesn't fall away from me. It doesn't let it slide. There's a reason his nickname's Money Mitch, because <laughs> he wins games and he wins money. And in these matches, that's where he performs best. But that's inexcusable. I do wonder, they've been here all day, and this is the last game of the day. Could yeah. fatigue be playing effect on decision making? I think it was 11.30 this morning for the players. Very long day. And nerves, they exhaust you. But this could be a boost of confidence, a boost of hope for EOJ. One goal to at least take it to extra time. Yeah. 12 minutes. Absolutely. It's a very simple game plan now as well. You just go for it. You yeah. throw bodies forward. You see that pause queued. It was queued by Wolves, and it's going to come in. Right now, 10 minutes left to play. I can just glance over and see the Arsenal screen. A lot of attacking subs being brought on, and a lot of attacking changes coming onto the pitch. There's plenty, plenty of time, Leah, to get this game back on track for Arsenal. First of all, your eyesight is outrageous, if you can see that. So I got the glasses. <laughs> I do not have the glasses, so I can't see anything, but I trust you. Yep. Um, yeah, like you said, throw bodies forward. 12 minutes left to play. They've got nothing to lose. They're trailing. 
So either they throw bodies forward, attack, and score, or they go home. Yeah. Case, I want to see this one more time. <laughs> Try and make it make sense, please. It doesn't. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't think that there is anything I could say to make it make sense. I think he was trying to be a bit cheeky. He passes it back, and there's just no situation here that he should be sending it there. It, it doesn't make sense, and unfortunate for Mitch, that's making a much tighter game. Maybe he thought he was playing on alternate controls. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. I, I'm not going to believe that one. I'm not going to have that one. <laughs> Ten minutes left to play. <laughs> Everything's still in the balance. Thanks to that mistake from Mitch. One mind games. more game. Ogbene off the bench. Vieira brought on defensively for Mitch. Keeper's come a long way again. Hoyt wins the header. Van der Sar, Hoyt up again. This game real, real tetchy at the back. Adding ad libs to your commentary with my oohs and ahs. <laughs> it's just. The, the composure that you associate with Mitch seems to have just gone. Gone, gone out the window. <laughs> but also, it's the press, it's the constant pressure. You've got four red and white shirts flying at you. There's no real option other than to go along into Harland. That's where that space will be exploited that is left in behind. Ooh. Got a chance, Case. Got a chance to come forward. Maybe one chance. I mean, there are a few seconds left, and if he does save this last attack, it could be dangerous. Pull it. Couple of step overs. Taking the speed oh, boost. Hurts. It's opened up. Rude. Pull it. What a save. It's happening. Finesse plus. He went for it. We've Mitch seen... was equal to it. We've seen the script here, Rich. We know what happens next. We know the corner's there. <laughs> it's going to get whipped in. It's going to be Erling Haaland at the near post, looking for the flick. He's gone deep. Oh. Where are we going? <laughs> Van Dijk keeping the attack alive. De Bruyne, Schweinsteiger, Haaland, power shot cancelled, looking back for Schweinsteiger. Only seconds remaining by the skin of his teeth. Mitch Hayward and Wolverhampton Wanderers have a quarter final to look forward to. A truly. It's just remarkable, <laughs> remarkable game. Oh, let's see. He can breathe. <laughs> Hi, my, my. Didn't make it easy, did he? <laughs> <laughs> it never is, is it? He's done it in the end. He's got through. Arsenal will crash out of the e Premier League. A shake of the head from ELJ. Mitch won't be happy with that performance, I can guarantee you. But they go through. And that is the only thing that matter. Brighton and Hove Albion in the quarterfinals against Wolves. Big, big movements here. We've got our quarterfinals set. So it's been an unbelievable day, I've got to say. We'll be back tomorrow in the casting position. But for one final time, let's head on over to Frankie, join with Brandon. Thank you so much, guys. What a day of FC24, but we've got another one coming your way. Brandon, talk to me about the fixtures we've got coming up tomorrow. Just eight teams remaining. Four of them we didn't even see play today. Absolutely, again, it's gonna be exciting tomorrow. Liverpool take on Manchester United, Luton against West Ham United, Man City, Tottenham. I think that's the blockbuster fixture. As we just saw their Wolves confirming their place to take on Brighton of Albion tomorrow. Oh, the final way. Sticking with this final matchup, having just seen Wolves play, do you think that they can really put up a fight against Brighton? Are Brighton just going to be too aggressive for them? The problem is, four of those teams haven't played today. And I feel like, in, in hindsight, they would have preferred to be in the other position of playing today, getting those reps in, getting used to being back on this stage again. But they're coming in cold tomorrow. And I know we're playing you know, FC24, but you can still come in cold to tournaments. Yeah, but you don't want to bet against Marley and Jaden. They are the Scottish champions. And, They've got and pedigree. Brighton, so. And also they're playing for Brighton. And they did want to play for Brighton. I do want to emphasise that here. It's not that they, <laughs> they wanted to play for another team. We know that they play for the badge, as I mentioned earlier on today. But also, let's talk about Spurs versus Manchester City. This is the match we're looking forward to. It was very nearly CPFC, or at least we thought it was going to be. But after Lyrics' performance today, 
today. That's going to be such an entertaining matchup against Tex. Absolutely. Has not conceded a single goal in this event. He didn't win a game in the group stages. He's won two games, scored six goals, hasn't conceded the goal. He looks like a really solid partner now for Tom Lee. So Spurs against Man City, it's the blockbuster one for me tomorrow. It really is. My eyes are going to be on those coaches because Nightwatch and Shorey, the coaches of those two boys on Spurs, they were unbelievable today. They really were, and look, a corner, a set piece. Dr. Nightwatch has got a 300-page manual on, uh, on how to, to get through every single moment of the game. So they're really stacked up. And Man City, they've got pressure on them. All right? They are the team pressure. to beat. They really do have pressure. People are expecting it to be them. But we really don't know. Everything is to play for because we now know which eight teams have qualified for tomorrow's quarterfinals. Liverpool will take on Manchester United. Luton Town will go up against West Ham. Manchester City face Spurs. And Brighton and Hove Albion will take on Wolverhampton Wanderers. Make sure you join us for those mouth-watering clashes, plus the semi-finals and, of course, the final of this year's E-Premier League, where we will be crowning our champions of 2024. If you can't wait until then, check out epremierleague.com for more interviews and match analysis. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.